Welcome back to another episode of After Hours Podcast at Faction Motorsports. Um, guys, before we even get into this episode, I just want to explain that we are redoing the floors right now in the shop, so you're going to hear some background noise on the intro and outro, but the podcast should be fine. So, On this episode, we had Alex Jager in the house. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, a club loose driver. He's been drifting at Raceway Park since 2014, I believe. And now he's drifting with, with Forsberg. He's on the Forsberg racing team. He's a Formula Drift Pro Spec driver, and he's won a bunch of the E-Town Gambler events. So uh, if you haven't already checked him out, make sure you follow him, Alex Jager 227 on Instagram, and enjoy this conversation. This was a great one. This podcast is sponsored by East Coast Drift School. East Coast Drift School is a driving school focused on learning the art of drifting. Conveniently located at the greatest drifting facility in the United States, Raceway Park in Englishtown, New Jersey. Raceway Park currently has three tracks, so you will have a few options to choose from when setting up your lessons. Chris Knapp, who is part of the Raceway Park family, will be your teacher as he guides you through car setup and technique. If you are more of a seasoned driver, East Coast Drift School is also the place where you can get some extra seat time. Chris allows private track time with no instructing as well, so that you can get some test and tune runs in before that big event or competition you have coming up. Instead of spending the night dodging the police with your boys, consider signing up with East Coast Drift School the next time they release their schedule. Chris releases the schedule on the 16th of every month through Instagram. Make sure to check them out, give them a follow, and shoot over a direct message when you are ready to set up a date. You can find them on Instagram at East Coast Drift School. This podcast is also sponsored by Automotive Specialty Wraps. Looking to have your car ceramic coated or wrapped? Look no further than Automotive Specialty Wraps. ASW is a company specializing in paint protection film, vehicle wraps, ceramic coatings, and window tinting. Owned and operated by car enthusiasts and drifters, their technicians have over 10 years of experience in the industry. They are located right off of Route 208 in Fairlawn, New Jersey. Other than window tinting, which is something we all need at some point, it was the ceramic coating that really caught my attention back when they reached out to us. This coating basically gives your car's paint extra UV protection while also making it shine. Wax only lasts a couple of weeks at most, but ceramic coating lasts for a year or even longer. Honestly, this stuff is like witchcraft to me. Julian came down here one day to explain how it works and how it compares to wax, and I was pretty stunned. They perform a full two-stage polish to the car beforehand just to make sure it's in perfect condition before applying the coating. As mentioned, they also offer window tinting and paint protection film installations. Now, everyone knows what window tinting is, but these guys offer carbon or ceramic window tinting depending on your goals with the vehicle. Paint protection film or PPF is a great idea for those new vehicle owners that don't want to watch their investment get littered with rock chips. Also keep in mind they are capable of getting liveries designed and installed as well as full vehicle wraps. From protecting your tow rigs exterior to full livery installations on your drift car, they have you covered. They also recently added mobile washes. So the way they're doing this is they will post a story, there'll be a link in the story on their Instagram, and you can click it where you will be able to enter your full address and it literally tells you the services they offer right there. It's pretty awesome. Uh, the options are just inside the car, just outside the car, inside and out, and then a full detail inside and out. So you click one of those, and then it'll also give you some extras you can choose. If you got you know a crazy amount of pet hair in the car, if you want ceramic sealant, um, child seat cleaning, engine bay detail option. Wow. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of options on here it's actually really awesome um they just called and told us about this so i wanted to add this to uh the podcast because this is this is like a f something that i didn't know that detail places did but now that i see this we're probably going to use them ourselves so yeah check this out um if you can't get to a car wash or if you know if you're at work or something i'm sure they'll be able to come by and help you out you can contact them over at AutomotiveSpecialtyWraps.com and make sure to give them a follow on Instagram at Automotive Specialty Wraps. This podcast is brought to you by Faction Motorsports. We are an automotive performance shop located in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Our shop is easy to get to from Route 17, 3, and 21. We are also only 15 minutes away from New York City. Faction Motorsports provides services that include, but are not limited to, performance part installations, suspension overhauls, general maintenance, engine installations, tire mounting and balancing, and custom four-wheel alignments with our in-house Hunter alignment machine. We also stock a range of performance products in-house. From AN fittings and gaskets to complete body kits, we try to stock as many parts as we can to provide quick shipping times for our website customers and same-day pickup for locals. 
Make sure to shoot us an email if you are looking to set up an appointment or if you are looking for a part that is not up on our website. Our email is sales at factionmotorsports.com. We are also on Instagram at Faction Motorsports. <laughs> well, welcome everybody to the Faction After Hours podcast. We're here to bring you another episode tonight. We have another guest. We have Alex Jager, Formula Drift, Prospect Driver, English Town Gambler, <laughs> winner yeah. for a couple times. Yeah, four times. God damn. Yo, I, chill I out. Save that. some for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for coming on. You're a busy guy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Of yeah. course. Thanks for having we me. We were just rolling conversations just now. Yeah. yeah everyone missed like, all the good contents. We might as well just go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> See ya. We're done. We're done. Hey, sorry, guys. Quick episode. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> but no, really. that's. Uh, we were supposed to do two podcasts today. Yeah, but we were working on the shop. Dude, I mean, Alex, you've seen the shop in there. He said it looked like a bomb went off in there. <laughs> yeah. I, before I, we even get started, my hands are covered in dirt, paint. I'm, I don't want to hear no bullshit. Are you scared that people on. are going to judge you? For I that? know they're going to judge me because I'm covered in dirt. I'm judging you because you got a Starbucks coffee and he's got a Red Bull. And you're a NOS guy. No respect around here. You don't see the hat. That is one crazy. Time, one time <laughs> no I had respect. three NOS energies in a day. I've never felt better than that. I <laughs> promise you. Alex is going to work on that NOS sponsorship for us, so uh, we'll, be, we'll be hearing about that later. Dude, is right, 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 direct to the point. You can't even just just, just enjoy the company. Uh, this guy, you know. Everyone's always trying to get stuff out of Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. Well, thank you for coming on the pod. I, you're, you're a prospect driver. You drive the 370Z, mm-hmm. the... Yeah, it's a 370Z. Yeah. What? Why? Why are you I don't know. No, I, I'm, I'm interested because I don't know shit about it. We just had a long conversation about VR38 and how good of a motor yeah, that is. I, I kept hearing that. So I Do guess you know that, what a VR38 is? Yeah. I sure hope so. You have a GTR, GTR inside your engine. shop. <laughs> that thing. Well, not with one with a VR. Yeah, but. we really don't work on those things often. But well, yeah, what shocked I mean, me was earlier, we were talking about how you don't have a laptop. And Alex just goes, well, dude, the VR is so reliable. I don't even, it's really I don't that even good. bring one. It's like... All right, so I did two years on a completely stock VR38 mm-hmm. that never had a single issue. Like, I never, for two years, I never, uh, like, plugged a single computer into it. I didn't even change the spark plugs. All I did was change oil and, like, Hell drive yeah. it. And it, it, it was at, like, 600-something wheel horsepower on MA's dyno. Um, but we kept the torque pretty low because of the stock rods and stuff like that. Now, it's a totally different animal. Now it makes considerably more horsepower <laughs> um it's probably what kind of upgrades does that thing have so n- now yeah well it, actually i guess before before we even um well it's a it's it's a long conversation but i guess we have a lot of time right yeah so yeah it, uh, <laughs> what we use to make a gtr motor vr38 fit in a 370z or a nissan z like uh forsberg uses is it's dry sumped. So as you all know, like a GTR is all wheel drive. Yeah. So the all wheel drive unit runs through the oil pan, which makes the motor really tall. So like if you want to retain the wet sump system that's stock, you have to fit that whole setup into an engine bay. Um, turns out it doesn't fit very well into a, a Z at that point because of all that that has to be cut off. So we cut four and a half inches off the bottom of the oil pan. Well, actually, pretty much a whole oil pan gets cut in the front How timing How big cover. is the oil pan that you're already cutting for? There's some it's, it's left. It's four and a half inches tall. Yeah, it was, it's, the, <laughs> it's, the whole, it. it's the whole thing. <laughs> so up until the bottom of the crank, and then we have a custom daily engineering, um, you know, I guess it would be called like an oil pan, but it's like this billet plate that bolts yeah. up, and that's what supplies for the dry sump. So that is, when it was stock, that's really the only major modification that was done to it, um, because mainly just to fit it. Yeah. Uh, trust me, the, the dry sump setup in my FD car at the time, cost more than the motor. Like the dry sump setup was eight thousand dollars, and that, the motor was seven. I was oh about to God. make a joke, like, yeah, it's just a minor, minor yeah. modification. Well, it's It'd funny because be- you don't really need it. You just did it because you couldn't fit the engine. Yeah, yeah. like we weren't planning on doing it, and then because it's just we're trying to save money to make this happen. Um, like anyone who's trying to get into FD, and I brought the motor. I lit- I drove to Massachusetts. We dropped this motor out of a like wide body Liberty Walk style GTR. G- the guy was putting in like a built motor, so he sold me his stock motor. It was powder coated purple, which is was that pretty a light funny because you know I had a purple car. Yeah, um, it was black. So I still the dude. I still talks to me all the time on Instagram. Like it, like every like almost every month I talk to him on Instagram. The guy was so nice. That's insane. But, like he just parted out like a GTR. Yeah. And like, yeah. Wow. I'll, I'll take yeah. That. So we dropped, put it in the bed of my truck, drove it to Maryland for MA Motorsports to try to fit it. And he tried. Like Brian tried for a little while to make it fit with the wet sump, and then mm. it would. It just wouldn't work. There was just no way. So the car, the chassis that I bought, 
who used to, which actually used to be Stonebacks, funny enough. Um, not the one you competed in FD. I'm trying to th- yeah. So now I'm like, <laughs> it's a it's a car that he bought from Brian. Uh, this is we're getting to a crazy conversation. This is getting way off. Yeah, I have we so can get questions. back into the history I have so of my many car. Questions already. We can get way back. My car used to have an Indy car motor in it. Funny enough. Hell so, yeah, anyway, that's 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 before I had it. So it was set up for a dry sump already okay. because of the the VK45 that it had in it. All the sh- like stuff in the back and yeah, it had the, make, the yeah. tank already set up. It had the enclosure. It had all that. All we had to do was get the pan and the pump, um, and make lines. Okay. So, but all the other stuff, the chassis wise, was done. So we did the dry sump setup, and then um, Darren, who was one of uh, like Forsberg's crew guys, he's the blood master. Um, he built the custom tubular manifolds. So mine are hand-me-down manifolds that Chris used to run, um, which moves the turbos in front of the motor because they don't fit behind the motor also with how the motor sits. Okay. The motor is like cylinder one is behind the strut tower, oh, and the wow. whole motor is, be- is below the strut towers. That's so awesome. that's how far back and low we fit that Where does engine. the motor end? Is there a custom like little divot there for you to bring it back that far? Like, no, it's just against the fire. Well, so 370Zs have like a secondary firewall it's really just like a heat shield hmm. but we cut all that out so that's all gone okay um and then there's also like a little chassis support that we notch so the motor sits all the way against the factory firewall um and really low. like right as close that, that oh, yeah. final barrier before your feet like type yeah. of deal oh okay. yeah it's right there um so that's really the only major modifications that it had for a while um, besides running like a Link ECU and running uh, Bosch throttle bodies rather than the GTR throttle bodies, just because it's easier for wiring reasons. Oh, okay. um, then now the motor is, it's geome- like geometrically, is a fancy word, identical to Forsberg's Ultimaniac. Similar, it shares the most logic with that. It actually doesn't share a whole lot with Forsberg's FD car. He's got some really fancy parts. I was going to ask. I get a lot like, of the hand-me-down ones, but they work good. Like still. Is, is the, is is the general the idea the same? Yeah, so the, all the cars, I mean, they're all so similar. The, the, the cams are just like a different brand, and he gets uh, nicer stuff in his heads. Like mine is different. It, it depends, right, on what we use. Um, but we tested, which has proven to be insane, we've learned. My car has like these prototypes. Um, <laughs> we should probably cut this part out. My, 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 my car has prototype CP and Carrillo pistons and rods. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Did you so sign an NDA or something? They, yeah, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't wrong on that. All right, all right, um, all right. So I was like, crap, don't say something wrong. I'm always like super skeptical God forbid now. you say something wrong. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. You're so, good. So my car has prototype CP and Carrillo pistons and rods in it um, that no one could get up until now for GTRs. Because um, oh, wow. we didn't really, Chris didn't want to gamble on something that they didn't know. And then for me, it was different. I, I kind of helped develop things. Um, the guinea It pig. turns out that they've been amazing. Like my motor has been insane it did a whole season last year um i'm running it again for another year all i'm all i'm doing is changing the oil and spark plugs and running it again like it compression tests fine it leaked down tests fine um it has tomei cams that are hand-me-downs from chris's um and then the heads are completely built so it is a different motor it could handle probably 2000 plus horsepower <laughs> if, uh, huh? if it wanted to what the fuck yeah. what? Um, it right now what the fuck yeah. <laughs> 2000 horsepower yeah so that, those are like that, those are video game numbers. Yeah, yeah it's like, pretty like what that's the, what the Ultimaniac Chris's car can make if he wanted it to. There's no point, but game. like yeah. the thing is, like it chills at like 1300 wheel. Is like that's just Jesus. like it's fun map. So but he's on much bigger turbos than me. But I was gonna ask what turbos are. I'm you? on G25 660s, oh, two okay. of them. So on 15 two pounds on MA's dyno, it made 740 wheel, and it's on 24 now. Those I've turbos never are so good. Yeah, I've never uh, put it on a dyno since we turned the power up, but. Uh, com- comparable Chris's car is like a little over a thousand wheel and his setup's a little per- basically the same and his car was on like 30 mm-hmm. something pounds so it's probably like 900 ish wheel horsepower <laughs> right now yeah um give or take and it makes it like that like the car is full torque at like 3000 something rpm full boost at 3000 something like it just hits and it- these are such crazy numbers <laughs> like we you're probably the maybe the second person who's been able to talk to a third he- yeah, third person. We don't have many people in here with, with this crazy with that power. with kind of that kind of access. So these numbers <laughs> are just baffling me a little bit. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Carl's like, pounds. I can't wait for 300 horsepower. Thir- dude, I literally <laughs> just want 350 <laughs> so badly, dude. Like, you know, yeah. I'm just such a fucking nerd. I need that really yeah. bad. You don't get um, it. But 30 pounds on both, <laughs> it's like so turbos. Crazy. What what makes these? What makes that G series turbo so good? 
That's a good question. I wish I everybody had loves it. That's what's so. What's funny, right? Like a G twenty five. We were just talking that even about sound this. That crazy. Yeah, when they're in their range, it's nuts. Like when we when we were on spring pressure on twelve point five pounds, it made six hundred and forty wheel. Okay. We went from twelve point five pounds to fifteen pounds, and it went from six forty to seven hundred and forty. It gained a hundred wheel horsepower, going up two and a half pounds of boost. See, so that doesn't, it, that doesn't sound into its normal. Range. What, what is this? Because oh. below 15 pounds was not in its range. And then once oh. you get above like 30 something or whatever, it just now it's all blowing hot air. For my size turbo, you yeah. can get a bigger turbo and it's different. What do you mean by its range? Like Sorry. It's, I, I'm definitely not an engineer. Um, That's but cool. Neither am I. The way, that I un- to me. <laughs> the way that I understand it is that they that turbo has a a designed range where it is the most efficient yeah where it's making the most like volume and not generating the, the most heat so in that range of what it's intended to do is where it's can make the most power when used properly mm. um there's a lot of variables there but you get my point yeah so the g-series have been nuts like i i just put a g3770 on my uh s13 um, which is a jay-z um which i haven't tuned it yet but i'm really interested to see how that works out compared to the Tomei Turbo that I used to run we were just talking about earlier. Um, <laughs> that, a lot of shit about the that. magic one. Yeah, the, the Turbo that's the, the hurry up and wait. Yeah. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you get in the gas and eventually you'll find 500 horsepower. Yeah, just, but it will. you will find it. Yeah. It'll take a minute. It worked and it was reliable. That sounds but, that's in your Jay-Z car you said? Uh, yeah. 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 That, is that's the one you drifted at Appalachia? Mm-hmm. Dude, yep. how was that? Dude, that... <laughs> Honestly, I, that, it's a it's a coupe Sylvia front. I think yeah. yours. Yeah, yeah my, uh well, actually, probably not anymore. But there are no the fenders I, on that car I got from you guys. Oh yeah, yeah, it has Origin front fenders. Malcolm, can you find um, this car and bring it up? <laughs> Dude, first of all, there's videos of it. I think I've definitely seen videos of it. Yeah, we've driven. Me and him have driven together a while ago. Dude, but. how long ago was that? Well, because yeah. I asked him, I was like, "Did you so my like car this purple. Frankie right here? Yeah. Did you drive with this Frankie?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, of course." Like, well, yeah. That's what's funny is like getting into this. Like when I started drifting. And really started developing my own uh, like identity in drifting because you know there's so many different ways you can go with it. Me and my friends wanted to be like you guys so bad, like like you and who like are, Justin who friend, and stuff like like close like me or... and Matthew Bostrack and then okay. our friend Hunter. He, he doesn't drift, but yeah, yeah. he does our media and like we started this thing um, from Forza Drifting called Gas Factory. That yeah, was like yeah, our yeah. faction. Yeah. So like Gas Factory stood for Grip and Slip Factory. And like we wanted to have our own That's shop. That's fire. Yeah, That's so, like the same so we name. Had, me and Matt had purple S13s that were matching sparkly purple. And like we just wanted, I'm, just, I'm you're going to laugh at when I say this, but <laughs> we wanted to do hot boy shit so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we wanted to have like, <laughs> we wanted to go to like Final Bow. We wanted to have like matching liveries and do like that team thing. Cause that yeah, was, yeah. that was like coming up big when you guys originally started doing yeah. um, all that. So it was like, that's all we like wanted to do, which is crazy. Because now it's like so different. Now I was doing say, FD. Now, then you took like, a real hard turn. It, it, would yeah. you? So. Like, that's so crazy that we're talking about this. Because would you? Where was that point where it like went that way? Where it was like, you know what? Like, let's ride this train instead. Like, yeah, it's like it's so it's it's a really long story. But I originally was a, a rally type person. Um, like I was big into rally racing. I was a big Subaru kid. Okay. Um, I worked at Broken Motorsports, you know, for Billy Petro. And um, shout out Billy. Yeah, shout out Billy, who was just on the podcast. Yeah. But um, basically, <laughs> I was at English Town in like 2014. Um, I wasn't even drifting yet. I was in the process of building an S13 drift car because I was close friends with Mike Vogue, still am. But um, he kind of guided me with building my first drift car. But um, I really wanted to do rally first. I went to a rally school out in in uh seattle it's called dirt fish i went to team o'neill rally school in new hampshire and uh one of my instructors was like dude you just don't stop drifting he's like all you want to do like you're just, just like you're just he's like you're really good at drifting have you ever considered at getting into drifting and i'm like i don't know dude like i have a lot of friends who do it because i was friends with vogue and like a lot of people yeah. so i was like sure i went home and i had like a subaru rally car project i was building i sold it and I bought that Matt. quickly. Yeah, I, I was just like, whatever. Dude, I'm, I'll try I'm, drifting. So, and I was also at the time playing a lot of Forza drifting. Forza so four. It was Forza. Yeah, I think so. Forza it was four. Was the best one. That was the greatest. Yeah, it was probably game. a four or five ish around yeah. there before they had angle and before like we yeah. do crazy tunes to tow the car out to make it Yo, not spin stop. out. Stop! This shit. is Frankie's childhood. Dude, we're Forza talking about. four yeah. is the best game. That's ever. the closest Dude, thing I've to like video like games. Thousands that, of hours. Yeah. Playing it I'd do it every single day. I'd go to work, I'd come home, and I would just sit there drifting on Forza. So and it, it really did help. 
So the VR must be crazy now. So. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole different. Yeah. I can't play the like Assetto stuff that well. I I do it and I I can get by yeah. on a good setup, um, but I'm nowhere near like some of these guys. That's Carl. Carl, yeah. my setup is so fucking bad, dude. The people who play with me, like, <laughs> yeah, but you're I, good at it though. I yeah. have no choice. I have I have to. I talk <laughs> I, I talk my shit because my equipment's bad. It's like having yeah. a shitty drift car and you just <laughs> yeah. okay. And I'd be yeah. ripping with like um. Man, some of these you run into people on there where you're like, "What the fuck?" Like, like you didn't know you were gonna be on there. Um, who do we get to drive that? I watched that final bout. Who's sick at driving? Sam B Street. Remember the car that's oh, yeah, kind of yeah. loud style type yeah. of looking. He plays on there. It's I'm in there it's with crazy. my Jeep. My fucking wheel is going to blow apart some days. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, that's why I feel like I'm gonna break it. Like I was just playing at, at Ricky Hoffman and Steve Misko lived together. Yeah, um, they're roommates and. Steve Misco just built a setup when just like two weeks ago we're playing it. And I, I, I turned his second gear into fourth gear. Like, like I just broke the Dude. shifter. You know, I like ripped the, like, you know, the whole thing. Just Imagine went, just, that, like, that was me too, just go like second to fourth without going to neutral or any yeah. other if you, gear. No if you problem. don't know it, if you don't know like the, I mean, even I was though, about to break like, someone's, I don't know if it was Jimmy Oaks or whoever we were Yeah, at, you were going to break And I Jimmy's. was just like pulling and everyone's like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to remember yeah. it's a game. But at the same time, when I go to my car now, my shifter is so shitty yeah. in my actual car that, like, it just feels the same. I'm like, all right, maybe this is just what life is for me. I realized that day, yeah. too, that that's the reason my e-brake would break all the time because I, I must be just yanking it, like, towards <laughs> me, and it would just, like, loosen it up. Oh, like pulling. Yeah, something. Yeah. Do you, do you have in your in your car? Do you have a hydro in your car? No. Your stock handbrake. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the stock one kind of goes over like that. If yeah. You really like it, look it pulls at it. on a little like angle. A little bit is of an angle. Like and when it breaks, it's like this, right? So it like comes up weird. Yeah. On a, yeah. It on does kind of pull that way. But when yeah. it breaks, did you say you it ran like, it forever? Uh, for a long time, I ran in in my first drift car when I was just talking about. But that car had a stock handbrake. I had a 180 that had a stock handbrake. My oh, my yeah. S13 doesn't, but like my current S13 has a hydro. like this one. That guy. You yeah. had you had that blue 180, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, that uh, that the, car's been the, passed around now. The right? current <laughs> owner of it um, yeah. tried to... Well, he, he toyed with selling it again. Oh, uh, yeah. I saw it. that. Yeah. Yeah, that's my... Uh, that's old Look, so that, car, that car is pretty yeah. oh, so that was up, right? Your like that's one. That one? That's the purple one. Okay. Yeah, that was. You can still see the purple a little bit. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Okay, awesome. I, I love that S13, though. That's one of those things that I, I'll never get rid of. Would you say um, that that car is... Would you say the S chassis is the superior drift car? It depends on what you're like trying to get out of drifting, right? Uh, so that's, yeah. I think mm. that's a very loaded question. Because in my case, <laughs> just say yes. For, for what I yes. did, get dragged through the for, at my time, because it, it, it's a dynamic answer. Yeah, because yeah. S chassis now are very expensive. And um, yeah, but we're, let's not talk about money. <laughs> if you're just going Fuck. purely off the chassis, yeah. Um, I think it's definitely one of the best, if not the best, in my opinion. You heard um, it here first. Yeah, but it's what super makes... easy to drive. No, yeah. no, I also yeah. to go back to the rally thing. I have an S13 rally car. Um, oh, shit. You that's and Billy, not dude. as clapped as Billy's. <laughs> that's <laughs> fucking right. near his car is as his car. Beat. But did things... you see what he did with it, though? Like, <laughs> yeah. he, he does it, some. That really? thing has been rolled over more times than I've done I, somersaults yeah. in my childhood. Like, <laughs> it's a fact. It has been passed around like some people that you don't want to bring home to mom. Yeah, but um, I think it's rough, so, dude. so I, I think S chassis are great. Like it helped me learn a lot. You know, like again, like to, to go back to what we were talking about before, like. I bought a caged S13 hatch from Matt Lomazoff. I don't know if you remember Matt Lomazoff. That name sounds familiar. Um, he passed away, but he uh, he was like a OG-ish, for me OG, because I started drifting in like 2014. But back then, um, he had an SR brown hatch that was caged. Um, he pulled the motor. He wanted to build GTO. I did GTO drift car, if you remember. Like the the Holden generation GTO. Like the, um, yeah, yeah, the one that kind of the Reese Millen looking yeah, car. Exactly, yeah, exactly, that generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had a couple of them, but he sold his S13 to me because he wanted to build the GTO. He had a uh, leukemia, I think okay. he had, um, which is, he got in a wreck with Stoneback, um, mm. hit his head on the cage, <sighs> went to the hospital because he had a brain injury and found out that he had cancer because of his racket turn one at English Town, and eventually he passed away. God bless his soul. That's Great guy. Annoying. When did that um, accident happen? Do probably you know? 2013, 2012-ish. Okay, that's why. He, I, like, that's spun why and, like, Stoneback hit him right in the door. And I ran that door damaged with the marks from Stoneback's bash bar for, like, t uh, at least a whole season of drifting. Jesus. Um, so I bought that car from him, 
and I put a 1JZ in it, nice. uh, stock VVTI, and that's what I like learned how to drift in. I didn't know, dude, I didn't know anything about drifting. I showed up to Club Loose and uh, like very first lap, I never even drove a rear wheel drive car. In my life, and I just like very first lap, just like linked the whole track, and I'm like, all right, this what is the cool. Fuck? Okay, like, that is not where I thought this story was <laughs> so, gonna go. Like, so it was like, it's just a weird thing to talk about because I try not to sound like, yeah, you know, yeah. fool yourself, right? But it just, nah, I talk really, your shit, talk your shit. it just, cl- <laughs> yeah, yeah. it just clicked, right? So all right, so I come from dirt bike racing, right? Okay, and even I, worse, well, that's now why. you know, yeah. now you know no, it. That's why. my point is like when I came from dirt bike racing, I had to try so hard, like I'd watch like these like overweight dudes that like would smoke cigarettes not talking shit on people that smoke cigarettes but when i was I mean, young i did it's so, like they would smoke cigarettes get trashed and like all this stuff and they would like walk me on a dirt bike and i'd be in the gym every day i'd be on my practice bike i'd, oh, I'd be like damn. all this kind of stuff and i got so discouraged so like i got in a car like in a drift car and like first lap i was like i'm that fat kid that can go out and like <laughs> and not care because i just figured it out i just had it yeah, so like yeah. My first weekend drift, my f- first day drifting, I was already tandeming, like right into that is tandem so driving. real. First though, no, day, like, first day, yeah, very first day drifting, I tandem with uh, Steve Angerman and with uh, that's crazy with John Wagner. So that was like I literally did like three laps. And then how like, did you yeah, make friends go. with all these guys? Because these are like OG club loose guys. Yeah, it was it was a private day. Well, it was okay. a clinic into a private day um, at Club Loose. So I. I got hooked up from Mike Boat, really. Oh, okay. So like I was yeah. friends with him, him and Joel. If you you know Joel, um, he had like an S14 with a 2JZ, okay. a Bloodmaster as well. Yeah. So he back in like 2014, they helped me build my car in literally Mike Vogue's parents' driveway. Um, and then they really hooked it up. They were just like, "Hey, we're gonna do like this uh, like clinic." And then there's like a private day the next day. It was a Saturday. Sorry, a Saturday was a private day. So I showed up for a clinic. Didn't know anything about drifting and just walked around the track as a beginner clinic with with Petty. And like I always this is my favorite thing to say. I love telling the story because it's like I'm walking around the track, I have no idea what's going on, and Petty's like explaining drifting. And like, if you know him, he's kinda like the Ozzy Osbourne of drifting. So he's like <laughs> so he like walks to like out which is now like the outer zone one of like the road course, and he's just like, So you wanna like swing it out wide? And stack up with your bros and then get the fuck out. And then you like walk to the next turn and he wouldn't say anything between the first two turns. And he's like, he's, he's like, you want to swing it out wide, stack up with your bros, get the fuck out. And I'm like, sick dude, all right, you said last turn. So we got like the hairpin and he's like, all right, so you want to swing it out wide, stack up with your bros and then get the fuck out. And I was just like, all right, so that's like all I really learned about drifting. <laughs> being honest with you. The track walk just like, wasn't really that. It was like stay <laughs> wide and leave room for your homies, and then you get the fuck out of there and do it again at the next turn. You know, and that just resonated with me with drifting. Yeah. So um, I mean, that's Petty's the best person. Yeah, dude, it was kind of so like awesome. what you'd need to do if you're yeah. leading. Yeah, yeah, which no, is right. That's like the most perfect clinic. way to explain yeah. that. Like you probably can't get any more direct than that. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was fun. Yeah, like he, he he made a great point. It always resonated with me. Like it always stuck in my head when it came. Imagine I mean, mid corner, you're just worked. thinking of what I could hear him say every time I'm in the hairpin at English Town. No matter if I'm by myself or with ten people, you're like, okay. I'm just like I got to look it up. Why they got to wait for all my bros to get in here, and then we're gonna leave. <laughs> gotta, gotta get the fuck out. <laughs> I, I love I'm, that, dude. I still have yet to like really meet. I know. How do you feel like I know. I it, can't wait for that day. <laughs> yes. So that's like when I got into drifting was like with all those dudes, especially I, I'll call it like I'll say it here in front of everyone. I don't care. That was like to me that's like really the prime of Club Loose days of drifting. What what year? Yeah, um, like 2014, 2015. 14? Yeah, yeah. yeah like it, was, it was. It was. It was just sick. And like so they all invited me to stay the next day for a uh, for a private day. And so I did like three laps of the clinic and I'm like, all right, cool. I'll just wait. Cause the next day, why not? So I go out and I do like two laps and then they're just like, yeah, just like chase this person. And I'm like, all right, cool. So <laughs> I went and chased them and we That's started driving. Crazy. And then the next event was freedom moves. And I just signed up for a, so I never even signed up for C or B. I just signed right <laughs> up for A and just what the fuck? that was drifting for me. Wait, so the so. car was caged and yeah, it was. Caged. Oh, okay, all right. it was a cage stock one Jay Z. It was on fifteen. That's amazing. You know? 15s yeah, with 15s. a one J. Oh, they, bra- they brainwashed you and everything. They oh yeah, dude, that was like okay. two so seconds like away when from the painting my master. car black, which is funny because now as you saw, my car is black. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so, a Bloodmaster. That's a Bloodmaster uh, car. Like, yeah. I'm picturing, like, a 15-inch black red tint. But it was purple, right? It was brown. Oh, it was brown. Okay. Yeah. So I it think was, I kind of remember this It was, like, to, uh, Toyota Tundra brown is the paint code it was. This yeah. is in 2014. 14. It had orange XXR 527 2014 Freedom Moves. I don't know how, if that's the one that we were at or if that was the one that coincided with Final Bout, but one of those years, I'm, 15 or 14, was sick. I'm trying to think. I'm like, okay. 
you are now tandeming three laps in. <laughs> For me, when I'm thinking of tandeming, I had to like watch and like, like what are you <laughs> like? You just hopped in. So the thing just, was like, to like what we were well, talking how about, did you know like what was happening? So to what we were talking about before, it was like. It's not the same thing as playing a video game. Don't get me wrong. Especially not when you're playing with a controller like I was. Yeah. But like all the logic of what you do is identical. It was like where oh, you right. you're where you position Forza. your because we I played so many hours of Forza yeah. before. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was yeah. like I showed totally. up and I'm like all right. Well, I kind of understand transition timing. Mm-hmm. I understand like where to be on the track. I understand like a lot of that. So like when it came to tandeming, like I just there was a lot of things that I was kind of looking back now as the driver I am today. There's a lot of things I was doing wrong, but like it got around and it looked good and it was safe. I wasn't I wasn't gonna hurt anyone like yeah, i came yeah, from yeah. track background done a lot of road course stuff autocross things like that like i know how to be on the track with other cars and not kill people you know yeah, what yeah. i mean common so like, like it was just common sense like to me so um but yeah, yeah that's no, kind of how it started i i forgot about the forza thing because i was trying to think i'm like you went from rally <laughs> racing to i never where actually rallied race oh, oh, before okay. i have now but, but i have not before drifting I, I, I always talk about rally, and everyone's like, "Oh, you come from rally? Of course you go to drifting." I'm like, I actually yeah, I never rallied until after I started drifting. Yeah, which is because of Petro. So that same uh, right before I started drifting, I was hanging out in Mike Vogue's trailer, and I had a Dirtfish hat on because I went to Dirtfish Rally School. And Petro walks in, which is lit- this literally exact moment is the reason why I'm sitting here with a Nos hat on today, which is crazy to say. Hell he walks yeah. in the trailer. It's all it's Billy. Is, we all like to like. <laughs> laugh at how crazy Billy's life is like there's so many people's lives he's actually changed and being mine is one of them so he walks in and he's like you got a dirt fish hat on and I'm like yeah and he's like we're gonna be friends and I'm like because <laughs> he likes rally uh-huh. so I'm like all right cool so like I kind of became friends with him started drifting and uh eventually started working for him so th- this is really gonna take the, yeah broken motorsport mm-hmm. so this is gonna take the conversation in a crazy direction That's fine. but um <laughs> I uh we built a rally car when I was at broken and I ended up doing some rallies um stuff like that but I never took rally too crazy. Um, but there is a, a guy, his name is Brandon Bowling. He's our team manager now. He's an OG Drift Alliance, kind of a blood master, kind of not, does what he wants. But he has a Red S13 Coupe with the LS in it. You've probably seen him drifting. There's the RPF ones on it. Okay. Um, he's uh, he's f- was friends with Forsberg for a very long time and Brandon and stuff like that. Or sorry, uh, Billy. So Brandon used to store some of his cars at Broken Motorsports. Um you kind of get where I'm going now because yeah. he said he, I just said he's our team manager. Now. Yeah. So anyway, Brandon um, stored his cars at Broken Motorsports. I'd work on them. I'd go to the track with him in like 2014 and 15. We'd all hang out. We'd pit together. So I became friends with with Brandon. This is way before he did stuff with Forsberg and his team. He was uh, he worked for Facebook, Apple, stuff oh, like wow. that. Um, yeah, he's he, just like he, the big three. Yeah, top he's biggest super, corporations like, honestly, on the planet Earth. <laughs> my <laughs> most successful <laughs> friend I have what by a huge fuck? margin. Like super successful. Just like worked at the just a marketing whiz. Like he okay. started with Facebook when he was really young, um, and stuff like that. Helped grow the company. Is helped grow Apple. Can you not say his name? But is it Zuckerberg? Like, not, blink, no. big blink twice if it is. <laughs> like, you're just, no. it, Brandon's Brandon. a code word. Brandon's so, a code word. No, he's definitely not Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> I like him a lot more than I like Zuckerberg. <laughs> so, um, with that said. Um, there goes Flash forward, sponsorship. yeah, right. <laughs> it's, <laughs> but, it's gone. Fast forward to uh, like 2020. I, mean, I stayed friends with Brandon forever, even after I left there and started working for Snap On and all that kind of stuff. But um, in 2020, it was the year of COVID because you asked me before how I got to kind of where I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was doing some like pro ams, like US Drift pro ams and stuff like that, and like competing. And uh, I didn't have very good luck ever. Like, I had really bad luck with car stuff. And I also wasn't quite the best at building my own car. I'll, be, I'll, I'll say that now. <laughs> I always hey, had, I like, dumb it. problems. It was pretty and it was cool. And it made good power. But, like, I always had stupid problems. So S13 still at yeah, this my, point? Yeah, the purple one. Okay. So uh, COVID happens in, in, like, 2020. No one's really drifting. Like, you're competing or anything like that. And uh, I ironically start dating my now wife but we start dating my wife is a uh, like semi-pro wakeboarder um like super what? competitive wakeboarder she's way cooler than me um, <laughs> what the so, hell that's sick so uh she uh we start dating and she's i've told the, i'm pretty good at telling the story now because i've told a lot but she she wanted to know what drifting was all about because i talked all about drifting and you know it was now not happening because it's COVID. so like we're just hanging out we're on our boat every weekend wakeboarding and stuff like that i can't wakeboard to save my life i was but, about um, to ask you know, have you ever I, tried because you're kind of tall it. and like yeah more not like, like built her like dude. she could do flips and all these crazy tricks like oh, i damn. could barely ride the board so um she's like i really want to see you drift and i'm like all right fine whatever we go to a club loose event with my 180 
like oh, yeah, first yeah. lap come around tree turn the subframe rear subframe breaks and the whole Shut wheel the like falls off the car we're like literally staring at the ground like the car's broken i'm like well that was oh, like, it didn't awful wanna... These... yeah like pogo like... sticked around tree turn oh, and ripped the wheel off the car she's not um, in the car is she she's in the car <laughs> this is her first like real like experience at drifting so <laughs> so she's so now the gamblers are starting up again oh, right yeah. and i'm like all right cool so she's like, let's go. I want to see you compete. I want to see you compete. I want to see you compete. I'm like, fine. You know, I was pretty fed up with competing at that point, if I'm being honest with no, you. No, but you're, but I, I mean, was like, W wife. Yeah. She so is she's pushing <laughs> you out of here. So she's like, like, let's go. Let's and I'm go. like, sick. So I was like, here, here's a phone. This is before we used radios or anything. I'm like, take your phone and you're going to go up in the stands and you're going to tell me how I'm looking. Like, I just shoved her into spotting for me. Yeah. She, didn't, she never even watched a different <laughs> competition in her life. Drifting. So <laughs> we go to a gambler and this, this gambler had a lot of what I consider really good drivers. You know, it had like, Kenrick Meyer, it had Squirt, if you know, uh, Troy Manners, it had like um, uh, John uh, Jonathan Nair. It had a lot of like what I consider pretty good drivers and good cars. It was like really. Was that the first game? It was like the right? second gambler okay. they did. The first one I went and helped buy track out, but my car was getting its motor redone. Mm. So I go to that event and we qualify like seventh and I win it. And this is the first time I ever won a drift competition ever. And I was like, at the gambler, yeah, the gambler. This was the first uh, competition I've won in drifting, and that is crazy. And whatnot, I was like, holy shit! I'm like, we won. I'm like, that yeah. was crazy. And there's like some pretty big names there, especially compared to when I do the pro am stuff. There wasn't really that many like and you I were in the big names. Which I was in my S13 uh, with oh, the Jay Z. Okay, um, it was different than it is now. A lot different than it is now, but it was still like a relatively competitive car. Like it was like a 500 horsepower stock one Jay Z. Wow. motor um mm, with a z good. trans it had a rear mount rad that was poorly designed stock diff <laughs> stuff like that um but i so i won in that car um and i was like wow I'm like that was pretty cool like you just sit there and won my first event so i was like let's so go hit a pro yeah. yeah so i'm like let's go hit a pro now so we go to u.s drift battle in the bay um that was a crazy event we took third there and we got a pro license wow so i Things are escalating. Yeah, yeah so this, I'm like, oh, this shit. is happening fast. Yeah, so I'm like, all right, we won our pro license. I'm like, I went from like not even wanting to compete, now I have a pro license. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, how do I like go to FD? Like, I got to keep this momentum running. So I text Brandon, you know, bowling, and I'm like, hey, dude, I know you're like close with people in the industry, and I'm like trying to figure out how I can like maybe get sponsorship or stuff like this to like make FD a reality because I definitely didn't have the money to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't I think did, anyone does. Yeah, I definitely, and I still don't. So, I, so this is what you're 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 getting. Yeah. The, the the backing now. Yeah, so I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I'm just gonna, I just text him. I'm like, you know, I know you know people in the industry. Can I pick your brain? Because he's like, was always a go to dude if I wanted to talk yeah. about anything money related because he's so smart with that stuff. Yeah. So um, he's like, yeah, let's set up a call. So I call him on Monday. He's like, hey, dude, just so you know, I'm managing Forsberg's race team now. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what do you mean you're managing this Forsberg's the first race team? Conversation you have in this call. Yeah, like, like right from the Perfect. start. And he's just like, yeah, so he's like, so what do you want to do? So I explained him I want to do FD, you know, and that's kind of where it, it ended. It didn't go too far at that point. So there was another gambler that was in November of that year. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go to that gambler too. Um, Brandon was there. Forsberg was there at this gambler, which I didn't know he was going to be there. Um, we go to that one and we win that one. Damn. And I'm like, all right, sick. So we won. We went to, I'll never forget, we went to Chili's afterwards. We are like celebrating, mm. drinking margaritas and stuff like that. Hell yeah. So like the next day, um, I le I literally landed my truck in my trailer, like in my parents' front yard and just like left it there. And I like went to bed all like hung over and stuff like that. And, you know, <laughs> um, I didn't drive the truck back, yep, yep. Um, you know, and uh, I wake up in the morning to <laughs> the text message from Brandon. He's like, dude, get to the track now. Oh, and I'm shit. like, hung over i'm like what so like my truck's all hooked up to the trailer i stole the wheels and tires off my 350z daily to go drifting at the gambler with it so i didn't even have tires on my daily so i pulled scrubs out of the trailer threw them on my 350z all hung over and flew to english down yeah so i sit down and like it was i remember it was jimmy caldwell's birthday so like chris and everyone I love they're all jimmy just for the record oh my god what'd you say i love him oh best one of the best dudes ever dude. i love him to death he's dude that's i, I can we can do a two-hour podcast, podcast yeah. on what it's like to be in a formula drift pit or team with jimmy caldwell yeah <laughs> why is that name so <laughs> epic you've probably seen him i concepts Bloodmaster guy he owns a company called i concept uh, i concepts yeah. um he was forsberg's crew chief for a while he was um, the remember when i told you that sorry to cut you off but remember that i don't know if you're gonna remember this remember, but there was this story that i told like once or twice on here where i think me and justin were entering into turn one and then we crashed a little bit and i pulled off and i had a moment where i was like like it was just one of those moments where you're like self-reflecting you're like is this shit even worth it like should i even make my car nice anymore like i keep fucking crashing it 
Jimmy was the guy that came over and was like, I, I think he just walked over and was like, dude, that was the sickest drifting I've ever seen in my entire life. Like all this, like give me the craziest compliment. And I was like, fuck, okay, this is why. Yeah, you do time this, to, time to should, buckle up. You should feel honored. I mean, I know. people get compliments. From it was, dude, it was crazy. I was like, I was like, holy shit. All right. That, and I told him like there, I was like, I was like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm pretty bummed right now. I literally just fucking got this thing all fixed up and we fuck it up immediately. He's like, He's like, it is what it is, man. It's like it. it he's like, it is what sick. it is, though. Like yeah. I was like, yeah, I know, but it was like that moment for some reason always sticks in my memory for, for some reason I don't know why. I guess because I was like such at a mental low point, and then he just comes over, says like two words, and it's like right back up. Like that's how drifting yeah. is, though. I feel like it definitely is. Yeah, it could, that's <laughs> that's another like to go down having use even like that like. There's been so many times that I've gotten knocked out like in FD. But FD is a very toxic mindset, if I'm being yeah. honest with you. And I'm like super mad. And I'm sitting there and like there's like Forsberg's really good at this kind of stuff. He'll sit there and just like say like 10 words to me. And all of a sudden I'm just like, all right, now I don't want to like kill myself. It's crazy to get it from different perspectives. Yeah. 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 But I, um, I could not even imagine a competitive situation. Yeah. Dude, it's, I love that though. It's so <sighs> it's so insane. So that's um so again, so we're at Jimmy's birthday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just I'll finish that story quick. Um, and uh, I was hanging around, and Brandon's like, "I want you to talk to Chris." So like, I knew who Chris was. I've rode with him in his car for rides, and I've tandem with him at English Town a few times. But I never like actually talked to him, you know, yeah. in person. And I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like Chris Forsberg wants to talk to me. So You're about to break there, like, the ice. You know, what are you about to say? So right like, right here? So You're about like, to mess it up. He's like, "He's like, what do you want to do?" I'm like, "I want to do FT." He's like, "What do you want to drive?" I'm like, "Oh, I really want to drive an S15." He's like, "No, don't get an S15." And I'm like, <laughs> "He's like, get a Z." And I'm like okay so i'm like i'll get a z and i'm like whatever You're like chris was telling me to get a z you know why not yeah so um i started searching for a 370z and i knew ma motorsports was selling a, a shop demo car they had which they had a, a indy car motor and a vk45 that they built for a shop demo car but they never finished they sold their whole vk program when chris ditched the vk program too so um i text brian from ma and i'm like hey dude uh, you still have that 370z for sale like i'm interested in buying it he's like i sold the stone back Mm. And I'm like, oh, God damn it. So Stoneback buys everything. Yeah. So I text Stoneback <laughs> and I'm just like, hey, dude, I know like you've ran. Actually, it was like a, probably like a week or so later, but I text Stoneback. I'm like, I know you ran a 370Z. I'm interested on, because I have value his opinion. I'm like, I'm interested on in your opinion on what you felt about using that car in FD because I'm considering getting one. And he's like, oh, I loved it. He's like, I have one for sale. Well, actually, sorry. Brian didn't tell me he sold the Stoneback. So mm. I didn't know who owned it. So I, I, he's like, I have one for sale. He's like, it's the one at MA. I'm like, I'll, I'll give you money tomorrow. Boom. <laughs> like, yeah. they so, so I just bought landed it from him. in your lap. Perfectly. Yeah. And that's, that's how I got the car. So I'm um, talking with Chris and Brandon, and they're like, yeah, we'll get you some parts, and we'll help you, like, behind the scenes. You know, it'll be like, we'll sit there. We'll give you some guidance and prospect. We'll help you out with some partner relations and stuff like that. And I'm like, all right, cool. Sounds great. So then it's, like, 2021, January 1st, I get a phone call from, from Chris and Brandon as I'm loading a trailer to go do a Haggerty shoot. Like, I was doing a, a Haggerty show with my S13. It was called... Uh, rad ventures um anyway i sit there on a phone call with them and they're like yeah dude this is like a full deal like you're gonna like we'll manage all your sponsor relations we'll manage everything like this is like a real ride what like this fuck? is like and like I, I, I sat in my truck the one i had parked out here and i literally cried i'm just sitting there in my friend by strikes driveway and i'm like dude how the hell did this happen I, that's i'm like this I is just like <laughs> tweaking like I was, some I, dude I from like up. new jersey that sells tools for a living and is like halfway okay at drifting and like now like this team wants to believe in me you literally did like you know? two three events and yeah nailed three them. events I'm the, you, you, what the fuck and everything changed from not competing to doing fd yeah so i was like oh, well they must crap. have saw so like, something yeah yeah man. and it's and fortunately i had the foot in the door with brandon you know yeah. if i didn't have built that relationship yeah. from meeting billy and working at his shop yeah. You know, I would have never even been here today. Dude, but I mean, is, like, though. you just hail Mary to text to Brandon, I feel like. Like, you yeah. knew I have a friend like that, too. That where I, I, if I had some crazy idea like that, I feel like if I shot him a text like that, he would probably steer me in some sort of direction. But I think that since you made all those right moves, but which you didn't know were right at the time, which yeah. is wild to me, like, now yeah, you're just, here. Like, all the pieces of the puzzle. Like, I, I became friends with Brian from Emmy Motorsports because... I worked on an FD team for AJ, AJ Muss. You probably don't know who he is, but you you, yeah, uh, you remember AJ? Yeah. So, like, I worked on AJ Muss's Pro 2 team, and 
Brian like ran that team. So when we worked together for that FD season, I met Brian. So like meeting Brian and Scott Davidson, which if you guys don't know who he is, he's like honestly one of the most legendary people in competitive drifting. He was also from New Jersey. I don't um, think I know that name. Scott Davidson was Forsberg's crew chief for a very long time. Okay. And he like single handedly changed a lot of uh, at, like competitive drift car setup, honestly, for the oh, world. Oh, wow. Because um, he comes from a, a circle track and dirt track racing background where they basically he implemented a lot of that stuff. He's genuinely one of the smartest people you'll ever meet. He's from um, like uh, Wall, New Jersey, right by Wall uh, Stadium. I wonder if he would do one of these podcasts. Um, he's, he, he, well, when you said funny. dirt racing, because now I'm like, yeah, yeah, that was like drifting before drifting, yeah. if you think I know, about it. I know Brian said he would do one. So I gotta get yeah. him to do he's, this. Yeah, he's he, dude. It'd be epic to get him on yeah. and talk to him because he's not only is he hysterical, but he just has so much to talk about. He's yeah. been around this, the industry. Like I'm talking about 2014. He could talk about 2004. Yeah. You know what I mean? Are we like, talking about like Brian Wilkerson? Yeah, Wilkerson. Yeah, yeah. Okay, see, so that's the name. He, he said I'm, he would do it, but I'm, I'm like, very you're so far away. Yeah, like, yeah. I, don't yeah. I mean, he comes up there. to the track sometimes. Yeah, we gotta you know, set it up. We set it up when he's. That's a name that shows up when I watch like those older videos, like 07. D1 yeah. GP at English Town. Those yeah. are then. I, then you see Brian Wilkerson's name, and I'm like, Well, Brian's huh. the one that really built a lot of the. I mean, Forsberg's cars, right? For yeah, one. yeah, so. he built uh, a lot of Forsberg's cars. He built Stonebacks, you know, Forsberg Racing car. He yeah. built my car. You know, he's built Hops car. He's built yeah. Mike Powers car. He's built AJ Muss's car. Um, a lot of a lot of like heavy. I'm not saying I'm a heavy hitter, but he's yeah. no, built a lot of crazy stuff. He's he's just so good. Anything you're a heavy hitter. So you know, get the fuck out <laughs> of here, you're, you're, dude. You're really I'm, I'm, like a hero for I, us. I mean, it's it does. Yeah. I like why I like telling the story because it's like it really does give people like hope in a way. Because like if you look, think of like some kid that's into IndyCar, if you think of some kid that's even into motocross racing, which is more obtainable than like IndyCar or Formula One, but still like it's not that easy to get into a professional side and actually get partners to support you like hmm. it's really not that easy these days so like with drifting it's and a lot of especially in like the hot boy drifting side of the world drift like professional and competitive drifting gets a lot of slack but you gotta admit like it's impressive that it can grow like a career for someone to compete Dude. as a professional athlete totally still, you know and that's like for me what's so cool because like again like i don't come from family money i don't come from uh my like my family doesn't didn't even know what motorsports was like my dad yeah. was a foot doctor like he got, he's not with right us anymore now. god rest that's his soul insane. but like i knew you were gonna fucking you know? say i need him right now stop. 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 you know it's just like i don't come from a motorsports background or anything like i had to figure this well, out you started on my own. a trail you blaze a trail bro you, so, you kind okay, of but i don't want to i don't want to don't sell yourself short you 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 said you um worked for someone that was doing pro spec yeah which is how i made these relations that's what i mean though you yeah. you did go out of your way to make sure you were talking to people, working with people, doing this. Yeah. You, you didn't you know why, to, but you, know. you were, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I did it, like, it's funny, because, like, I wanted to do FD. I would love to do FD when I was at that point working with AJ. But, like, I was like, all right, I'll work for my friend. Like, I want to support AJ. He was a great deal. I would have worked for AJ if he didn't pay me. He, I did get paid to go there, but, like, I just wanted to see him succeed. Mm. So, like, I was like, yeah, dude, I'll come to all your rounds and help you out. And it just was a bonus that he paid me. But it also was nice that I made those relationships with Scott and – but Brian and like it yeah. now works on our team Moose. If you know who Moose is, he'd be another fun one. And you're one putting to talk yourself to. in all those places but that you need to be in order to make those relationships. So that's a yeah. big, big it, thing. It, it all like added up to be where it is now, and it's yeah. crazy because it's like if one little thing changed, or if I was just like, oh, I don't want to put the energy in. All yeah, this, like, like I don't want to do it would that. Have, it would have changed your yeah. whole timeline. Yeah, everything would be different. Crazy. So it definitely still involves a lot of hard work for, like, on the back end before you even meet anyone. You still got to put yourself out there and go do shit. So that's I mean, interesting that you said that. Like nowadays, it is it is probably fucking way harder to get sponsors and partnerships and everything. And people. Always seems hard to me. I don't know. Here's like, remember how <laughs> like, earlier. I'm just like it, this seems impossible. Always, I feel. Remember like. how yeah. earlier we talked about how, or me and me and Alex were talking about how we I on the Discord. There's like for us, there's like a window into like that next younger generation of drifting. Oh, yeah. There's kids on there playing games that are fucking. 16 17 years old drifting it is nuts and i'm like what the fuck you're doing everything i've done cool in my life and you know you you don't you haven't graduated high yeah. school yet like yeah. what the fuck so there's a kid on there um reese conklin he's from like the yeah I know reese. you do i know him very well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. dude he we just play won um east, east 10, 10. Yeah, yep. so does that mean he can do what you're doing now? He has to so east 10 is a championship base so he has to finish certain you know, somewhere, and I don't know what it is, top three, whatever yeah. it is, in uh, East 10, then their championship 
at the end of the season in order to have his pro license. Yeah. Um, Reese is in a really good spot. Yeah, um, that's an example of a yeah. kid who I feel like. He, so Reese is also not to take anything away from his story. I know him pretty well. I talked to him at the rounds. He comes to a lot of the rounds. He's mm-hmm. honestly one of the nicest kids you'll ever Super meet. Super nice. Um, he is in a really good spot because he is close family friends with Von Gittin Jr. Mm. So like he, if he plays his cards right, I'm just I'll throw it out here now. Watch if he's driving an R chair one day. Remember we talked about it. <laughs> no, here. no, no. We should. I have this conspiracy there, and I said to him, I talked to him at Atlanta that last he's an year. Indi- industry I'm like, plant? dude, you need to, you need to ride this. Is hard. You need to figure out whatever you can. Yeah. You know, with that relationship, I don't care if you got to go there every single day and sweep the freaking floors. Yeah. You know, you got to figure out a way to. Grow yourself and 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 ride the you know the fun haver RTR thing and that's he's he, he's doing great for himself he's he's really good Dude, at driving honestly, he's super yeah. humble he's super you know he's just a really good kid and to your point before it's like crazy to see how these young kids now can get into this sport like there's a dude that competes in FD with us he's like he was 15 last year and I'm like I remember I'm ba- I'm at Road Atlanta it's like top eight or something like that his name's Jaden super nice kid also he's 15 years old in a Corvette and I'm like. 30 year old Alex, like, dude, I'm about to battle a 15 year old. I'm like, you know what you I did can't. when I was 15? Dude, I don't want to talk about it on a microphone. I, don't, <laughs> you know what I mean, I don't it definitely know. wasn't driving drift cars at Road Atlanta. I don't even remember what I was doing at 15, probably beating off somewhere. <laughs> but, like, but I really can't think of what oh. I definitely don't have that attitude, didn't have that attitude that they have, which but is it's, like. It's crazy to what like, the Sims and stuff have done. Like, super, the next generation of, like, I'll use it in drifting, but in a lot of motorsports, next generation of of drivers is it's just gonna be nuts from sim stuff crazy you know because it's just crazy they go in and they get in a car and they just rip and Reese, it's like if you're what hearing the this heck? fuck you dude you're 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 cool kid but i'm still gonna i'm still gonna put it on <laughs> you dude we're gonna we're gonna race it one day dude, it's 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 really impressive and it's cool to see what it what it'll develop but i but it's it's discouraging as me like man i feel like so who won yeah. i beat him okay um, <laughs> Yeah, to be fair, he uh, his car like, had like 400 horse. Yeah, dude, yeah. I remember coming down the front straight. He was in like a stock LS Corvette in yeah. FD, which is hard. And at Road Atlanta, we're coming down the hill, and I'm like, dude, you got you got to start moving, dude. I'm like, I can't enter the slow. I'm like, my car is like keyed up right now. Yeah, it is not gonna drift the slow. That's that's one of the things. And though, it's funny because right? he leaves a line because I was in the burnout box and I watched his battle before, and he left a line. And I, you would think he entered at like 200. He's like, wah, bah, 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 you know, things rowing like five gears down the straightaway and making but all this not. noise from an LS. And I was like, man, that thing rips. So we get out, and he's through the line, and he's slamming gears. And I'm just like, rup, rup, rup. Yeah. and I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, this kid's got to get the hell out of my way. I'm like, this kid's got to get That's on the gas. That's hard, though, to drift with someone slower. I, it's know? it's my biggest, it's my kryptonite in drifting, yeah. if I'm being honest with you. Road Atlanta, what a fucking sick track, huh? Yeah, it's yeah, sick. That's, my first and only podium scary. in FD We tried at, to play, uh, Atlanta. T- speaking of fucking Reese again, we were playing Road Atlanta the other day with, like, these more high-power cars, and <laughs> I can't do that shit. It's, it's so confusing to me. That shit looks sick. To you, right? hard in a video game. To you, right? It's, it's like it's like person. a... It, it's yeah, not, but it's, it's not even just, like a crazy amount of turns, you're going right? Going down a fucking like mountain. But yo, you're hauling yeah, ass like by the time yeah. you get to that life. bottom. Have it's, you seen yeah. Road Atlanta in person? No. Or no. like, dude, it is. If especially if you haven't seen it in person, there is no camera or anything that can portray how steep it is. So you're it literally is really on a ski slope, like that. Yeah, like you <laughs> okay. are. Like when you're at the burnout box or like behind it, you can't even see. Like any of the track, except yeah. for like all the way at the top of the hill, because it drops. Hard as hell. It drops wow. hard. That's and why then, I was like, "That's scary." <laughs> that, yeah, the that entrance track in scary. alone to the track is like going up a black diamond. I feel like, like to pull into the track, like with wow. your with your rig. Like is that you one of your favorites? It's definitely a cool one. It's got to be. It's my favorite because I I got a podium there. Yeah. So like that's cool. All right. But all right. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. I like Utah. Utah is hasn't done me well in terms of luck, um, but uh, it's just. Probably one of the most ballsy tracks. I heard we that do in track FD. was kind of rough, like hard to. It's fast. It's Who was really fast. About? Was it Ricky that was talking about that? It might have been. M- I don't know if that makes Ricky sense. Ricky or Mike. Pal. Yeah, someone. I don't but know. Uh, what I do, what I was about to ask is, is it car? Is it harder because the car is getting issues a little bit because of the elevation? It's like I heard people's We're tunes f- started. We've to been th- fine with that. Oh, okay. Uh, mine, like in terms of again, my car. Maybe I don't know what combination. It's probably because. I'm gonna really throw out some plugs here, but like, you know, because it's on the link. 
I, I have the, the it's head guy. Be the, it's probably the Nas energy. The the, the 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 head guy from Link Jason tuned my car. Right. So there. like you know that's if you have the tuner that knows the product that well, it's obviously. And then like Hartsock. So I don't even know who Biddy's is. Brian Hartsock. He's uh, Ryan Turk's crew chief. He wired my whole car. He he wires a lot of cars. Like he did uh, you know, all of Forsberg's cars and stuff like that. Um. So like with the package that we have built by Brian, like the car has just been so comically reliable you know what i mean like comically is a word it's like it's it's, it's so uh, it's what? so nice compared to previous that things that sounds like I've dealt every with. car that brian touches yeah. to be it, honest but isn't the thing that like isn't that crazy that that's what you're calling reliable now and in my opinion i i feel like everyone years ago was just like it's an ls it's just gonna work forever like blah blah blah, blah, oh, blah. Yeah. imagine having a thousand plus horsepower turbocharged car that only thing you do is change the spark plugs that's what it. i'm saying like and even that's once a year that's, that's pretty nuts. awesome, man. Yeah. I didn't really I also know. I don't run ethanol though, so like ethanol eats a lot of stuff. It we run VP help. race gas, so like it's different. Like I keep it's a gasoline based product in my car, so it doesn't eat injectors, it doesn't mm -hmm. eat fuel pumps, it doesn't eat the gas tanks and stuff like that. Is, is e a, does that like run through your your stuff? Does that a crazy wear difference on the ethanol? Items? Yeah, yeah, ethanol destroys stuff. Or if you have like. Um, there's like a certain chemical in like some race gases that'll eat a lot of stuff like valves and valve seats and stuff like that. We don't run, we run a very pretty neutral fuel. We run C16. You can run it in a lawnmower if you really wanted to. Um, it's just really good. Burns well. It makes plenty. The VR makes so much power. It doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, we did at, at Utah. We didn't have much elevation. We turned the power up. Like we went from 18 pounds to 24, which is why I'm, I just never turned it back down. I'm still on 24, <laughs> if I'm being honest with but you. But that's a thing, though, right? Um, like I'm not. I, oh, yeah. I feel like we've yeah. talked with somebody it's, where they were it, like, "Yeah, you're up there. The car's running totally different." Yeah, I I went to uh, um, Grid Life. What was it called? Alpine Horizon um, in 2021, and my wife's family friends let us borrow their Honda S2000. As a like it's a car to get to and from the hotel and track. That's a pretty sick car uh, it was to borrow. Sick. Like what yeah. the fuck? Like yeah. it's, here's an S two K. I love that car. It's, I know you so do. Cool. That's such a weird Frankie car to Because I don't like what. convertibles, but it's, it's you won't nice. love it if you're in Colorado. Oh. Why? Because <laughs> we we went and got dinner and it's like me uh, Chris uh, Forsberg has his Ram twenty five or thirty five hundred and then the other crew guys had a GMC Kodiak because we had two rigs there. And we leave and we get on like I-70 or something, and these two trucks are walking me in this S2. I mean, they are oh, gone. Because S2000 it's... is not already a super fast car, but when you're at like 7,000 feet, <laughs> that thing cannot get out of its own way. <laughs> really? Like you are at like 8,000 RPM just trying to merge with traffic. That's hey, but that 8,000 RPM is sick. It probably it sounds sounded cool. dope. Yeah. But then you're watching a mini. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy what the elevation will do. Like even like the I drove the Infinity demo car we have there, which is like a 500 horsepower VK56, and that thing was struggling in Colorado. Wow. And I thought it, that was the first time I ever drove it. So like, man, this thing doesn't make that much power. Then I drove it at uh, Michigan, and I'm like, this thing's so fast. It's I crazy how different it is. Why your cars handle it so well? Do you guys just have? Do you have different boost, tunes? dudes? Turbo. He just said okay. he upped the turned boost. Turn the boost a little boost higher. That was it. Yeah, the, the NA guys have a hard time. Okay. But the Damn. turbo guys, you just turn the boost okay. up. Okay. So to compensate for it. Yeah. yeah. And it's really not putting really that. any more strain on yeah. basically anything because it's just making the same power. Yeah, like the turbo is spinning faster, but that's about it. Yeah. It's still but, meant to do that. What, what would, I guess, yeah, technically, what's getting strained? Nothing. You're delivering more fuel. Yeah, they're just making the same power. Yeah. yeah. They're just using more boost to do it, they're just replacing atmosphere with boost. So I know your your engine's built now, but before that you said you were running like six hundred horsepower on stock. Yeah. Internals? So there at we couldn't turn it up that much because it was stock. So like the first year of doing Utah to stock motor, and uh, it was definitely pretty. Like we were running like, like thirty something psi oh tire God. pressure, which is pretty high on that car. On like, the rear. And the rear, like I run single digits yeah. now in my FD car, but like then we were like airing it up. We had the rear. I. This is Whoa. a controversial topic in drifting. Super anti sway bars, but we had like the rear sway bar keyed as tight as it can go. We had like the shocks cranked. We had everything we could do to try to make that car drift at Utah wow. because of um, that's the Power real reason goals. why I wanted to build the motor. It was honestly yeah. so when we go back to Utah, the car will be fast enough to yeah. compete. What now the car, dude, the speed difference now. You want to know a real crazy stati statistic and what you can do? And this is talking about tires. Mm -hmm. If you were to go and look at, <laughs> I'm using Forsberg as an example, we keep talking about him, but if you look at, run of one of Forsberg's lead runs at Utah, like a good lead run that he laid down and you put a stopwatch on like initiation marker three and the finish line. And then you put one on my qualifying lap. My car was over a half a second faster through the course on a 255 and he's on a 295. And that's the same line, the same fuck? zone, same everything. Why is that? Because 
grip is like it doesn't matter. Like if you're on a 255, it doesn't necessarily mean that the car is going to be slower than a 295 because it's all about like power to grip ratio. So like mm -hmm. if you just dial the car in the right way, like how much power you can you need for the grip that it can achieve, like. It, they can go just as fast. Like everyone thinks that a pro spec car is a lot slower. Now, don't get me wrong. There's our tracks that you can get more out of like a two. And who knows what pressure Chris was running and who knows? I'm usually here as an example because I did this exact scenario. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of people. There was, there was cars that we were way faster than. And then there was cars that we were slower than. But um, it just shows that like these crazy big tires are like kind of not really that needed. Like if yeah. you're in New Jersey, which is a really tight track, like a two, you're never going to make a 255 car keep up with a 295 because they could use the yeah. tires. But so I much. feel like if you, you're, if you're, if you're just boost is high and you're on a 255 and you're just lighting them up, you're not even really giving the tire an opportunity to work. Exactly. Yeah. So that's th why there's this balance. I feel like yeah. that's what we're talking about right now. Is exactly. That it's all about like finding the sweet spot. That's why we don't usually run the power really far up because there's mm. no point. Do you see people in, in FD, like in Prospect, that show up with like 1,200 wheel horsepower? On 1,200? Like, and I'm like, prospect? what the heck are you doing? Is there not I'm like, a limit for that shit? You're just melting the tire off well, going the, literally nowhere. The it's, regulation is still tire size to Not in Prospect. Weight or it's, no? Well, so we all have a minimum weight. Okay. Which is twenty nine hundred pounds. That we can't be anything less than that. Okay. Uh, my car is with me in it twenty nine fifty, which is pretty light for a Z. That's it's really light for a pretty Z. Pretty precise. Like you, um, do you, are people trying to get it close to twenty nine as possible? You want to be That's around twenty nine fifty. That's the goal because uh, if you blow your bumpers off, and you actually, it was even crazier. You lose about twenty pounds in two runs just off tire and mm. fuel. My like what? fuel and tire that you use, you'll lose about 20 pounds just from wearing the tire down and running fuel out of the car. Yeah. And then if you blow a bumper off and all that stuff too. How much, you know, is, that, how it, much is arrow weight? Yeah, imagine like. You lose all of it. <laughs> <laughs> in, my, in my case, it's not much because everything's carbon. My front bumper but. would be 90 pounds of Bondo. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because then, oh yeah, it's like, it's like <laughs> check out this lightweight mod. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. the fucking bumper just flies off. Do they will they just weigh your cars at random? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, a lot of times. Sometimes it depends. I feel like they used to do it a lot more. I don't know the rhyme or reason why they don't as much as they used to. But I remember like my first year of FD. Every time you lost a battle, you'd pull on. Oh. Um, Wait. Yeah. Why do I feel like this? Maybe last year, or maybe the year before that, when they were weighing in, I was so confused why they were doing it so often. Yeah. It's just, maybe this is they're why? just trying to catch stuff like that. They're, they're always trying to catch little things. FD is like insanely analytical on a lot of stuff which is good because you want yeah, to see the wow. sport grow but they're very they take the data they pull off stuff is nuts because like they have they can access all of our data on all of our cars they have a mm. plug that they could plug into and they any random time they could pull oh, wow any sort of data they want oh, off anyone's car all link ecus too well right? especially on ours it's easy but even the pro class they all uh -huh. have to have a, like a dt um yeah dtm connector which which is like hand high and low yeah. and they could pull all the data off anyone like chris's car anyway any car remember motec to holly whatever it is they have to be able to pull it off it's I'm like part of their rule i'm trying to think how i could <laughs> this is so shit. yeah what if you ran a power how FC? do i cheat <laughs> how would you well that's been how my would, argument how would about you some cheat things. Like, how, like, how would you possibly cheat like i like, there's definitely ways i'm sure but oh, well, he got yeah. the he got the flame <laughs> tune <laughs> yeah <laughs> like like is it's, that what they're traction looking controls for? is what a lot of time they're looking for oh the traction okay. controls not allowed it's delete it's completely removed from our link ecus um, like all the spec ECUs we get from Link for Prospect don't even have the ability to run the traction control or a lot of the features that they have. Is that really like what would, oh, so that it would like maybe grip up a little yep. quicker or something using a computer? Yeah, another way of using traction control though is just like lifting your foot up a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Just <laughs> that's find that's the why grip. I'm like, but why Some are... people, I don't know. It's it's because, I, I don't know, they're trying to make it, so they say, uh, cheaper and e like more fair for people. That's why they have like their no steering column rule and the stock pedal box rule and like you can't run air jacks and like weird stuff. I'm like, kind of into all that. Cheaper. I so, love it, dude. Yeah. I saw somebody. I like that they kind of try to keep it. Yeah, I, I do. Crazy. I like the fact that they try to keep it less crazy. I hate how my car had an aftermarket steering column and pedal box and I had to reverse it yeah. because it was just a lot of money. So they spent went back with that or yeah, they made it, or you could take a points deduction uh, for every round that you do with those modifications. Mm, I done. didn't even if know you're grandfathered in, which is my car had all that. So it's funny enough, I brought the car to Brian and he put the stock steering column back in, in the Woodward steering column bracket. So it's oh. literally just a stock steering column in the place that the Woodward one was in, um, which is funny because it's kind of like my little like, Jab to FD, like, haha, what are you going to do? It's a stock steering it's a column. It's a loophole. <laughs> you know what I it's mean? It's a loophole. There you go. So, and then I pref actually much prefer the uh, the stock pedals to the pedal box. Yeah. Um, that one I'm actually pretty happy with. We run a FRS throttle pedal, which oh. I, it's nice. The problem is 
it, it might just be something with our setup. Um, it's very finicky. Like it, it's some reason the ECU and it don't get along a lot and it throws weird code sometimes and it, it does weird stuff. But overall, I like the way it feels better. But I like the, the thought of the rule of keeping things yeah. more OEM. I really do. Like I, I do believe in that. It's just kind of funny because like those steering columns are safer than a stock one yeah. in the event of a crash. That's so like you're going to tell people that you can't run a safer thing is kind of silly to me. Um, and there's really no competitive advantage to having a pedal box. There isn't. Besides the fact that you can fit yourself in a car better, but I don't know how that's a competitive competitive yeah. advantage. So like, it was, that one was a little weird, you know. But whatever it is, do what they it still is now. require like this the strut towers to be the same location or something like yep. that? Okay. Yeah, you can't do any chassis modifications in between the strut between, towers, yeah. like front and rear. This in the doesn't center, sound which is why my S13 wasn't legal for FD. Funny enough, which is what ended up another reason because I would just took that. But my car has. I didn't do it, but it's rear tubs in the back. Oh, okay. So and we sent the pictures to FD, and they're like, yeah, you can't take yeah. this. You can't do that? Because no, of rear okay. tubs. So I was like, all right, I got to find a new car. And see, I wanna, there's like I little aspects what, of FD that I really I, like. I, like I want to see one then. with like full interior, dude. Yeah. Like, and yeah. you know what I'm saying? We're yeah. on the same it's page, Frankie. This makes it so heavy. That's the thing. I know. It's all about like weight. But like, you got to get the wheat. But like, I want somebody's style. Your S13, I was going to say, like, I want to put a carpet was, in that so bad. Speaking if, of interiors, if that was, I want to put a carpet in it so bad. Wait, you so what's, get, you what's stopping you? What, what's stopping Car- you? Just how expensive carpets are, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, are they re- Frankie just hacked one. Oh, no, you can yeah. get the uh, I want a nice, like, black you, carpet. You for get it. the OEM. What are they called? Don't Malcolm, look at me. You guys called? did something with. They remember? just put one in his car. Malcolm, you remember those carpets? Malcolm can't. I remember him. I don't remember the name. They're on our website, I think. Uh, but it's like an aftermarket company that makes this carpet. It's not like molded perfectly. Custom like car a, carpet. I mean, it's I got a cage and OEM. stuff too, so it's like not yeah. really going to fit that great. I mean, hey. But I'm, I'm saying like your car, let's say you drove that car, that S13 that was on the screen earlier, right? Yeah. We saw it earlier when like, you know, I had to peep the page really quick. And it was drifting at Appalachia, and I was like, damn, that looks like a pretty cool S13. And then it, boom, rear mounted radiator setup. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, so it looks like that. a pretty street car car from the front. And I'm like, what the f-? Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's definitely very like competition esque build. Like it's stock diff. Um, it has drive shaft shop axles. It used to have a much crazier angle setup. But now we, we have a partnership with Part Shop Max. So like it oh, has awesome. like their very basic. Like they're literally their most basic front end kit that has like the stock style lower control arms that are extended with literally Chris's um, setup. Yeah, with the the PBM knuckles, like the basic knuckles, and then it has all their rear arms in the car. Yeah, and it drives so good. I it's love like, PBM. It did. It drives so unbelievably well. And honestly, it had GK Tech before it. Um, and also good. I I, yeah. I like the GK Tech. Don't get me wrong. It's well, just like, I don't like the whole angle. This shit is crazy, yeah. man. The I thing with the part shot Max stuff and. Take it however you want, because you always everyone's got an opinion on everything. In my opinion, Part Shop Max to GK Tech, the Part Shop Max stuff is such higher quality. Yeah, their Heim joints are so much nicer hmm, than like definitely. any like I used to blow Heim joints apart yeah. with GK Tech stuff like all the time. Yeah, but you so. will pay for it a little bit, I think, right? Yeah, but it has to yeah. be more money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I like for the, the price. GK Tech is ridiculously good. It is good for, for the, the money. Price. It's super great yeah. for the money. Oh, I ran they it make for a years. lot of stuff too, like tons of GK Tech products. Yeah. I'll say, I said it before. I say it again. They their wholesale. So we don't make a lot of money on that stuff, but like it's impossible for me to not try to sell it to people, of to customers, because I'm like, it's all black. It looks good. It, it works. works. I'm the like, the geometry is great. Yeah, like, they don't have geometry issues. If they like upgraded the quality of their Heim joints and some stuff and their tie rods, I think that they'd have a really good product. I actually have one you know? ripe though. Rear upper control arms. <laughs> oh my god! I bro. don't like any of their rear arms. If I'm being honest with you, yeah. I broke so many of them. I, I don't have many problems with them. If I'm if I'm if we're building a drift car, it's fine. If we're real, if we're building a comp, or, le- you know, something like that car. It's fine, but the second you need to add negative camber, the rear upper control arms will not let you add like even yeah. even one to two degrees of negative camber. It's so weird, and it's the only arm company I've seen do yeah. that. That is interesting. I've never tried to run that negative with oh, except for I've broken camber arms on it many yeah. times. I've broken GK Tech camber arms, and it'd, it'd be a lot more than two degrees really? when that broke. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's so strange. I mean, yeah. I think there's a way you can like reverse something. I think Chris figured it out. Like he took one nut out or something, and then he was able to get like another degree, but that was it. It was so strange. Yeah, but then the fact that you got to take 
Yeah, it's crazy. The I I think about it all the time when you're installing a product is like the average person would they think this way? Yeah, no, probably not. Definitely not. Because yeah. we were, we were doing we were messing around with my car in the garage last weekend, and Chris started doing a bunch of shit, and I'm laying down on the ground. I'm like, thank God you're here because I would have never <laughs> thought to go that way. Like, how is your car going? <laughs> oh, that good. Yeah. What do you have? I have an IS that I'm putting a one J in. Really. Yeah. I love IS 300s. Dude. They're a good car, man. Bring it up, man. Bring it, it was up. a great uh, all arounder, and then it was a GE, and I drifted it a lot. Is this a sedan? With a GE, yeah. And like, and now I wanted a 1J because there's nothing more enticing to my ears yeah. than a 1J. <laughs> well, 1J ZV VTI, from what I've been told, is a really easy swap for an uh, IS 300. Dude, it dropped right in, bolted right up. Yeah. Now I'm on the part. <laughs> yeah, dude, the wiring situation for these. Now, I not, just thought that it was easy to make them work. There's no. my car. Because you. Well, it depends on what ECU you have, I guess, right? Or yeah. No. yeah, and I'm running it on a Power FC as well. So basically, oh, I've you, definitely seen this car. You before. have to run. Yeah. You have to run the stock ECU in conjunction with the standalone, just so that your like windows. Hey, there's Frankie. <laughs> Do dude. not play that video. Nice. Look at do this. Do not play that video. <laughs> That's a great video, dude. Fuck. There you go. Look at that. Look at the look at the uh, grill. Look at the grill. That shit's <laughs> flying off. <laughs> I love that. What trans? Uh, CD. Okay, I did a CD swap on that. I I mean, he I feel like if I had a W, it would have, I would have blew one of them up by you now. You had the CD yeah. for a long time, like, and I just, I beat the piss CDs out of it. work. Yeah, you know, I, it's a great trans. They're not overly priced. I bought it like, for a hundred hundred bucks. Yeah, that's cheap. It was. It's not the nine. It's like yeah. a one or it's a two. Little, or, little notchy into third. I just run <laughs> uh, oh. I run uh, what's the one that it likes? MT eighty five. Oh, GL4 fluid specifically, I guess. Yeah. That thing jerks off the GL4 fluid. Like, but if you put like normal translude in it, it's considerably louder. Yeah. Mm. So Yeah, I have one of those recall CDO nines in my uh in my S13. So like Recall? It, yeah, the ones that when you let the clutch out in neutral, it sounds like the car has a rod knock. That's what my car has. Dude, is that is that okay? Yeah, it's like a recall thing. So like my car, the the infinity we have has the same or you know, Chris has that car has the same exact noise. Like I remember I was I was doing a a Hoonigan event in Atlantic City and uh I'm like sitting there and like Hurt walks up to me and he's like, dude, like shut it off. Like the motor blew up. I'm oh, like, shit. I'm like, Hurt, look, I push the clutch in and it goes away. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a trans, dude. Dude, that, yeah. tell me that's not the shit my mind makes. It used yeah. to make it really badly, but I did my trans swap like 16 to 17 times <laughs> with my buddy. How does it fit in an IS300 is what I want to know. I, do you have the, like, is it a bell I housing cut, cut off? I cut it, yeah. So it's one of those. So okay, I have yeah, an auto bell missed. housing. It's like a J J2 yeah. bell housing. It it bolts right in. I can do it myself all the time. But you got a lot of practice. <laughs> I also did it a bunch of times. Like I can I tell know. you the C D that's in my S thirteen has not been out of it since the day that car was built. Okay. That's Ever. Amazing. It's, it's, been, it's, it's never been out. It's friends like you that encourage friends like me to go try it. And then when I go try it, it doesn't work out at all. My buddy had a CD, Daryl, my new roommate, yeah. by the way, lives at my house now. Um the he had a CD, did a swap. Didn't touch it for three years or two years. Regardless, he loved it, dude. And I was like, wow, that sounds awesome. It what was your break. problem though the whole time? Was it clutch? Clutch the, flywheel? The kit that I used, it was a Collins kit. Uh, mm. When I cut the... yeah, Sorry to hear that. Yeah, I didn't like it. I actually anything. like him a lot. Like, he's a cool dude, but the I product like stuff. The product was like... For the swap list. And this is... Yeah. You can, again, take this how you please, but man, like the the, the slave cylinder... It uses a T56 one. The, the, the T56 slave cylinder that comes with the kit is just a normal Duralast one. Mm, like, yeah. I bought one from AutoZone yeah. from another, I forget, what is it, a Camaro of some sort. And I compared the two, same exact thing. The clutch was, like, just a normal spec 350Z clutch, in case you didn't know that. Um, and I did it 17 times because... <laughs> is it really actually 17 times? Yeah. 17 it times. It wouldn't go into... The first time when we were putting it in, I mentioned the slave cylinder... Yeah, I rock. Maybe we internal rocked slave? internal slave. Oh, we maybe rocked the the trans, I guess, too hard, and then it managed to break the slave cylinder. And you put it in, and like it le that. and it was already in, and we're yeah. bleeding the clutch, and that shit is just pissing. Okay, and I'm like, okay, all right, I we're just gonna this. do this again, and we did it this. again, and again, and again, and again, and now it won't go into gear. So then I'm like, okay, what's up with this? And you didn't know it was broken yet. No, right. I just made a. I did a bunch of different things. The the the, the flywheel yeah. was hitting the motor, like when the it was spinning. Flywheel was bolted to the motor, dude. 
Huh? No, 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 no. It was hitting like um, it was hitting like something, saying. and I had to. Did you ever break a flywheel? No. I broke a flywheel once on the FD car. Like where it pops out? No, like, like in it a video? broke the the whole f- the outer ring. It was apparently welded on. I didn't learn this. So I was at Honey Moves last year. Um, I'm like in my FD car. It's Friday night. And I'm like stoked because I love Honey Moves because it's like after the FD event and we just go and beat the crap out of our FD cars at English Town. It's See, just yeah. fun, that you know. Fun. It's like it's like a thing to do. So I'm sitting in line. I have like ten of my like homies all behind me. I'm about ready to lead, and someone like wobs the wall, like wrecks their shit in the wall. So I'm like, all right, shut the car off. We're all sitting there waiting. It's now getting cold because it's a cold October yeah. night. Mm-hmm. And like they clear the track. And you're like, all right, go. So I hit the start, and it's just like nothing. And so my car's dry sump, right? So it has a belt that runs oil pump. So I hit the start button, and I hear like a noise, but I don't see the oil pressure go up. And I'm like, I'm like, oh no! I thought the dry sump pump belt fell off, and I thought my motor was done. Toast. That's I thought scary, it was blown up. Man, so I'm like belt. freaking out. So I jump out of the car, I rip the hood off, I throw the hood off the car, and I look down, the belt's on. I'm like, okay. I'm like, that's good. <laughs> Panic. So like, I tell like my wife's in the car. I'm like, hit the start button. She hits it. Nothing moves. Like the like the yeah, nothing not, is moving. Yeah, not, I just hear like, Rrr. I'm like, what the fuck is going on so i like tow the car off i jack it up we hit the starter button i'm under the car and i see this the Just outer, the outer ring, of the ring of the flywheel spinning <laughs> it's just spinning but the flywheel is not moving i hope that never so happens to me. Well, <laughs> yeah so i took it to the chris knapp shop there and we put it up and i welded it like because oh, really? it's pretty easy to get into my bell housing setup so like i just put a bunch of welds well chris actually did um put a bunch of welds on the flywheel to put it back together and i drove it for that and like another test day after that, no, the and fuck? then put a new flywheel in the car. Yeah, not, he didn't not have yet. to like perfectly line it up. He oh, just, it was like, not when you hit the starter; it did not sound good. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> like it was like, dude, it's like because it was all you yeah. know weird so and, you just, and the welding slag and shit. Yeah. You just probably oh, you the mean problem, after yeah. you fixed it? After <laughs> yeah. I fixed oh, okay. it, like the the flywheel did not sound good when it was on when you're hitting the starter. Did not sound good. Yeah, but when it was spinning, you're yeah, when you're using it, it was fine. <laughs> it was just when the starter was engaging with it. That's great. That's that's cool though. Dude, yeah. I I mean, I I knew that going the CD route was going to shortcut if I wanted to go one J, because then yeah. now it's just gonna yeah. be fine. I can just do, I just unbolted everything from the GE, put it on the one J, and threw it in the car. So the same clutch, flywheel, everything. Everything is the same. I use wow. a Collins drive shaft. That was a good product. I I have no complaints about that part yeah. of the. So your car was automatic originally. I yeah. Think. So I have a three eighty nine diff in the back that's now welded. And then that's it's a CD. good range for a for a CD. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Because then now now with a one J, I could be in third. Before I would put it in third, and it would sound like it was like not happy about <laughs> that thing it. Couldn't it drift be, third gear with that ratio like, with a stock BBTI uh, two JZ. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, damn, oh, like just funny. one more, one more, one more. Like coming off the bank, I would just pop it in a third, and then just <laughs> it was yeah. so fun. Oh, dude, I want. Oh, yeah, you definitely drove the shit out of that car. Even me just doing that little motion, I want to <laughs> drive so badly right now. Fuck, yeah. I'm like feeding right now. I want to drive. So, what do you have left? Dude, fuck if I know. Just wiring? Just wiring. We got it to crank, okay. which it sounds exactly like the what old you see car. you're going to run? Or are you running? I have Here an Apexi Power FC. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, what is with you guys? It works. <laughs> Every guest. It works. Every it works. Guest yeah, is it works. The, the Game okay, Boy the, Color hooked the, up to your car. The, the, the motor, Jesus. the motor ran amazing with it in in O O two. Do you know it is two thousand and twenty four? It's it ran great in O two, and it's gonna run great in twenty four. I'm telling you, it, it maybe it doesn't have the fail safe. Have tune it. A Pexy, can you sponsor Dude, us Andy already? Lo- said look at, he would look tune at what it. we do for you. We take the hits every time. Just get us with that sponsorship. Anyway. They still make a Pexy Power FC? This yes, thing was they brand do. new. I bought it. Brand new. I, it's a what? brand new product. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that company was still in business. Yep. Dude, the, 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 com- the commander I have, dude, the screen looks so good. <laughs> Not like yours. Wait, my, what are you trying to say? My screen of the commander, is they changed it. Mine's the, mine's the new one. Yours is? Yeah. Oh, dude. My, this is it a serious look- question. How much does a Power FC cost? I, I uh, bought it. Let's say if you're going to sell retail. Oh, okay. Here you go. I don't, That's yeah. you. They don't need to know the back door. <laughs> we're, we're talking <laughs> facts here. Oh, what they is went it? up in price a little bit. <laughs> what what really? does it cost? How if much someone, does it cost? If someone has a 1JZ <laughs> and much they want to buy a Power FC or an SR. Maybe, maybe. Uh, the best one that they have. Yeah, like maybe, whatever maybe one like $1,300, $1,400. Isn't that the price of you're a link? You're kidding me. I'm not kidding. And you picked that over a little link? I got a guy. I didn't pay. We can bring you into the century. Hey, I can get Link too. We can get Link. He's got a guy. Chris yeah. has a Power FC too. 
And we so all that's why we're all FCs. trying to drift together on Power yeah. FCs. The funniest part is that the Front Street guys have Power FCs. That's the funniest part. No, they. Josh has one? Josh has a. Does he have a link now? I think he has a link or link, something. I'm that pretty... thing sounds way too cool to be on a Power FC. First of all, wrong. <laughs> I think, Second of all, I, why do I feel like. No, I think he might have just switched to he a link. He just did. Like literally this year. Yeah. Yeah. So. All last year, before that, they had the best part was they went to Link and then switched back. <laughs> Tom was like, "That limiter sucks," and just went back. Well, they the changed it. That <laughs> limiter yeah. sucks. It's the most Tom thing I've ever heard in my life. Dude, it was great. <laughs> so funny. Um, no, I would, but yeah, I, mean, I would have. Uh, what's funny is, is, what did Masaki tell you out of Hexy to to tell me to do? Uh, he well, told he told you to run he the told two us ECUs. to get a Link. He did. He told he you to did. run two. Yeah, you, 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 can did. you get the link that fits in the stock box? But no, but this is the guy that runs it. This is, this is the USA. guy he at goes, Apexi at, at the desk. <laughs> at the desk. This Do guy I need to is say at a else? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that's a good, a that's a good company. It's a great company. Now I'm no, biased. He was honest. like, yo, go he, run a link. He, I swear to God. Yeah, he's like, I 300, 1J, go get a link. I just don't know what the fuck I'm doing now because it's like, uh, I guess I picked the worst combination of parts to put together. What I turbo? think it's sick. It's a it, the whole car is gonna be the whole motor is stock. I just did a steel wheel upgrade for the CT15, the factory one, because uh, the the wheel on there was ceramic and yeah, there was some chunks. Did you know what my tell me? Come on, no, don't don't buy that. Dude, after hearing <laughs> how you described that, you can it'll pretty make more much power infinitely than yours. make power. <laughs> like it'll infinite. make more power than the CT15 will. I don't think I I don't think I need it. That's like, seven thousand RPM. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds sick. Yeah. You know what I do? Actually, you know what I do have you might want? I got the Future Fab downpipe. You have that? I need, I would probably I have the Future buy Fab that. downpipe with the screamer tube. I would buy that. Is it, if it's a stock location turbo, yep. I would. I can show you it. It's in my bed in my truck outside. I would buy, buy it. Buy this <laughs> shit on. right now. You buy like, a downpipe because it's a free turbo. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Dude, maybe we could throw that shit on, on Miyagi's car, <laughs> that turbo. Doesn't he have that? He won't buy shit right now anyway. This guy. No, he's got a stock turbo too. But this is gonna be my first like power. I've never had over. Every time I drift, it's just like two fifty or less. Maybe. Yeah. Much, I will say much less. I will say. How much does your car weigh? A lot. Does it weigh the same as a Cressida? Yeah. I will say. I don't like how that car feels. You just don't like. No, it. like have it, you ever driven an IS? No. They feel good. They drift, but I'm saying with the one. they drift pretty good with the one J on. Stock, whatever. It's like raised boost, probably. It's like three hundred at the wheel, I think, or a little bit more. That shit felt so slow. It's probably the rear end too, but yeah, I would. It's probably just a Cressida, honestly. Your rear end is probably gonna feel. Oh, oh that'd that, be perfect. That, that gearing weird, will be spot on. I wish that's what mine was. I have a four hundred eight in my car, but I wish it was like a is it tad too shorter longer. or is it too short? Shorter. Yeah, I mean it'll be fine at your the power level you want to be at, too, and with your trans. But like mine is now just like I'd rather be longer, especially with a bigger turbo and stuff. It's like five hundred horsepower. Like have a little bit more wheel speed would be nicer in each gear. I didn't I didn't notice how important gearing really was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> until like yeah I guess until you you have to use it. The gearing is nuts. Right? And FD like will make gear changes multiple times like a day. We'll change like sometimes depending on the track. Now I know a lot of data, but when we didn't know data, we changed like ten different gear sets in a practice session, Jeez. and each one of them is like two miles an hour different. And yeah. We're only making like a two mile an hour wheel speed difference. That's how crazy we'll chase gearing. Damn, am I drift. am I wrong for like if I'm having trouble with gearing and at a track? I in my head I'm like, there's a way for me to drive this with this. I'm just n not good enough to do this. I need to work harder to make this work with this. That's car. what everyone does when they don't have a quick change rear end. <laughs> that's well, what yeah, I, that's what I do. Or you figure out a way to <laughs> yeah yeah to like, make it work. I'm there's like, a lot yeah, of things you can do this for work. That. Yeah, fuck. If I you're mean, not competing, it's so different too. Yeah. You know? yeah. like if you're just having fun, like it doesn't really matter. You're not gonna notice little nuances like that, you know. Like Josh, Josh was like, "Yo, you're gonna want to pick up like uh, maybe an FRS diff or something for the final bout." Josh and I was is like, a psychopath, so it's different. Yeah, but, I, like, I like talking to Josh. He gives me good ideas. He's very competitive. Yep, I yeah. know. <laughs> so, like, I don't know when that happened, but yeah. <laughs> Hey man, Josh, I hope you find the love in drifting again, man. I saw your story. The oh other yeah, day. What's I was going like, on man, fuck. yeah, I saw that too. Crazy, he's having John. a moment. Real yeah, quick. having a moment. I was like, what are you talking about? You're the inspiration, dude. If he's he ever going wants to, to sell his S15, I just put it. I want to buy it. I dude, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, don't I will know. buy it if you want to sell it. That's I don't fuck. know what's going on, but I I'm gonna place my bet now that that S15 is gonna be drifting this year. Oh, come on, don't what? drift it. Sell me it. That's Please. my that's my bet. No, 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 no. How? 
I have money waiting. Let's go. I'll buy it. Dude, <laughs> no, I don't. I want an S15 that's... street car so bad. <laughs> they are nice. So bad. He always takes a picture of the when he's under there. And I'm yeah, like, and he's like, he's like, oh, the rust. Damn. I'm like, okay, here we go. What do you mean? What rust? He's There's just like... talking himself into well, he's it. He's also kind of like a perfectionist in yeah. that SR and Nissan world, you know? Dude, he took a shower t- with the side skirt. <laughs> You're a perfectionist if you're doing shit like that. I'm telling you, dude, he's trying to talk himself into it. You see Jonna's story? That was probably the funniest shit. Yeah, ever. it's just it's Josh like, in the shower. This is what I married, and it's Josh <laughs> from the back. <laughs> I mean, but I'm damn, glad he still cares about that car that much. That's like when Josh comes here in the S15, it's like I'm hanging out with Josh 2014. Because it's like a totally different person. And yeah. then when he comes in the S13, it's like I'm modern day Josh 2.0 where he doesn't care about anything. He just cares about competition. Really? He's a good driver. Yeah, he is. Like he's very, very talented. Dude, we got to drive one I've had time some sick already. laps with him. Yeah, in my S13. Even. Yeah, damn. But. I can't wait to drive with Josh this year, dude. I hope it happens in a way where it's like, oh shit, here yeah. we go. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm gonna be so behind when I drive with him. He knows yeah. it too. No, yeah, because Frankie hasn't driven for. I feel like in the past few years, wouldn't like you actually say driven. the advancement of drifting? Wild. Yeah, and you missed. You kind of been sitting a for a little bit. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Josh is always like, I can't wait to see what Josh Frankie... Is, Josh thinks I'm going to get, like, 255s and this and well, that. Well, that's exactly what I was about. Dude, what I was literally about <laughs> to say is the biggest change yeah. in drifting is the is tires. Oh, like, God. honestly, it's like it's not even the tires themselves have changed. It's what people consider normal to go drifting on okay. has changed. Wh- like, wait, you know, it used previous? to be, like, run Federals that are, like, 235s. Yep. And then now everyone shows up on like 285s or 265s or like a good compound, like a, you know, a good compound tire. Yeah. You know, it's just crazy what people consider. Like, I can't even picture or remember the last time that I drifted on a tire that was not at FD level grip. I can't even remember the last time I've driven on a yeah. tire that was I, less than a 200 tread wear, less than GT radial or Valino esque in grip level. I definitely want to try know. like good tires. Like that, so that's, you keep, that's interesting I've to me. I've been trying to put you on I, every time. Tire size, I. I don't know. No, no, I'm no, no. Run what I can run. I'm trying to tell you some tires, and Frankie insists to order. What is the one? Oh, right? you mean like that's because we always order tires two days before we leave. <laughs> but I tell you, that like, <laughs> and I'm like, just pick the one with the coolest name and the <laughs> cheapest. Bro, <laughs> the tell craziest them, name. This is yeah. what they landed on. They landed on Black Hawk. Black Hawk. <laughs> that's a sick name. Dude, yeah, right. But that is I was a like, great name. I was like, look, that's the sickest we're gonna get right now. There's some so, good cheap there's a helicopter tires named after that. Dude, yeah. the, my one of my favorite Facebook pages is uh, aside from Harbor Freight Hacks. I mean, well, great Facebook. I work for page. Snap on, dude. It's just the it's the conversations that go on in there. <laughs> it's like it's like look what I use this cup holder for, and it's like a fucking automatic salt shaker. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> um, but uh, the favorite Facebook group is the tire one, where they oh, review yeah, yeah. tires. Oh yeah, I so love going on that one. They're just doing the work for you. I don't have to do it. So there's is cheap Ga- is tires Galen in that in that. Naz- yeah, Galen. I feel like he's love the one Galen. that made that. Naz- Galen Naz- loves talking page. about tires. Yeah, right. Yeah. Dude, he was he was one of the, he, he was wanted, talking about setup and tires. He yeah. wanted me to not sell my S13 so badly. Well, he was right. Yeah, he was. Okay, he, um, we shouldn't have sold his S14. True. Dude, he was. You that's know? the one. He was. He was like, dude, that's I regret. Why. Yeah. That, I'll say I, Galen is a very close friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> his S14, I'll say it to his face, was the worst driving S chassis <laughs> I have ever driven in my entire. Is it the white life. one? Life that the, yes. the with the yellow. I remember yeah, that. Eyes. It's that thing. I was like, and he, and he would do my alignments when he was up here, um, you know, at function. Yeah, yeah. Motorsports. Yeah. Like he would do all my alignments, but he would do what I told him to do. And I get in his car, and I'm like, hey, what the hell are you doing to this poor car? It's a 240. <laughs> It's a 240, and it drives like a what was he doing? Ferrari, or it's like something that is not meant to be drifting. Yeah, I don't know. He just, I don't really know what his setup like, like too was. Like too grippy or something. I'm also again, I'm on S chassis, very yeah. anti front sway bar. I'll never put one on any of my S chassis. Anti front or like anti I, rear? Any sway bars. You, oh, you couldn't even physically mount one in, in any S chassis that I own. Okay. Like everything's gone. I'll cut out them. The I'll weld over the holes. At nothing. You're not putting a sway bar in <laughs> you're, S you're, chassis. You want grip then? Is oh your, yeah. yeah. And it's just I don't I just don't like the way that it makes a McPherson strut car feel. Mm. So like I would never run it. Like my FD car has sway bars, has a huge front sway bar actually. Um, but it's double wishbone and it handles so differently. Huh. There's a lot of science in, in this stuff, but which we could dive into if you really want to. But Galen's car had a really big front sway bar. So I think it was just super uh twitchy and snappy and weird to drive. I feel um, like for me, it, it worked for him because he was used to it. It's like one of those things like if you like ski your whole life and you get on a snowboard, it feels weird. Or if you snowboard your whole life and go on skis, it feels weird. So like I was just so used to like non sway bar S chassis that are really insanely one snappy with no front sway bar. Like 
I don't think I have. I, I feel like it would just rotate so much faster. But there's so also a faster. lot of factors. It rotates a lot slower without a front bar. A lot mm. slower. Slower? Um, yeah, it definitely, it depends on spring rate and car setup. Mm. But yeah. Because like I feel I'm, like I'm more on a big front spring and no off. front bar setup. Like I run stiff springs and then no no bar. Mm. Yeah. Huh. That yeah. was one of the reasons why I wanted to keep my sway bars too was just because body roll and everything. I was like, maybe it'll help reduce the way this thing moves. It does. It'll make it drive on the road a lot better. Like yeah. if you're going to drive on a highway, yeah. it just makes it feel a little bit more confident. Without, but like, with I just don't like the steering. Uh, my pure gripe is the steering feel. That's it. Mm. It just makes the car super, like it wants to pivot so hard on the front. Because you got to think of it, a sway bar is a torsion bar. So like the way that it affects a McPherson strut is so much different than a double wishbone. Because a double wishbone it just acts as another spring where it's affecting, it's not affecting the steering. But on a McPherson it is because the, the actual shock is turning with the wheel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like it's just everything in the steering feel of a McPherson struck car is always going to feel different, and sway bars just amplify it. To me, yeah. A lot of people love it. Like you'll, if whoever watches is going to lose their fucking mind over talking <laughs> about sway bars. No, I mean, like people like go nuts over this topic. Yeah, yeah that's I remember. Dude. And it really is like it depends. And I'm not saying that it, well, my way is the only way to do it. Yeah. You know, because there's that's what I love about drifting. There's like a million ways to do the same shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like everyone has their own theories. Everyone has their own ways of doing things. It's just the way that I, I every time I've driven a car with a front bar, I'm like, it's just not for me. So I just don't run them. Yeah. You know when I, I mean? when I think of like a having a rear sway bar versus oh, they're useless though. Yeah. Like <laughs> rear bars should never be on anything unless you're driving bank tracks. When I when I think of that, I'm like, you're basically making it harder for the suspension to like. Yeah, you're limit, you're limiting like, travel, it, like an off-roading and shit, they, they take it off so that it can work fully, the yeah. whole thing. And then in my opinion, in drifting, it's like kind of that. Is that... Yeah, I mean, a rear, to make it simple, a rear sway bar makes a car slower and a front sway bar makes a car faster. And that's really like the only way to put it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you're softening up the rear without the sway bar, right? So you're... Yeah, if you take the rear out, it lets you give you get more side bite. You yeah. get... Almost more. You can. You can. There's an argument to be made if it's set up right. You could get more forward drive with a rear sway bar if every scenario works out perfectly in your alignment and everything. But um, for lack of a better term, like most people run rear sway bars. The only time mine's ever been hooked up is for insanely high speed stuff or banks because a bank track is hard enough as it is because it makes the car want to like drive down it. So you're trying to loosen the car up. But like all it does is just remove side by like I hate rear bars because you throw the car in real hard and it just like keeps going. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, come on, get back. You know, you're like trying to get yeah. it to like dig okay. and go. So that's why I don't re- run a rear. Most people in FD truthfully don't. There are some people that do, and it depends on the car. Like Corvette people, they all run rear bars. I don't know why. I'm not a Corvette guy. But um, you know, it's hmm. just it's interesting. But front bars are like a front bar if it's on, it will add forward drive and a lot of it, depending on how big the bar is. Um, but you kind of sacrifice front grip on most cars too, depending on what it is. But in, there's also an argument to be made that who the hell cares about front tire grip? I'm a huge front tire grip guy. Yeah, like, I can't stand if my car understeers at all. But there are people like like Chelsea Denova, for instance. You've ever watched like that dude could have like literally like his video snow tires on the front of his car, steelies. Yeah, don't matter. Like it just depends on your driving style. Like I, I <laughs> need to have the front end involved. I do. We had Smooth Brain, which is another drift team out of indiana and they're younger guys and they were the first people to come on here and go no 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 we air our shits up in the front yeah, mad yeah, that shit blows my mind and i'm like what yeah, the I don't understand fuck it. i don't get so it then either. he they explained it a little bit and then i tried it like to an extent i didn't like go <laughs> to 80 psi i went to like 40 and yeah, then i cranked it up to, to 50 which, I would have went right to sixty. Which to, to me, I run. I usually <laughs> just to run. See what happens. I you know usually what I mean? run thirty. Jump right in there. Yeah, because I, I just want to know right away. Because yeah. I'm like, I, I run thirty psi before cold, so that the tire could have as much grip as I want. Because I want it to be darty. I want it to go where go where I want it to go. But then when I aired it up, it would like float easier in the front. It just I makes guess. the whole car like four wheel slide, and that's what I don't like. Yeah, mm. th- it, it was a weird. But but I feel like if you went higher than forty. It would do that way worse. Like it would four wheel slide, like you're saying, more. Yeah. So you like at it. forty at forty, that's where I liked it. Forty five. Yeah. A lot of people argue that huh. like with high Ackerman setups, if you have like a really grippy front tire, it like makes the car spin out. And I'm just like, all right, well, first off, maybe you should not spin out. Have you, <laughs> you ever thought of that one? You know, like it's you pretty simple that concept. It's driving like, it's not this? that hard to not spin out. To be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Um, but, like, I don't know. I, I run really low. Like, I run, like, the teens in my front tire pressure. In the front? Yeah. yeah, which was always a thing. Um, yeah, because I'm, again, our cars are so gripped up 
that mm-hmm. we're trying to get anything out of the front end to grip. Like it's, you know, we're everything is set. The whole car is off the rear end. Like the rear end is doing everything in, in FD and professional drifting. Like huh. the front end is literally just along for the ride. You know what I mean? So like you set the whole car up off the back. So we're just trying, in my case, I try to run really low front tire pressures to just get some sort of front end feel out of it. You know, to get some grip out of the front end so the car will pivot off its nose if I need it to for mm-hmm. a transition or whatever. But um, yeah, it's, I, I know a lot of people like there's dudes in FD like I know even Rich Whiteman talk, tried it for a bit. I know this, uh, Corey Talaska is a big high front tire pressure guy. There's some dudes that are like big on it, and I'm just like, whatever floats your boat, guys. I'm yeah. just it's not gonna work for me. If you guys could drive together, I feel like it doesn't. Yeah. Well, what did did Rich say anything about it? Um, I don't remember exactly where he left off with it. I remember when he first tried it, he's like, yeah, it's so sweet. But I th- I don't know if he went back to yeah. not running it. And it, might, JZX is also a weird car in comparison to He might be on here soon, so I want to make sure to ask him that. What, the, the tire, pressure, tire thing? pressure thing? Yeah. He's definitely tried a lot of stuff. Yeah. Rich is always down to try things. Rich, Rich is an intelligent guy. Yeah. yeah. So I've been told. Yeah. He Very also smart. fucks with his lawnmower heavy. And, <laughs> Love and that's lawnmower a, guys. That's a, that's a smart guy. I can't wait to be a homeowner and have a nice green lawn. <laughs> I think about it every dude, day. Dude, you're going to look I'm so cool on that thing. Zero turn and stuff. Yeah. What, dude, oh, yeah. you need zero turn, Frankie, with a turbo. I don't know, man. I'm not at that lawnmower stage. You're yet. not. I'm not. <laughs> you're not a lawnmower I'm guy. I'm scared of that. Yeah. yeah that's, you got to embrace when, it, dude. Yeah. I don't you got know. the beard. He's you not got the hair. He's, the know. thing is, is like, ah, oh, dude, it would if I lived on Frankie's block and he was mowing his lawn, I'd be like, look at that lesbian out there. Doing that <laughs> look at that lesbian. Look at that. Thank oh, you, Carl. <laughs> anyway, so what else you got going on? So where do we end up? end his story yet because i do want to continue this i think you talked about um, we've talked about like 30 different i know but i want to bring it to current day Um, what's going on current day well so um well now we're this is going on my fourth season of fd fourth season with uh oh yeah because you started in 2020 yeah no 2021 one 2021 was my first year so i did 21 22 and 23 this is now 24 so this is going on the fourth season um, still with Forsberg Racing and all of them, and they still manage. It's the cha- the team hasn't truthfully uh, changed a whole lot in terms of that side of things. Um, we're, we're still in pro spec. Yeah, great. it's great for me yeah, and everything. Good. You know, we have a great relationship. Like I'm, I'm so lucky and very fortunate to be where I am. You know, they still manage pretty much all my partner relations and stuff like that. I wish I had better results to make their jobs easier. Um, but FD is hard. It's a lot of luck. It's a lot of skill. It's a lot of dude. There's so many things, and it's a mental nutcase dude it's yeah. it's crazy when you're at some of these rounds it's like you ride the highest low highs and the lowest lows when it comes to <laughs> I professional feel like that's drifting exactly what mike said too. you know it's just and, and mike yeah mike will definitely attest to that yeah um it, but it's every time i think about not doing it i'm like i could not picture not doing it mm-hmm. like i would much rather be miserable that i lost got knocked out in top 32 than like be sitting at home yeah. watching it on a couch. What would, I was about to ask. You know like, like, you, I can't do that. If you weren't here, where do you think you would be? Like, what would you have done? Um, or where would you have gone, like, with your life, I guess? If I didn't, well, that's so that was one of the conversations I had with my now wife. But I was like, just so you know, like, when, when they presented me that the deal and everything to do FD, um, I like called her right away and I'm like, look, this is like what they presented. This is what they're offering. This is what we need to invest or me like at the time. I was like, I, what I need to bring to the table to make this happen and stuff like that, which granted is still way better the deal than probably anyone in prospect has. <laughs> and I'll still say that today, but hey, um, shout out um, Brandon. Yeah. Brandon. Yeah. So it's like, um, I was like, but it's going to set back a lot of, uh, you know, life trajectory. It's like if we want to have a house, if we want to have all this, like, you know, the whole life American dream. Like, <laughs> yeah, American dream. It's going to set a lot of that like, back because yeah. I'm going to have to sell my soul to do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's so, crazy. like, literally, I sold, yeah, like, everything when you I put had. put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I literally sold every single thing I had FD. except for my S13. You got to sell you your You know, I, I kept my pickup truck. I kept my S13. I even sold my trailer. Like, I like I sold everything. I That I could buy 180. I had a Fiesta ST rally car. I had this a bunch of shit that This is all to invest in the program? Yeah, I took everything just to and help build the, uh, the, yeah. the Z. You know, like... I basically paid for all the labor that was done to the car and um, some of the parts that they couldn't supply. And then anything else that they could get from our partners and stuff like that, they supplied or whatever kind of support they could bring to the table. So it was like a joint effort to get the car built. Um, But it was still a lot of money, you know, to build a... Honestly speaking, if someone wanted to 
build that car today that didn't have any help, it'd probably cost them a quarter million dollars. Oh. Um, like that motor alone is probably fifty to sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, you know, just Ooh. the engine. Jesus. So, you know, trans- well, now it's ah. built and everything. Like so, it has ten thousand yeah. dollars of wires in the car. Yeah, that's just wires. Nevertheless, the other fifteen thousand dollars in computers that run it. You know what I mean? So it's like, and Holy that's not including ass, the Link ECU. Dude. What the <laughs> so, fuck? So yeah, it's just a different ball game. Like to do this stuff, you know. So I, so I told her, I'm like, hey, you know, we're gonna have to like really sell our soul to do this and she's like thank god you know she's still my spotter she works on my team she's, Damn, she's still the spotter yeah she's still my spotter damn um, w, she got a full-time w- job w- wife. <laughs> yeah she's like the honestly the best partner you could have for this stuff so she was like yeah like uh, whatever i'm here for it let's so do now it. she knows about drifting oh yeah she, she's yeah. watched more laps <laughs> of drifting than most people will have in their life if yeah. you think about it because she's watched every single run of every fd event she's been to every wow. lap that has been around that track from she's like watched. a yeah, sort of some sort of view yeah like she's a genius when it comes to talking about this stuff That's you great. know what i mean she knows everything about the ins and outs of competitive drifting at least she, and she learned a little bit about car setup too like my my crew chief guy came it's funny my my uh crew chief is this guy james um he's uh he lived in sparta new jersey he now lives in florida but uh he came from dirt bikes and also competitive wakeboarding he was friends with my wife and all my friends group growing up he didn't know a lot about drifting at all um he came to Orlando the first year we doing FD because he lived in Florida and he just wanted to watch me. Oh, wow. And he was like, dude, this is sick. Like, I want to be a, a part of this. So, like, he came to every round since then. Um, and eventually, like, like he learned to just, like, helping. Then he'd help on Chris's car and stuff like that. And then he, like, transitioned to working for Chris out in California, oh, like, wow. at times. Not all, like, he has his own business in Florida, but he went out there to help. And now this, he, you know, I don't even know Freddie, like, spec-tuned Freddie from Florida. He, like, was Hobson, so. uh, Ben Hobson's crew chief. Um he worked for Adam LZ for a while. He was Adam LZ's tuner, Freddie, okay. um, for a while. But anyway, like, he's a really smart guy. Now they're, like, best friends. And, like, this dude went from, like, wakeboarding and riding dirt bikes, and he has an FDR X7 drift car, but, um, you know, to now Casually. being, like, literally <laughs> a, a one of the smartest dudes in the pits yeah. and when it comes to the chassis setup and stuff like that. That's so awesome. It's cool to have, like, these people. Like, my wife didn't know anything. My crew chief didn't know yeah. anything about that stuff, and now they they travel the country with me. That's cool. It's nuts that you guys are all kind of learning together. Yeah. Fortunately, we had really good people to ask questions yeah, to. Th- we like, had Jimmy. We yeah. had Forsberg. We had his whole team. We didn't know anything about Zs. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, all right, like, what do we do? And he's like, this, that, and that. And I'm like, cool. You got like, tossed in the mix, like, so yeah. quickly. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's we've we've tried a lot of stuff too. Like I really explored a different theory and went a lot away from how Chris sets up his car. And then now I'm I'm almost honestly almost identical again um, to how our cars are set up. Um, besides, his is a little bit more power and a bigger tire. You were like, nah, but, he ain't right. He ain't right. <laughs> well, I was just trying to find my happy space with the Z. Yeah. And the funniest thing about that, we chased so much stuff with this car. And the the thing that fixed all of my gripes with the car was lowering the front tire pressure. Funny enough. <laughs> We, I mean, dude, I tried you, you alignments, I tried sway bars, <laughs> I tried spring rates, I tried everything in the book except for lowering the front tire pressure. And I lowered the front tire pressure and it clicked and I was like, oh my God, this car is the best thing I've ever driven in my life. Wow. When I motherfucked that car for three seasons, I'm like, this, I can't figure this car out. So this season yeah. so is I did was lower the front tire and I'm like, well, now this thing drives great. I'm like, yeah. what the heck? <laughs> so it's so funny. How so this season is the season, low tire pressure season. Yeah, I'm. Ex- we're actually get, we're making the car actually slower for this year. Um, funny enough, in terms of uh, overall grip and balance, like last year we were way too gripped up. Like we we went down mm. this path of having fun with it, like making it really fast. Like let's see how fast we can make this car. So we had Hobson. <laughs> Hobson was really fast. Rudy was pretty fast. There's some dudes in prospect. All of a sudden last year, everyone showed up and wanted to go fast. It was okay. like the first two years of me doing FD, it was like going to like pro-am events. Like everyone's like 30 plus PSI tire pressure. Everyone's going slow. And I'm like, it's impossible to follow slow cars in a gripped up car. So yeah. I'm like, all right, this is weird. And then last year, like everyone showed up and it's like, we want to do FD shit. And I'm like, okay, all right, well, let's do FD shit then. So now it's like single digit tire pressure. It's huge front spring rates, crazy stiff front sway bars, all this shit to make the car really fast. Um, but when we did battle, the problem we had last year is when we battled people that were slow for for example to use i hate to use that word because it's kind of derogatory but when we were peop- battling people that were going through the course slower than we were factually is that derogatory Z, it's just like i don't want to make fun of them that yeah. they're like not doing well or that their car is slow i'm not trying to make fun of them it's just like their car speed to the track was significantly slower than ours yeah, yeah. like just the facts behind it whatever you got could, you there whether it yeah. was like 
not getting through the course well or your car just being physically slow. It doesn't yeah. matter. They're just going through the course slower. So when we were trying to, when I tried to chase them, the Z was like mad. It did not, it was so hard to drive behind people that were slow. So it ended up being like a problem. We'd be setting our car up for the finals while we we're in practice, but we had to get through all these people to get to the finals. So like we just had the wrong me like mental bandwidth going into a lot of our theories. So this year we want to make the car actually a lot slower and just easier to drive behind a lot of people. Watch, watch it flip flop. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I, not to put. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. knock on wood really quick. Yeah, well, it's e trust me, it's really easy to make the car fast. Okay, like that's. All I right. was gonna say it'll like, take you, three seconds uh, to make it as fast. Yeah, as Yeah, that was my other question. Yeah. I was like, can you kind of like regulate that with a turbo car pretty easily? It's not uh, power. We never touch power. It's all suspension setup. So yeah, and, and so tire. I guess yeah. If you're not so. gonna touch the power, then I guess you don't really have a choice. You either set it up. Fast yeah, we're actually gonna leave it high because the higher it is, the slower the car is. It's funny that it's drifting. Yeah, it's high horsepower is slow. Low horsepower is slow. <laughs> In the middle is fast. There's yeah. a, there's you know a I mean? balance there. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's nice. So it's like, you know, we 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 can we're just doing some suspension changes and stuff like that because we have a lot of newcomers coming into Prospect this year, a ton of newcomers, and but that comes people figuring it out. We all had to figure it out. I had to figure mm -hmm. it out. You know, so like we're trying to set the car up for that. You know, a lot of the really fast guys have left and went to pro, um, so there's that too. So we'll see what it is. We could always put the kitchen sink back in the car if we want yeah. to. <laughs> but I'm trying to, like, just have fun and make it easy to chase people. Were you doing that today, test and tune? Or... No. No? Okay. I was at work today. Oh, you were? Yeah, I got to work. Like... <laughs> For some reason, I thought you were at the track. Tomorrow, Turk is going to be the track with Hop. Oh, I got wow. invited, but I got to work. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Real. I literally work, like, two full-time jobs to do this. Not literally full-time jobs. Like, uh, my Snap-on job is one, and then FDA call another full-time job. Yeah. But honestly, being at work is a lot easier than, yeah. you, than being at FD. So you're a Snap-on guy. Yep. So you run a truck and everything. Yeah, I don't own the franchise that I. Uh, okay. I run, but I work for a guy named Tyler. He's a big car guy. He's got a WRX that's like 600 horsepower. That's He's got like a our Snap-on guy. Our Snap-on guy doesn't own the truck. He he. Does yeah, it sometimes it could be like a second. So I used to own my own Snap-on route um, in Yonkers, New York, and parts of Connecticut. And then I got rid of that. I actually, it's funny, like I sold my route, wanted nothing to do with Snap-on actually at the time. <laughs> um, I started working at Monticello Motor Club as a racing instructor and like mm. curriculum developer. And I helped develop the rally program and stuff like that. And I worked on a couple FD teams. I worked on Dean Carney's and I worked on um, AJ, AJ Muss's. So um, then like COVID came around yeah. the next year. So I did one year of like that stuff. Then COVID came around and like no one's racing cars or going to the racetrack. And I'm like, well, what am I going to do for a job now? <laughs> yeah. So one of my friends, Matt Bystrack, who does FD with me and everything, he he part owns a like landscape construction company. So I helped him out for a bit. And then my friend Tyler, he owns four snap-on routes. He had a guy that ran one of them and he passed away. Uh, right at the first week of co like, not, like the first week of COVID, so he was like trying to figure out who was going to replace him. So we've been friends for a while, and he called me. He's like, hey, "Like, hey, dude, like I need a guy to uh, fill this spot." And he made me an offer, and I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll come run so, a snap on route again." So I've been there now for almost four years. So that means he has four trucks. In four a way, trucks. Right? Okay. Yep. So. Four trucks, seven employees. He, we have a pretty big operation for a snap on. Okay. We're down like where I run is right by the track, kind of, the, yeah. like, just south of English Town. Um, so yeah, like I run around there. Um, my coworker, I don't know if you know who Mikey Walsh is. Yeah. But like Mikey Walsh works with me. Um, I have another kid, Gus. He drifts at Club Blue. So everyone Gus that comes with on the this, orange Z. Yeah, everyone that c comes <laughs> on this podcast talks about Gus. Yeah, yeah. yeah like Sarah oh, yeah. talked about him and oh, Alan's whatever. friend. So, System yeah. Gus. Yeah, that's Gus. He's a so. funny guy. He was, working, <laughs> I was just with him today. Like I worked with him all day today. Get him on the pod. I forgot what I said. What he said to me once, but he, dude, yeah, he's a he's a funny guy. Yeah. I, we should get him on. Yeah, the podcast. Gus is. He, that's what I told. I was. I'm gonna drag you up there with me today. <laughs> he's, he worked with me all day today. He's like a. He works for us, but he's like an uh, assistant. So like he bounces between all of our trucks and helps us out he's, awesome. he's super useful because he speaks spanish and we have a lot of spanish-speaking customers so like it's really helpful honestly in snap on world to have someone that can communicate better than we can because i sound like an idiot when i try to talk to <laughs> spanish people <laughs> i know like a lot a, of spanish words it sounds really like a do, fun place bro y'all yeah. yeah. it is fun I, I do yeah it's gotta be a fun yeah. job i mean I, i'm sure it's stressful but yeah i really know. enjoy what i do and it, for work it's just it's very difficult to balance with FD. Honestly speaking, it's like Yeah, if you're my, a professional yeah. driver, dude. Yeah. Like, like my job is gonna get me fired from FD, but FD is gonna get me fired from my job. <laughs> so I'm always trying to like <laughs> balance everyone yeah. and make everyone happy, but I'm never good at like I just can't do that. Like Especially everyone's with, pissed like, off. The about. time off and everything. Yeah, like, it's hard. You know, you yeah. take off multiple like 
there's four FD rounds, and I do grid lifes and like yeah. all stuff. And it's like you got to tell a boss, like, hey, dude, I need all this time off. And then, God forbid, you have anything else going on. Like, I just got married, so it's like I went on a honeymoon. Yeah. And then now I also have to like do all this. Or it's like if I want to have kids in the future, it's like you want, like what the hell am I going to do? How am I supposed yeah. to expect the boss to be okay with that? It's I'm like just... he's cool. He is a car guy. Like he gets it. But at the same time, like there's definitely times where we clash. And it's I don't blame him. Like I can't. Like yeah, what am he, I supposed he, to do? Like, I don't, he, I'm thankful that he even lets me do it to begin with. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So, but it's, it's hard because, like, I don't want to, like, not chase my dreams of doing FD. And, like, I would love to be in Pro 1. I would kill to be in Pro 1. Yeah. But, like, if I, I wouldn't be able to do that and continue my job. So it's like, what the hell do I do for an income? You have to figure yeah, out a way right? to make enough sponsorship money to make it work. But there's, like, five dudes in FD that have done that. Yeah. That don't have family money. That's yeah, uh, or even less than five dudes. Yeah. I'm, I'm picturing yeah. if like the, your Snap on guy pulls up and it's it's like you you drive <laughs> professionally like this is like a I definitely hit you up before and try to get a UB or Snap on guy but that was probably years ago probably but, yeah but it, it like, just no, it doesn't work that way. I looked today on the so. last conversation we had before doing the podcast was talking about snowmobiling I don't know why but what we were talking fuck? about oh, snowmobiling I know why because uh, my friend had a bachelor party and we went snowmobiling and someone fucking flipped one so yep, that was yeah. probably yeah, what we're talking it was. About snowmobiling. no fucking way yeah, let's hear sick. this yeah. what why did you flip the snowmobile uh, he didn't it's know easy. what he was doing yeah I mean my, no, no a lot of us didn't know what we were doing yeah, but do you know like in Old Forge New York which is where I would go snowmobiling when it was a good season. It would actually snow. They would average four deaths a weekend. Oh, a my weekend? fucking God. Four deaths a weekend for a season. That is fucking bad. So, I mean, some weekends it was a lot more. Some weekends it was nothing. But that sounds so. not safe. Yeah, he got lucky, man. He yeah. definitely got lucky. I I just remember he, I remember we got to his section and we're like, where is, we're like, where the fuck did he go? And we went back and he's just like flipped over off like a little hill in the woods. Yeah. Fucking thing fell on top of him. Like Super easy. Yeah. They don't really stop well, and they go really fast. They f- they Dude, are sick. We, I, I rented one of those where it was like a two-stroke one. That's awesome. Fucking yeah. sick. That's what I, I had an 850 two-stroke. They would do like 120-ish. Yeah. But, but like you could do that in the woods, like yeah. on a trail. It's Dude, like a it quad was trail. That was yeah. the first time I was on a snowmobile. Um, I'm familiar with quads and stuff, but first time on a snowmobile, and I was doing like we were maxing them out on the fucking lake or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, I feel like this is really stupid, but <laughs> that's not it sick. feels safe in a yeah. way. Cause you're just like, oh, it's just flat. We're yeah. good. But nah, like, nah, nah. We were in the we were in the woods when we did our rental and it was like an unguided one. And right yeah, before, we had the same they ran out great. of the normal uh what do they call that shit? Sled. What do you mean? Whatever they called they they were like, Yeah, yeah, we're out of the normal like like four stroke ones. Does anybody here and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I want, yeah, I would like that one. That I want that one. I heard it like on the way in. Like <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I want that one. Like, ring, 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 like <laughs> yeah, that, that shit, dude. Oh yeah, man. I, I always want the two stroke anything. I've never ridden that shit before in my <laughs> life. I was like, yeah. yeah, I know what I'm doing, man. Like, fuck I would love to go back. I always try to get my friends to go back, but they're all like, you know, too it, much it was money. pretty yeah. pricey. I'm not gonna lie for the yeah. unguided. But it's like you know, I don't know. I don't do shit all year, so it's like other than drifting when I have a car. So it's like, but what did I mean, I drift everyone else's car. <laughs> still yeah. pay for the tires. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I would love to go snowmo- snowmobiling, but it's, how much is it? It's like, hard. People don't, they don't snow anymore. So that's like the real too. problem. That's, I then, sold mine. But I always made the joke my wife made me sell it. But really, oh, it's yeah. just like. This past week in Vermont, it fucking came down. Did you yeah, see where Jesse, Jesse was? Jesse was, yeah. That's yeah. where we were. Yeah, I figured. And it, and it looks fucking like two feet deep. I was like, yo, that's kind of. Yeah, they gotta, got 24 <laughs> inches on Saturday. What the hell? You just got to go north now if you want to see the snow. J. Yeah, Peak. really north. Yeah, I love JP. It's like Dude, place. is it sick? Yeah, I've been to JP a few times. I've never been. Boarding, yeah, I, I want to go there because it looks more difficult than the other spots. You're a good snowboarder, Carl. You will be too, Frank. No, I won't. You, you good at snowboarding? I'm okay. Oh, yeah. you love JP. Then. Yeah, I feel like I would. Yeah, it's a cool <laughs> yeah Carl, Carl. We went snowboarding. Carl was my first time. Carl was like, "Oh, we need the black diamonds. Where are they at?" Dude, you could have <laughs> chill out. You could have done it. You could have done it. Dude, it's, it's nah, sometimes dude. it's just a sign. I would never veer you down one where I don't think that you would. Right. Like it was just off of a blue <laughs> square. Like it's pretty much a blue square. It just I don't know, dude. To... I was. I mean, I I kind of got it, but I still got to figure out how to go. It's fast drifting. And not yo. shit myself. Do you snowboard or ski? <laughs> drifting. It's, it's drifting. He was trying to compare it to drifting. If, if, if it's like drifting, then why do I suck at wakeboarding? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to wakeboard either. It's kind of like snowboarding, just way more tiring. It took me 20 tries to get up on a wakeboard. I didn't were you, understand. Were you being pulled off a wakeboard boat? It, it, wait, what? Were you being pulled behind a wakeboard boat? Yeah, we were in Lake George, and my buddy had 
all of that stuff. That shit yeah. looks like, sick. Wakeboard boats make it a lot easier. It was it was the fa- it was the I'd be in the water. I'm holding the thing. I'm trying to hold it like this. And yeah, because you got to put pressure. To but it's causing too much. So then what I was what I did to make it work was like I tilted it more forward. And then yeah. I like was like, it was like oh. boarding, right? Not surfing. Wake boarding. Yeah. 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 Dude. Yeah. That was, that was fun. Wake surfing is, I've never tried that. That's so easy. That's why I'm good at that. Where That's where you're like. You surf behind the boat. And then yeah. You just, so you the know, boat dude, is I, like. This shit is crazy to me. Yeah. Like the boat, like say like my wife's family has a boat that's meant for. I think I've seen some of your videos it. before. Yeah. That's also something she could pizza has really good, but the boat is capable of making its own surfable wave. So it holds enough water on board enough ballast to sink the boat in the water deeper oh. to make the wave bigger and then it has like these flaps on the back so like if you want to have a, a wave on the right mm-hmm. side it has a left flap that pops out that interrupts the wake behind the boat <laughs> so it creates a curl wave here so you could surf that and then you could like on hers because it's pretty nice if you hit a button it'll change the wave to the other side or you could do it on a watch even i did not know that, that is to the other cool side. what the fuck yeah, that's like a chill a it's like 10 miles an hour it's very low energy like you just sit there and like jam out to music and like party and stuff Wait, like so that. what's the yeah. difference now between wake surfing wake boarding wakes <laughs> it's a lot actually so like wake boarding it depends at a competitive level is like it's much faster so you don't like, know anything yeah wake boarding is essentially snowboarding behind a boat like you have your okay. feet strapped in okay. to the board um you're going at a much higher rate of speed so it's like 20 something plus miles an hour 22 23 miles an oh. hour you're 70 feet off the back of the boat okay and then like at a competitive level, they will hit the wake and jump and do like flips or Whoa. like whatever. Yeah, There's yeah, a lot I've of tricks that. and stuff like that yeah, that you can do. Um, but if you fall at twenty something miles an hour from doing like a flip in the air, it you could get really messed up. Oh you know, shit! Like, Malcolm brought it up. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've seen this. So like you know like that's it depends on what you're doing. <laughs> Some of those crazy. tricks aren't that crazy. Yo, that's me but, right there. <laughs> I swear. So surfing is like this one here oh, so this is wake surfing. it's like way chiller like you're just kind of like going oh. 12 miles and 10 you miles still an hold hour on to something no, no you the, don't the water on. pushes you whoa you're like surfing an endless you're wave. literally that's kind of yeah. sick it's fun it's it's super popular because it's so like much easier and so much less energy oh, wait there's a picture of it like sinking in the back yeah so that's yeah. like you can tell like the boat is literally sunk in the water you can see the little flap Dude, this makes but no sense to me that you can just keep going behind the boat and you're forever. not holding anything as long as you don't fall makes sense to me or if you don't you know until the water ends yeah but. Tell you, the water. <laughs> you also need, it's funny enough, you need really deep water to do it. You can't do it in shallow water because the wave or the the water reflects off the bottom of yeah, the, it has the this lake problem. or whatever. So you need to have it deep enough that it won't bounce off okay. it to make a big enough wave. So it, it's so pretty crazy, but it's a lot of fun. And I've enjoyed learning it and stuff yeah. like that, you know. Like, my wife is crazy at it. You She's, showed her drifting. She showed you that. Yeah. Well, you but it is difficult. It, but... Like, I could never get up on a board like that it, yeah. before I met her. And then she just, like said three things and i was like oh this yeah, is so she probably easy. explained it correctly because you know? yeah. my buddy was just trying to explain this to me and he's like yeah you just stand up and i'm like i'm trying bro it's like you're getting <laughs> me out of the thing like it's yeah and you you do not hold on to that yeah like the moment you fall apparently you're just supposed to let that shit go yeah because you hold on to it dude I, I held oh, on to it, well, hold on to it. i held on to it one time and i swear to you i got way taller it was crazy <laughs> it was crazy because yeah. I'm just holding on to it, and the, now the board is being in, is like creating an immense yeah. amount of drag. Oh. Yeah, it's like trying to drive wide open with the parachutes out on a car. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like a so drag car. <laughs> and, I, and if you hold on to it, and the boat's going, it's it's pulling you. It was <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's really cool. Free chiropractor. But uh, we got a bunch of questions here that people submitted. There's probably um, half of them from. Gus, we don't <laughs> we don't screen screen these prior. We're gonna screen <laughs> we them right now. But oh, I feel like maybe we can ask. A good amount of these. Oh yeah, but uh... <laughs> wait, dude. Oh god. Yeah, I just read the first one. What, what is um, it? Does he ever edge on grid? Is a crazy question. That's by Michael C. Cone. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know what that. I'm not gonna, gonna lie. I don't know what that means. We're gonna we're gonna skip I think that. That's one. some sexual shit. It, so. I think it is, dude. Edge on grid. Please elaborate. <laughs> I don't know what this that is means. from Lewis, which is honestly a really good question. But if you could change or add one rule in FD, what would it be? Oh, change or add? Or add? Oh boy, I don't know. That's a very dynamic question. Um, I don't know. I don't I'm know either. Like, like, where would you? There's a lot of things that I'll be honest. This is how I think about a lot of stuff in life. There's a lot of things that when I see it at first. 
I like highly disagree with, and then like <laughs> like the new like passionately things. disagree with, and then like as I think about it a little bit more, I start to be like, all right, whatever. Like <laughs> <laughs> it was being a little ridiculous on hating that so much, you know. Yeah. Um, that is a good question, though. You know, I think there's really not a ton of unfair rules in Formula Drift. Um, I would say, at least in prospect, there isn't. I would. <sighs> I, again, I, I I always have this gripe with the steering column pedal box. Rule because <laughs> that's it, a personal Because it costs me a lot of money. <laughs> so, like, that's He's... one that I think that is kind of dumb. So I would definitely, I don't know, reverse that. I wish that there was some way to, like, limit a power level. The me too. You know what Ooh, I mean? That's what I, I do. I wish. I kind of wish that there was a way to do that where it would make sense. Yeah. You know, because it's difficult. Because, like, if you have a lot of power... And a heavy or a really light car is different than like low power and a heavy car. So like every car gets affected differently and wheelbases and grip and stuff like that. So I don't know. I, I, that's probably one that I think is. Now, this is something that I also personally think that would be a cool thing to change for Prospect. Now, I really like the GT radial tire that I'm on. And I, I love my relationship with GT Radio. Like, they're a great company and everything is is awesome. But I do think it'd be cool if there was another tire competitor in ProSpec versus just everyone being on a GT Radio. Is there not? Um, like, and are ProSpec were all on the same exact tire. Oh, okay. So, like, that would be kind of cool. And it is, too, for that. Like, the 255 is sick. And like I said before, you can clearly make it really fast. But I'm also on a sub-100-inch wheelbase car that is not very heavy. Like, if you're in, like, a Mustang or something that's a lot heavier... Like, you're definitely at a disadvantage on a 255. Hmm. Like, I firmly believe that. Like, because you have to, you can't get the car light enough, you know? Yeah. So, it's just, it's it's kind of different, but I don't know. That's that's a good question, though. Yeah. You know? The power know, actually, thing. Actually, one thing I don't like is the stupid lights on our windshield. Get the rid telem- of those. The telemetry. Yeah, get rid of those. Wait, type is, of- is that the brake light or is it something else? No, they're it's like not a just momentum a break. light. Thing I don't think right. It's not as simple as that. It's a, you, never, it? you don't watch FD anymore. I haven't. Bro, he doesn't. I thought we were friends, bro, dude. I thought you were on the has, couch, rooting me on every round. He I'm has rooting you no on idea what the, scenes. this is. He has no idea what. Dude, I haven't watched time. FD for real in probably five years. It's fun. Six we years. get to watch, dude. Come on. I only watch when I go to wall and I'm actually there. Or do you know that we don't even drift at wall anymore? They don't do that anymore, dude. When I go to. Gambler. Gambler. Growing a business, honestly. I mean, look it, at how much you've grown this place. Yeah. I so, mean, it, it's fun in person, but yeah. I will. I don't understand. The... It's fun when you watch it. To, okay, so we'll watch it together. Like, I'll yeah, put yeah. it on the Discord. Yeah, if you're watching if you it, you want to watch people, it. Yeah. You, you can discuss it, and too. we can watch it. And when you're with a lot of other people who like watching it, dude, it's just like, yeah. it makes it fun. Maybe. Ooh. Biggest thing I would want to change. Oh, here we go. They got rid of protests this year. I want oh, that back yeah. because I Wait, want you can't contest. Uh, yeah, or, there's or no you... more protests. No more protests in FD. And I'll say this right now. I want to be able to hold and I love him to death. Reese, who is now an FD judge. Yeah. Accountable for the decisions he's going to make this year. Yeah. And he's, he's walking <laughs> in so easy. He's walking into FD. Dude, protests and, and anything to deal with the judges is the biggest thing. In it's FD. the hardest. Probably it's, it's, thing. The, it's crazy because like no matter what, you're not going to please anyone. But Reese is coming in first year as an FD judge and, and he doesn't have to deal with anyone's bullshit. Yeah. Wait, like, how you did can't, he get so lucky? Yeah. You can't contest a call. Yep. Yeah. It's a new rule for That's this crazy. year. Crazy. I, I, I can't even this is America. to understand this. <laughs> what are we doing? So th- th- this, this is what happens, right? You can appeal something after the event. So let's say I get I lose a battle on top eight, right? Or whatever the case. There's a better example. Let's say in the final four, I lose a battle. And I, after the event, I appeal it, right? So the if you appeal it and they agree with your appeal, you get the points as if you won that battle. But... <laughs> Nothing after that. So let's say, like, you would have went on to win the event. Yeah. Like, you're like, hey, yeah, you were right. We made it. We were wrong. And we made a wrong decision. You're correct. So here's the points that if you got knocked out in top eight or whatever so it is, they got the next round up. Yeah. But, like, Cause you, you, but they're wrong. So, like, you should be accountable for being wrong. Yeah. Like, it's it's because that driver could have went on to win the event. I mean, from everything I've seen, because I know they changed the uh, qualifying too, right? Yeah. So I'm kind everything, of okay with that. Yeah. But. From everything I've seen, it's just them trying to make it more marketable and better to watch. And quick. Quick. They're trying to make it rip yeah. through. That's, Which I understand. That's it's what a long it day like for these people me. working these events. It, is it really is. Yeah. long day. And when you're watching the event too, they want to make it Not quicker so that you can watch yeah, but it. I'm, I don't know. I'd rather it. 
But I, I don't think opposite. protests really affect that because protests are always behind the scenes. Yeah, the longest thing they like take is judging calls and stuff it like gotta that. Add, it's got to add some sort of suspense. Like, yeah. I want to know. And I will say from a spectator viewpoint, I like the qualifying uh, solo laps. I'm just I saying. like qualifying has done me really well. I'm a, I, I, one of my, like, good things of pro drifting is qualifying. I always, it's a strong suit of mine. Yeah. I don't know why I qualify well. So I'm going to miss it because I enjoy it too. But I'm definitely okay with not having to worry about like two car setups in a way. We didn't really do two yeah, car I setups, but yeah. you know, like some people do. So yeah. like there's that. I, I think it's gonna help it's just a funny mindset. I guess I gotta tread lightly with this one. But it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna help people that don't qualify well or don't qualify at all. Like in yeah. the lower it's gonna help a lot of people in the lower bracket. And for everyone else it really isn't that different. It's yeah. just I just love seeing like a really sick qualifying lap. Yeah. I don't know why. So their argument, which I, this, so I felt the same way as you. This is what I was saying before, where I started really angry about something and I moved away from it. When they first announced it, I was really mad. And then they they brought up a point in this other podcast, the, the Outer Zone one, um, when Ryan yeah. Sage he said that when they got rid of the two run format um, and they went to one, people no longer wanted to do that baller lap, like the Chelsea Dinofa style lap. Because some people just don't care, like Chelsea. He'll run the baller lap whether or not mm. he qualifies first or 32nd. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? But most drivers are running a very conservative lap just because they want to get through to the battles. So it mm. took out a lot of the excitement of qualifying because oh, so people were don't... afraid of... Because like you say, if you have two run, the first run's a conservative one, they get the points. Second run's the baller one everyone yeah. wants to watch. But now that there's only one run, they would only do a conservative one to get through. So it kind of made qualifying mundane. Huh. So, like, I do, but it also really, the ones that really did a super impressive qualifying run, also, it, they shined even more. Yeah. Because, like, they did an aggressive qualifying run and made it work. So, it was a, a tool, if you were a really good qualifying driver, like a Ryan Turk yeah. or, like, you know, Matt Field, for instance, or that's whatever, so like, you could use it to your advantage. Yeah. But, like, it, it's interesting. Yeah, I, no, that's definitely, uh, I feel like a... Double edge, double edge sword. Is that yeah. like a? Yeah, yeah. I'm interested to see how it goes because now it's. I was like gonna say, a, let's see how it goes and yeah, go from there. I guess. Did we call it the? <laughs> this is a, a dicey one, but we call it in, at F, at uh, Forsberg Racing the new way of doing it, the macaroni plate trophy. Um, it's because they do a top 16 battle for pro, not for prospect, but for pro they do a top 16 battle that battles into top 32. So it's like whoever wins the top six, kind of like how LZ does his events, but whoever wins the top 16 gets their macaroni plate trophy. Like, yeah, I won. It's like, well, you won the bottom of the, the bo people. <laughs> <laughs> so like, Here's your macaroni plate. Congrats. Now go deal with the big guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's kind of funny. I'm, I'm interested to see how this, how this works. Maybe Dude, I'll watch I, FD this year. Bro, you said that last year. You didn't Did watch I say a that? single time with us. Oh, we watched shit. a majority of them in should, the Discord. We should do yeah. like a podcast. We line. literally, oh, I thought you were going to say like a podcast on that. No, I was going to say we watch them together when they are on all the time. We should Not do all here. the time, but we try to. We should to. do it here. You get yeah. beers and, you know, we hang out. We do that. All right. Yeah. We'll take that conversation. You guys are off proving line. my point that the grassroots guys have this weird problem with FD. Oh, I do. I always do. But uh dude, I think it's cool, but I, I I'm I, I, waiting for that one anymore. stylish one. I feel like before I, I didn't even again, I don't I don't really know a lot about FD, but one of the people that I liked yeah was Forrest's car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I I, I thought his car was always beautiful. Yeah, oh, dude, yeah, the, like, the only thing it, I care about are the cars. Palm tree so the cars aren't yeah. sick, I don't give a fuck. But that's, that's what I it. I like it from that aspect too is like though like if you walk around an FD paddock and see the cars like there's some crazy cars. Super like FD oh, yeah, cars yeah. are insane in terms of build for the most part, especially mm -hmm. Pro 1 cars. Yeah. You know, like it's just nuts to see the and the engineering and the the money and the motors and like the stuff that they put and the noises that come from FD cars. That's the reason why I do FD. Cause like I walked into wall stadium in like 2011 or something. 2012, That's what Frankie watched. FD. And like, I wa I remember walking over the, the like wall to go down to the bleachers mm. and I'm watching it. And the first thing I see was like, uh, it was, it was Forsberg funny enough in the lead in his VK 56 car with Charles Ng behind him and that G 37 he had. And they're like, he's on his door and the noises from that, and I'm not a big V8 guy at all, but the noise is coming from that V8 and then Charles Ng's car. I don't remember what you had in it. But, like, coming around that bank, just the yeah, sensory overload, I was like, I drove a Miata to that event. I was like an <laughs> autocross kid. I was like, oh, my God, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. Dude, two things. First of all, bring another Matt Powers back, and I'll watch every fucking, yeah. every, every fucking one. He's a cool dude. Dude, I like, just, I need something like that because he was my favorite. Um, and then what else? Oh, yeah, see, I mean, Wall. 
Wall was crazy. Yeah. Did you ever drive wall? Fuck no. Yeah. A but year after that event that I went to, I I competed in a U.S. drift event at Wall. Yeah, I remember or two that. years after that. And that dude is nuts. Yeah. I was in a stock, completely stock 1JZ VVTI. Stock ECU, stock turbo, stock boost. I'm trying to drive that. With an R154 <laughs> and a 4.6 diff in the back. And, dude, I was trying my hardest to make it around that track. Yeah. I, I, came, I came around the bank, came down. This is me building a car. The bump was so harsh <laughs> that my, my zip-tied through bolts radiator fan onto my radiator <laughs> oh my broke God. free and blew a hole through my radiator because <laughs> the bump was so harsh coming off that wall bank. We, yeah. we JB welded it. I hear it. that all and the time. And I made it most, a lot of the way through the event, actually. Dude, it's pretty good, that event. But it's, I mean, I, I always talk shit. I'm like, I miss wall. But at the same time, English Town kind of gives you the same vibe where it's like it's smaller and it's yeah. like contained. It's great for tandem. It's, it's great for the, the greatest place it's, on Yeah, earth. exactly. Yeah. It's like Come a good on, show. Baby. It's yeah. not like intimidating, but it is. It's technical. You get you could get a really good setup in the car because it's so you can get so much grip there because it's so small. You can really yeah. throw a lot at it, which is fun. And it's great because you have like all the fans right there. It kind of has that wall esque exactly. where everyone's watching right there, which yeah. is cool. It's like wall without all the consequences. Ex- it's the same size as wall, believe it or not. Like really? the actual layout is the same size. It's so hard to believe that. They, the well, that's at least distance. what I've heard. Yeah. People have measured it. Although, I mean, the run-up's way longer than That's wall. what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, but I mean the width of it. Yeah, I believe that. So I miss yeah. seeing at wall when they would, like, accelerate and the fucking car is just yeah. sliding down that because it's like, nuts. so sick. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, what the fuck? <sighs> Man, I, I do miss that a lot. I'm trying to yeah. think. That's probably where I saw drifting at that level yeah. for the first time. Me we too. had to park so fast. Fucking yeah. far away. Yeah. Take a bus, bus or some yeah. shit. Yeah. That shit would be there bad. was this kid. Oh I'll, my god. I'll, this reminds. I was leaving that event, and I had a, a NA Miata with a hard dog roll bar on the back of it. Um, you know, and it had like Big a hard dog sticker. Guy. Hell and, yeah. Uh, there was this kid. His name was Mark. He's like kind of friends with the Front Street dudes or knows the Front Street dudes. He lives out there. He took a picture of me and my friend Kenny in the car. And he posted on Instagram. No. And he was making, he was like, made fun of my hard dog roll bar and was like, do you even drift, bro? And I'm like, like, like really like lit me up. And and someone that was mutual friends, and this is like 10 years ago, and plus that, over like 12 years ago on Instagram, right? <laughs> Yo, you're, and you're I'm like, heard from and this dude, I was like, I'm like, who the fuck does this guy think he is? Like, he had like an S14 <laughs> with like a K. So it was like two years later, like I'm at wall competing and I like send him a picture. I'm like, do you even fucking drink, bro? <laughs> and like, it was funny. He's like, you after that, petty to another level. Like, the dude was like my best friend. Like, he was like such a big supporter of mine. It's so nice. And, like, I like great. talk to the dude all the time on Facebook and shit like that. But I was so mad because I'm like, who the fuck does this guy think he is? You and probably then, remembered that moment. You're like, oh, yeah. Dude, let me take this opportunity. I definitely it. have some, uh, like, yeah, that, yeah. that every Formula D I went there, I went to there after that. And actually, it might have been just that was the last one. I love Has to have, but wall. it was hot as hell. Yeah. I drove my S13 coupe there with my other friend, Tom, yeah. who also had to suffer because we had no AC, hot as hell, yeah, off we, the bus. We went down to Miyagi's minivan once, I think. That shit was no You guys AC. are probably comfortable in that. No, thing. it wasn't good. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. good. Wall was awesome though, man. And yeah, you know why I, I like Wall too? It. Because we that was our first like booth at an FD event, and that was pretty memorable. And then we oh, had yeah. we cool. had a, another one there that was way more memorable. We had Josh's car there when it was f- fully done with that livery, that Is first that the one, pink one. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it was just like awesome. It was like wow, I feel like we're actually like part of this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that there, was cool. There's well, a event there in September, right? And uh, with. Oh, at Walt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. With, like, we, Heichi Suchia is showing up. Yeah, yeah we don't yeah. know anything about this event. We just I saw it on Instagram. heard about this, too. We were talking we talking about it in our group chat, and I'm like, wait, what the hell is going on? Like, he's yeah, like, who's like, running the wall? Yeah, like, what is that? Like, who's, what who's running it? What's going on? Like, I don't know It just know said anything. drip competition. Yeah. I'm going to be like, yo, put me in there. You should, yeah, you should pull up to that. They're probably going to yeah. require me to get oh, a here cage. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Malcolm found it. Yeah. Third World Society. Drift King. Is that actually who's running it? DK stands Yeah. Donkey Kong. <laughs> yeah, dude, we're going to fucking. Yo, look at Petco's comment. <laughs> Wait, we're. Oh Yo, my god. Nick this Petco should be at Raceway Park. Shout out, <laughs> Nick. This should be at Raceway Park. Tagged him straight up. <laughs> yeah, it should be. I mean, they you should know. definitely involve some more people. Eleven thousand dollars in payouts. I don't what? know who Fuck. this. Who this? Jim Connor, dude. 
Yeah, Jim Connor. Uh, so it's probably like a car show group or something throwing this. Uh, Seventh and eighth. Wait a minute. Third World Society. I, you know, isn't yeah. that final bout week? Usually, right? First week of That's September. First week of September. Sorry, Drift King. I'm not cool enough to go to final bout. Hey. Bro, you'll, you'll you're it. You'll doing make it. the coolest <laughs> shit. You'll make it one year. <laughs> we got to talk about... It's literally we really highlighted. Not cool enough. Actually, no. You, that was probably one of the most fire podcasts we've had because of the way it was so laid out perfect. Wait, like, which one? This, this one? one? Yeah. You, you this told one is your a great whole one. ass story real fucking Yeah, we quick. didn't even really have to bother you about that. You just laid it all out. That was perfect. And I kind of talked about it a few times now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's been three, four years. Yeah. Dude, I mean, I feel like... Though even you've even though you've like achieved what you did, it's still nice to be able to talk to you like like you drift your purple S thirteen. Yeah, like, I love that car. Just yeah, man. Normal fucking dudes talking about cars and shit. That's yeah, yeah. Like, I, that's what I, I mean, that's what we're all about. You know what I mean? I I don't know. I love drifting. There's one thing that I always say about like the grassroots versus FD thing is like everyone in FD will always welcome a grassroots driver, but grassroots drivers don't always welcome the FD drivers. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> and I, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, like, so we're all like grassroots guys at heart at FD because FD was a grassroots sport, and it still kind of is. When, you know what event I love? Pro Rodown. Oh, it's my favorite of the year. Yeah. Absolute it, it's favorite probably my, my favorite event, too. Yeah. Like, just to be there and to see everyone and hanging out, and it, it's at E-Town. The so. weather's usually yeah. bussing. Except for yeah. this past yeah. year. 23 was bad. Yeah. Was uh, that the rain year? It yeah. Poured. It was the first shit. But it Dude, was we were underwater, like was standing nuts. up on all the all the shit. Yeah, it's crazy. It was you remember? So much rain. Wasn't I? Wasn't I there? Yeah, everyone was there. It did get sunny later on. Eventually. Yeah, but remember when everyone some some of you guys got there late and you walked up and we're all just under the booth, standing there. Yeah, we're just chilling on shit. We, well, <laughs> yeah. my favorite was when we looked over at. At Jana at the Front Street booth, she's oh by herself. Oh my god, yeah. Everyone's driving or doing something, and all the shirts are like fucking getting wet, and she's just like, <laughs> she's just sitting there, like, it's time. It. <laughs> like, it's over. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah. okay. I love that yeah. event, though. I do Dude. like to, to go back to that side of the I do kind of miss just going to like a Club Loose event, like loading the trailer with my grassroots car and like just hanging with the homies and like well, doing laps can. and it's like dude you i know really i can could. the problem is like i sacrifice so much stuff otherwise i'm trying to yeah. get to that point that's what yeah. i want to do is that's why i put so much effort in s13 is like to be able to just show up and still find that love for it because it is so different like you are doing the same thing it's drifting yeah but, but it'll always be different competing. it's like a job you know it like is like a job now you know but it's, it's i will say mike said the same thing um, I don't know if Ricky said the same thing, but I know Mike said the same nah, thing. Ricky's just happy to be in a car. Yeah. Ricky's like a teddy bear. Yeah. <laughs> but you Mike know. was like, I really do miss just having a normal car and going out and hanging out with everyone. I'm like, you can do that. He's like, I want to. I'm trying. When the, when the, you can't, though. You, you're, yeah. you're sucked into like that way of life, and it's like you're, you can't leave it because you're going to hate yourself for leaving it. Yeah. And sometimes some people... I'm fortunate that one of them, but some people hate their lives for doing it. And sometimes I think Mike's that way. I like Mike Power a lot, but yeah. he definitely's got some, yeah, it's some demons when it comes to competing. Yeah. When, you know? when a driver has I hope a, he figures it out. Has a, he's a fun really car talented like driver. a street yeah, car, that tells me that it's like, oh, okay. They still like to party on the side. Like yeah. they, they like to hang out with everybody. Or still. they got enough money to do both. Or they have <laughs> enough money. That's the biggest thing. They have thing. enough money yeah. and they have enough time. <laughs> yep. Time is the biggest Bro, thing. Bro, time is like the biggest <clears throat> Uh, enemy. Yeah, I would almost sacrifice now. I would almost sacrifice money for time. I wish I could have a lot more of time. Yeah, right. There's not enough hours in the day. Yeah, oh, ever. I sure feel like, that way lately. Yeah, every day, like especially when it comes to my job, because it's so like crazy with how the hours that we work for doing Snap On. That it's like I go into every day with like all these intentions of like I'm gonna have all this shit set up. That I'll build stuff for like social media, right, to post for racing and stuff, and I'll have it all in my Instagram, and I just won't even post it. Like I'll just be like at work, and I'll be like I gotta post this, and then it'll be like eight o'clock at night, and I'm like, well, it doesn't make any fucking sense to do it now. I'll do it I tomorrow. Remember that when I and was then it'll be the same thing. Yeah. Job. yeah, it's just crazy because like you do all this stuff, and then it's like. It, it it's kind of discouraging, you know. It'll yeah. really drive you into a weird spot. Where and it's then, like I just need more time. Yeah. yeah, but then you don't want to miss the wave. Yeah, and then you exactly. then now you're gonna kick yourself because somebody else did it. Yeah, that I, social media is a social media is a weird place, dude. Yeah, you know where my favorite place on social media is the comments. You go to the Yo. comments, you find some <laughs> of the funniest people. Yeah. The comments keep me young. Yeah, my favorite <laughs> comments are still YouTube videos. Yeah, those yeah. comments are always damn. Way yeah, I mean, funny. I guess the YouTube. Video I don't know was, why, but like someone will always have some crazy funny. Nah, thing dude, like, I don't know. Instagram comments lately have been yeah. reminding be me of like 
I feel like Instagram is more brutal. No, Instagram no, no. Is it's dark. Like two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Instagram is dark. But Instagram is like that just, video game chat where you get that kid yeah. talking all that it shit to you. It just started doing that again, though. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like it it's was like those that. those kids got Instagram. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they, they got them. That's crazy. And you got the cartel Instagram, right? Dude, I got cartel gram. I'm watching. The, People get the head heads get cut off. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. The, the Instagram comment is like, this was a sick video. Enter, 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 enter. Recipe to make cocaine. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> like how to do it, like like what You're you like, need, what? where to where to get it, all the procedures. How to it's make a, crack. It's a long fucking I've seen one like you that. You got too. a dark Instagram. Yeah, it's right. Crazy. You know what my Instagram shows me? Like mini cows and well, how to make chicken parm. Guess what? That's Your adorable. right there, and it's you're gonna get cartel gram too, and you're gonna be like, what's this doing here? Sometimes uh, dude, it's I'm funny. tired of the mics picking shit up, dude. And it is happening. I I don't care what anyone Some, says. Sometimes oh, it's funny. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's so you say one thing like as a joke, you and your buddies be joking about some shit, and before you know it, yep. you're getting ads for fucking some weird. Why shit do you I definitely have don't so want. many videos yeah. about 9/11 on my shit? <laughs> you big conspiracy guy, dude. Dude, we talked I mean, about it for a little while, you and think then all of a boat sudden, on purpose? I'm I'm like the least conspiracy guy. Says everyone group. that's a conspiracy theorist. What? I really am though, because we'll all have hell? conversations, Are and we'll have like this? everyone here, yeah. and they'll all be going off, and I'm like. I don't know, man. Those buildings probably just fell because they got hit by planes. And everyone's like, Dude, what are you, an idiot? I don't and believe that. That I, I think there's a lot more behind Yo, this. But then, but you know how hard it is to fly a plane at 530 miles an hour? That's the only thing I always like, say. I'm like, like, I'm like that was an like impressive fucking... 700 feet yeah. above the surface of the planet. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that was an impressive hit. hit. A building? How about the <laughs> Pentagon? I'm the not Pentagon saying that the planes was... didn't hit it. I, yeah. guarantee, I know that they definitely hit it. Pretty impressive, but, though. Yeah, I think there's I, a lot more behind it. Every day, there seems to be like another angle. Oh, just, yeah, what's up with the angle they thing? They feed what's us with another angle. angle. That's that that in the comments. That's that's what they're talking about. They're like, ah, yes, another angle, boys. Here we go, closer it's to like, victory. Where did this come from? It's been twenty three years. Yeah, that, like, <laughs> did, are people just digging in their basement? Like, oh, look at this camp Yeah, I've been holding they're, on to this one. That was like be, a meme though for a, a minute. It was like the new angle. The new angle. Yeah, yeah. and I was Soon like, we're gonna have the pilot's POV. Yeah. That's that was my favorite comment. <laughs> pilot's like, POV. Like we'd have the pilot yeah. POV. Be on Snapchat. Oh my god. Like, look what I'm gonna do. That's what's. I don't know. Like, I'm telling you, there's a lot of shit going on right now. I mean, I believe in like yeah. real conspiracies and shit, like things that actually oh, have happened. Oh, now, now we're going to go. Oh, yeah, things, I'm not a, re- I'm not a conspiracist. Happened and, you know, the government's like, yeah, we flat, did this. The earth is flat. No. Oh, thank God. No. <laughs> this guy's not uh, a flat earther thing. But God. like the 9 11 one, I don't know, man. I'm still not on board. A little I, bit. I, don't, I actually little don't bit. know how much I buy about the plane hitting the Pentagon one. That I, one, that I, one's, that's dicey. So here, it's like, here's, here's why I buy it. But this can be ruled out too. But I read, I probably read about fifty to a hundred eyewitness reports about the Pentagon. Not a conspiracy. I swear to God. Not a cons- what? I swear not to a God. conspiracy. Not a conspiracy. I swear to God. I swear to God. <laughs> and where did I land? I think a plane hit it. <laughs> That's where I land. But what was the motive? It was at the one spot. Oh no! Don't. Where- yeah, yeah, yeah. If we're gonna go, I'm just talking about did planes hit these buildings oh, and take them down? Yeah. I Dude. do think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's. What do you expect a structure going to yeah. do when it gets hit by something that heavy? This is what I don't believe, that they secretly had a demolition team in the World Trade Center and no one saw any They're of it. They're ready to blow it up? Yeah. That's what I don't believe. Yeah, I do think that's a bit ridiculous. Yeah. But no one ever thinks about that. They're just like, well, I saw the little smoke come out of the windows. I'm like, do you understand how fucking ridiculous it is to think a demolition team rigged that entire building up and not one fucking person saw it? Like, yeah. Those are the insane. same people who now kids want to be... Cats. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna so go you down. Be, you could be anything. You could be yeah, anything. I saw a real life furry last weekend. Did you? Yeah. I was. I was. What I, are we talking? You know what a furry is? Is when uh, Come on, I don't Carl. even care about this. This is something that I'm supposed to not talk about <laughs> on stuff. But I don't even care about this topic. If you let, if you're a parent and you let your kid try to be a, a cat or a dog, like you need to be evaluated. No, you but really I do. This is even like, crazier. It's, like, it's just what it is because it's you're doing it just justice to your kid. That's what it is, and I think that's morally sound to say no matter who you are. I feel yeah. like they would you know just get I mean? bullied like everywhere they go, and I don't want that yeah. for my look. All I child. heard that's about what I, exactly. I don't. Like, I'm not saying anything <laughs> like mean about that kid because clearly they're going through stuff and they need help. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. And it's just like as a as a parent or whatever it is, be sure your job to like. I heard they put a, figure a, that out. a litter box in the corner of a classroom. Exactly. I've, I've what? I've heard of that. This yeah. is real? It's a real thing, dude. I saw, I was leaving my friend's house last Sunday with my wife driving because she's a real estate agent. So it was like, um, we were taking her to a house showing and um, we saw this kid, this poor like 11 year old girl at a, outside of a church with a tail strapped to the back of her and she was playing in a puddle. 
Oh. She was in shorts and a t-shirt. It was like 45 degrees outside. Oh, no. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, Here's why? The, like, it, how is this I, even now, a thing? Like, even I felt a, so bad for them. Is that even a furry? Malcolm, can you confirm? Oh, yeah. that's what we're saying? Furry? I would yeah, say furry. that. I thought, furry. I thought we were saying fairy. No, no, oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying fairy. That's, no, fair, no, that's fairies are real. Fairies are real. Yeah, yeah fairies are real. <laughs> they paid me a lot of money for my teeth as a kid. <laughs> that's, dude, I mean, no, well, that, there's time. this whole, whole little, like, fairy. But I thought furries were just, like, people that liked cosplay. They go to conventions. No, they're fine. I don't have any problem. Like, that's that's yeah. totally fine with me. No, but someone actually, like, like they want to be cat? a cat and they like meow and that, stuff like that and they bring a litter box to their classroom yeah, and the teachers little... are supposed to like be yeah. okay with it and it's, do you even... imagine being a teacher doing that i you feel know like hard that's got to be to navigate yeah i feel like there would be some teachers that i had in high school where that just shit would not fly oh, in my yeah, school nowadays, when i was a kid are you kidding me yeah they no. would have fucking sent you the fuck home they're like get, come back here when you yeah. don't have a litter box yeah, yeah. Like, like we were having food fights and like yeah you oh, know, dude, that probably doesn't. Happen. Taking valve stems out of school buses so we had the day off. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> fucking fire idea <laughs> no, though. That's like, a good. You know? That's a good prank. I yeah. like that one. That would be exactly. so easy. Now that I think about yeah. it, just walking up thumbtack. No, you just them. get the clip-on things. Even like, they won't even know what the fuck's going on. But, oh, you, yeah. oh, you pull the whole. Core imagine out? like yeah. it'd be imagine being the school bus driver showing up at like six thirty in the morning. You just go to fuck every this. single school bus in the yard on flat tires. <laughs> That is devious. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, though. Yeah. I would just turn around and yep. drive right home. Be like, they were all like, fucked up. Fuck this. I'm not dealing with this today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get paid enough for this. I forgot we were doing questions. Wait, Wait, I, I forgot we were question. doing questions, too. This Before one's a funny one to really come back. Things. Why is Ricky Hoffman? I say that I'm yeah, okay that's... with people who were furries. Just, yeah. you know, I have to put that out there. We're all, we're all good with furries. Why is Ricky Hoffman your biggest friend and foe in FD? Sorry, that was submitted by Ricky. I it was had definitely to, by I had Ricky. I love Ricky, man. But yes, we we do have a good uh, like tit for tat thing going. Um, Ricky, if you don't know anything in this side of Ricky's competitive, I don't know if he talked about it on his podcast or anything like that. But Ricky has like crazy luck. He's like one of the luckiest dudes in, in, in life <laughs> Why general, do I but feel especially like we did talk in, about in everyone talks know. about it. It's just what everyone knows about Ricky Hoffman's luck. So like anyway, we we've done two battles in FD together. Uh, one that he won because he doesn't know how to get on the freaking gas. Um, <laughs> Or and Pain. the other one I won, which Maybe was in he the knew rain. That. Maybe he knew that. Um, yeah, it was at St. Louis. <laughs> We're at an inner clip, which you have a long extended turn after that. And I'm behind him again in my Z that doesn't like to follow slow cars. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, I'm at the inner clip, and I'm sitting there like on the handbrake, and I'm like, did I got like a quarter of a second left? before like i'm just gonna straighten out because i can't go any slower yeah and like he's still waiting to pick up the throttle and then he finally gets like into it and i nudge his front tire and he spins out and they gave him the win oh. and i'm like are you kidding me i'm like dude like if i didn't hit you you was no chance you were making it to the next outer zone like there was not a <laughs> shot in hell you were making it there and it just of course so he got lucky but know. anyway he might have planned that one yeah so he... that's why he says that but me and i get dinner with ricky every week in my life he's definitely one of my closest friends now he's great um, man Love Ricky Hoffman. He comes up. He comes. You should see. You want to see some funny about wakeboarding? You should see him try to do it. <laughs> he, he, Dude, him, he oh has the God. most tries I've ever seen anyone on trying to get up on a wake surfboard. Not even a wakeboard, but a wake surfboard, which okay. is kind hey, of easier. At least he's, you know. But he's dedicated to trying. Exactly. And he loves coming on the lake. Dude, I, I don't think I'd be able to do that. So shout out Ricky, yeah. man. Yeah. What the fuck? That's like reminding me of snowboarding the other weekend. Just falling down way too many times. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get this. Steve Misko asks, who won the FDE town battle between him and Misko? And why is it Misko? Wait it's a not. minute. First off, he lost. <laughs> uh, you, could, you could look at the video. <laughs> he said, pull the tape. He literally <laughs> lost. That That is my claim to fame of humor on a, on a snap on, on a uh, FD live stream. Yeah. Which, you know, Quite a few people that watch it. So Steve Misko had to go to a wedding that day. And if he made it throughout the round, like he would have been late for the wedding. <laughs> so like we we have this pretty gnarly first battle. We had a like double one more time. Mm -hmm. Then eventually I won. But we so the first battle, like was honestly one of my favorites ever in FD. It was so gnarly. Like just the the crazy aggressiveness between me and him battling at each other. It's like we wanted to kill each other. And um at the end of it, like they called one more time, but he he hit me hard. Like he just like pile drove me in outer zone three at New Jersey. This is FD and NJ. And like blew my carbon fiber door off my car. Like it was in pieces. 
So we had to go back to the pit to fix the car, obviously. So like um, Lorette walks up to me and she's like on the live stream and she's just sitting there like, you know, asking what happened and with the battle and whatnot. And I was like, oh, I got to make sure that Steve Misco makes it to his wedding on time. He's got to go to. So I got to go put him on the trailer. See ya. And like leave and then go win the battle. <laughs> just to make sure that he'd make it to the FD or make it to the, the wedding on time. That's funny. Which, he Which I thought he? was pretty good humor. Yeah. You know, for, for that kind of stuff. But. Yeah. Hope he got there in time. He's is still that thinks- annoying when they come over and ask you questions while your car's like. No, I like it. It's fun. Yeah. It adds the dynamic to it, and it shows that they actually care. They don't do it anymore. They, well, they don't really? have Lorette for prospect anymore, which is oh, okay. something that I would change to answer their question before, because um, I think that it adds a lot of value to the prospect drivers, and mm-hmm. they pulled it away for whatever money reason they claim. But but they I know, already I know have someone somebody that can do there it. doing Sarah. pro. Sarah can do it. Yeah, Sarah probably oh, can. call her up. <laughs> That'd be interesting. So, <laughs> yeah, Steve still thinks that he should have won because he claims that I like slowed down, and he hit me because I slowed down. I came across the track, decelled where I always you're allowed to decel a little bit, and then got back on the power, and he just dive bombed me, yeah, really hard. And he claims that it was my fault, but you know, everyone says that. Like I just said that about Ricky, you know, like it was his fault. So <laughs> that's what we all say. I was gonna yeah. say it sounds like it's cool to have that kind of dynamic where it still sounds like it's just your homies. Yeah, yeah, it was but it was a sick But battle. it's like at this level. Yeah, it was so much fun. And then to be f- fair, which is even funnier, the very next event at St. Louis, I had to battle him again, and that was an easy one. I walked right through him. So. <laughs> <laughs> he said, ball don't lie. Watch out. Damn. I do wish he'd come back to FD because he was arguably one of him and him and Mike Power are my two favorite people that I've ever battled in prospect. That's so cool. I wish that they were both back in prospect because I'd love to battle them again. You think, it cause, you think it's because you were friends? With yeah, them or, it's just yeah. like so much like, you know, you can just go all out and have fun with it and like trust their lead runs. Like, yeah. you know, like Steve Misco. you drove with them before. Yeah, like or... Steve Misco, I know you could always stick it to him. He's always going to do a great lead run. Like even Mike Power, like he always does really good lead runs. You know, you could always stick it to him. His car is going to be fast. It's yeah. going to be good and clean. So like I just had a lot of fun battling with them. That's cool. Let's see. This one's Billy. Billy from uh, Broken Motorsports asked how he got a job. How you got a job with him back in the day? We I just told kind of we kind of we kind of went over that. Yeah, I told him how he was wearing the dirt. I just wanted to shout out Billy because he's in yeah. here, even though he had his own pot on here. Billy, what are you doing in here, dude? You're on here already. <laughs> yeah, um, always got to be about Billy. Is System <laughs> Gus Alex's favorite Snap-on employee? <laughs> That's not Gus asking that. It was um, John, who has the S14 that won the faction pack hmm. that one day. Oh, really? The white car. There's this white S14 on their team. I think System is their. Wait, what, team? who asked that one? Uh, System Yeah, it's probably, okay. yeah, it's Gus's friend. Yeah. I don't know if I've met him or not, but I know he's got a white S14, right? It's a beautiful it's, car. Yeah, it's really oh, nice car. so Some nice. Some sweet Hot Boy wheels. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like, looks really fucking nice. Yeah. White yeah. on chrome, shiny wheels. That's always a good formula. Yeah, I would definitely say that Gus is probably, I, I work with him the most out of a lot of the people that we work with, so, you know, I kind of have to like Gus. Plus, he likes drifting. Imagine you say you didn't like him, and he hears <laughs> this, and he's like, "Fucking, <laughs> gonna piss in your coffee." <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then speaking of Gus, fr- front sway bar or no front sway bar? <laughs> yeah, Dude, sensitive. He, he just, I think he just wanted to trigger you. He must know yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He knows it depends on the style of car and what you're doing. Uh, and then maybe we'll end on favorite FD track, it, like that I've driven. Yeah. Or well. No, what have you any. not? Yeah, what have you not driven then? I mean, well, F. I don't know. I guess my favorite FD track is probably it. Definitely between Atlanta and Utah, like we were talking about before. Yeah. Um, I think Atlanta has a better ambi like ambiance about yeah. it than um Utah. I, I hear that about Atlanta. It's just a crazy party. But, yeah, it's just so Dude, so much fun. Go. That's that how sounds... it's been forever. That's what yeah. they said about that. Track. It's so much fun. It's just like the it's a professional track. It's a beautiful facility. Like the vibe there, the fans there are crazier than any. Track. Yo, the, the fans, fans look like they're nuts. having a great yeah. time in there, dude. Yeah, the that's fans why are we should go. Crazy at Atlanta. Yeah, so we like, should go to that. That'd be so fun. that's a cool one. I'd probably say is my favorite. It depends. Like, I've definitely driven cooler tracks than they have in the FD circuit, but like that's probably my. Favorite okay, what's one. your favorite track? Period. Oh, like boy. what's your cooler for track drifting? that you're saying? Yeah, 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 yeah for drifting. Lime Rock. Lime Rock? Big mm. course. Like, like the, the big one. Yeah, the actual Lime Rock. Yeah, you did that Grid is, Life? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That is, dude, that's next to Drift, drift Appalachia. Those two are my two favorite wow. things I've ever done in a drift car, which were both in 2023. Because so you I did some fun long, stuff. <laughs> yeah. Straight. Yeah. It's Damn. just, it's because it's like Forza too. Like you play that on yeah. Forza. 
And it did the coming like down the hill of Lime Rock, the last turn under the bridge. You're going like a hundred plus in the car while drifting, and you're coming like blind, sh- like shoot down a hill. You're oh like full God. transition blind down the hill at a hundred, and then you G out at the bottom of the hill at like a hundred plus easily. A hundred plus. That sounds I think so like 125. Sick. We pulled off my car like down the hill. And you're drifting, and it's just like the craziest experience ever. It's so much yeah. fun. What's that entry speed like? We, they start us pretty close, so we only oh, probably okay, entered at like right. 85 ish. The other but day we were playing that, we had it on, enter on like one of the dude 50 if you wanted to. When it's open track on on a settle, you could just do whatever the hell you want. So Damn. yeah, we were throwing it down there pretty fast. I wanna I wanna do fours of four again, man. I yeah, that bro, fours just don't. I'm gonna. I know. Bring I know something done, here. I'll make a little setup for you. You could fucking yeah. play a settle in the corner, and yeah. you'd hate it immediately. Yeah. yeah, I definitely say Lime Rock though, or like I've driven Monticello Motor Club. That's a really nice track too. That place is sick. And Do beautiful. they allow drifting there? No, no I, I work that, there. That's so a really yeah. nice. I brought my drift car there. I'm gonna drive it. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, actually, Gingerman is sick too. Like Gingerman is an underrated track. Yeah. Is that the Grid Life track? Yeah, yeah. Life. we gotta it check out a Grid Life. So what are we doing? Fast. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. Grid lives are fun, right? As yeah. a spectator, would you say grid life's fun? Oh, it's like going to Woodstock. It's a party. It's, or if, like, if you're, <laughs> it's like a, if you're like a dirt bike guy, it's like going to Unadilla. It's like nuts. Yeah. Like the, the partying, I can't even talk about, but the partying that we've done <laughs> at Grid Life Midwest Fest is nuts. That's the one? It is that is the one? nuts. It's like, I remember, like yeah, my first year, I remember. It's like, like concerts and shit. Yeah. It's like, yeah. dude, they're playing music till all hours of the night. They have, we call it Narnia, but like the whole, like, People where they they all like camp, right? So they all have camp and they all party all night long. So like, what, what I can talk about, we we acquired a golf cart, and this is like <laughs> me and pretty much every is this big Brian name. Hop is involved. In no, this? Hop was this oh, okay. is before Hop was uh, every time about Hop story really has drifting a golf cart. So this is like 2021. It's like me, JTP, um, Forsberg, Odie, Matt Field. Wow. Um, like a bunch of these dudes. And this is, again, my first year as like a pro. And That's I'm like, crazy. I'm hanging out with all of my idols. Like yeah. these dudes are like, <laughs> sick. there's a lot of us. So we, we JTP acquired yeah. a golf cart. Um, and we went off into Narnia is what we called it. And what we did is we challenged every like team of people, like the locals, to a game of flip cup. And then we'd flip. We'd, we'd beat them, and then we'd flip the table over on them. And then, <laughs> it's like cutting the yeah. sticker in half. And you then lose. You, and then a lot of times we would run over the table on the golf cart or, like, escape. And they would – a lot of them – some of them were great sports about it. Other ones, not so much. But as, like, me, like, my first year as, like, a pro, <laughs> and I'm, like, dude, my whole time, like, I'm sitting there thinking, like, I need to be more, like, disciplined, and I need to, like, work out more and go to the gym and, like, get into, like, that real good mindset. And I'm, like, this whole time, the reason I didn't become a pro earlier is because I didn't party hard enough. Yeah, <laughs> like all you gotta do to be a pro <laughs> is just party your fucking ass off. So like, it's, it was, dude, it was like the craziest night of my life, and that's when I was like, holy shit. That's really when I would like hit me. I'm like, dude, I'm with all these people that I just used yeah. to watch on TV and like idolize, and now I'm partying with them playing flip cup. That's dude, insane. you're kind of yeah. And last year we did it. it we did it last year too. Chris didn't get involved, and a lot of people last year. But like last year it was like me, Vaughn was big with it last year. <laughs> me, Vaughn, James Dean, D- and Denofa. Uh, Jared Dienda, like all these oh people, like God. and they're doing the same thing. We didn't steal. Well, I didn't say that. We didn't acquire Borrow. a golf cart. Yeah, <laughs> um, we we like just went to everyone and played flip cup, and only like one of them we flipped over because they were pretty mad. They all knew about it at that point. Yeah. So like, but dude, it was just like grid lights was so much fun. It's such a good we event. Should, we should definitely. There's so try many to go people. Like yeah, the man. food is amazing. The vibe is amazing. Everyone's in a good mood. Everyone's just having fun. It has like 2015 club loose vibes, just with like. The craziest cars because there's like so many Forza people there. Exactly it sounds like Forza Horizon. Exactly what it is. It's like Forza Horizon. There's just yeah. and there's music playing like throughout the whole time. Like, dude, you're a good example of how cool fucking grid life is. Which they don't do this one anymore. Alpine Horizon, but I'm in the Infinity. It's like 10 o'clock at night. I, I'm leading me, Chelsea, like Forsberg, Turk, like all these people. And I come past the stage at, at Alpine Horizon. It's so loud, like you could hear it over your drift what? car. It's just like, a cra- and you see all these people like wigged out of their mind, partying and dancing. You're drifting it's past hell the stage. Yeah, dude. dude. You throw it back, you come up onto the bank of this NASCAR track, which has, you know, the catch fencing that goes all the way yeah. over you. I'm coming up, it's 10 o'clock at night. I'm like smacking limiter up on this bank wall, and I look up, and there's people on the catch fencing. <laughs> Overhanging it, just I like it. Root, with no shirts on, like dude, it's freezing, and they're just like just rooting us on, and I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. I'm like, this is the cool, and I'm sure Grid Life probably doesn't want people to know that that yeah. happened. <laughs> we, they don't do that event anymore. Anyway, so it doesn't matter. 
<laughs> but I'm just like, dude, this is the coolest shit ever. Yeah. Like, how cool is that? Like, you're in a drift dude. car and you just went past a stage and like, I think that year was like, uh, it was, it was. So that year, I brought um, Young Gravy for a ride in a drift car mm. and Suicide Boys. Um, what the fuck? And uh, we took with that was the other guy. There's a bunch of big name people that year we took for rides, but I'm like, I just took like these dudes for a ride in drift car. Now they're performing on stage. It's like Suicide Boys performing on stage, and you're seeing people hang off these freaking crazy fen- catch That's fences insane, partying. Man, it's just nuts. It's how just many such of, a cool how many of those do they do now a year? The festivals they. So Lime Rock isn't that crazy because Lime Rock won't let them have the stage for music. So mm-hmm. it's a lot more. Actually, I like it almost more because it's a little more low key and it's a lot closer. Um, Gingerman is the only real crazy one that I know of now. Okay. Like at least that in terms of party. Maybe like, like Laguna. Three or four of them. Of, uh, I think Laguna year. might have music too. Okay. Dude, that but, one that was, shit looked insane. That one looked yeah. Nutty. I wish I got driving that wise. One. Yeah. I was like borderline extremely dangerous. I was like, holy nah, shit! Nah, 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 nah. I, yeah. I, they they had that. They were controlled. I mean, they I guess. I mean, they had good drivers on it. Bro, I was that's where you, that's that where like, holy that's where fuck. choosing your drivers. I feel like is like dicey. You want to make sure you're choosing who, who you trust. Well, that's is what's it gonna crazy ruin about everyone? too. Like, like grid life is so different than say like how Club Luce will run grid, right? Because like you have like Nick Swan running grid, which actually I I at first I was like. Because I'm so used to Club Loose Way, which is very regimented, very strict on like yeah. what, who can drive, who can tandem, and stuff like that. And like you're on grid, and usually you have time to plan who you want to drive with at Club Loose. Like you get like weighed and like pick out your homies and do whatever. But like grid life is like, for lack of a better term, somehow the most controlled chaos ever. That's how it like, looks. It's like like Nick Swan just like lets us. Like he, it feels like he's letting you do whatever. So like you're sitting there and you're like, damn, this feels really sketchy. But it all works out. And everything works out really yeah. well. And like we all end up getting to drive with who we want with, and everyone is everyone kills it. So like I think they, they just have a really good vetting process before the event on like who's actually allowed to like drive it. Uh, okay. You know, like they so like people that like no one really has to no, I don't say that people it's just people that aren't struggling to figure out it's the kind track. of like driving you don't have to base a group. Yeah, yeah exactly. Kind of it's just like riding a group and like you know yeah. for the most part everything's gonna be be good. But it's just it's cool and it's a lot of fun because it's like you get a lot of laps in and a lot of seat time. Yeah. What the heck? These people. We, we got to go to one of these. You will. It's should. so sick. Uh, do you have anything else? No. I mean, I, a lot of the questions. The problem is a lot of the questions. We answered. We, we already talked about. Yeah, yeah that's, that's why I was like, we're going to end the questions on that one. Yeah. Because, so. Uh, and some of them are your friends and we can't say. We just. Said. Yeah. A lot. Yep. Of, yeah. The edging one. Um, I let that one through and I thought that you knew that person. Guess not. I don't even know what edging means. Edging is. We'll talk about that. No, offline. no, no. I want to hear your explanation. We talked about furries. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess edging. I think is when you're <laughs> that you're you're close to busting. Okay, and then you just stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. just I like why that. do you just which you I just stop? which me personally, I I think that's not good for you. That doesn't <laughs> health wise. I don't think that's good for you. It doesn't sound healthy. <laughs> it doesn't sound. It good. sounds like you're 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 creating stress for yourself. Yeah, Malcolm, why'd you laugh? <laughs> I think it's a, it doesn't. I think people who edge also parents believe that 9 11 <laughs> was, was. Dude, was bombed. they got to stop edging so we stop fucking getting all this fucked up stuff in yeah, the world. Dude, like, I don't know. That shit's. That makes me feel weird. That's like. that's You know what that reminds me of? Take Going to take a piss and then cutting it short. Yeah, like, well, earlier I had to do that you? earlier right? when like, we weren't friends yet. I thought Alex, we were going to sword fight. Al- Alex <laughs> just walks into the bathroom and <laughs> For, well, was the an door office. was open. The door it's was just open. a different hall. Yeah, yeah, the door wide open. Yeah, we have peeing. an open door policy here. That's what it is. <laughs> we, I'm, ta- I'm about to piss, and then Alex walks in, and I, I'm like, fuck, bitch. <laughs> and then yeah. I'm like, Does fuck, now I, gotta, now I got to let it go again, and I'm like, come on, please, 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 and then we're good. I'm usually not piss shy like that, though. You know how people are piss shy? Yeah, yeah. I think I am. Yeah. I I, I think bet I you am. are. I think I am. I think that's a personal problem. I got to work on. Alex asked if we wanted to cross swords immediately. Hey, some people are more comfortable. Break the ice somehow, dude. Yeah. yeah but I talked to a lot of people all week long, so I'm pretty used to <laughs> just throwing random shit out to people I don't know that it's well. It's good though. Some people have the opposite problem where they like don't really get to talk to people all week, and that's usually mm. me. So then when I get out of work, I'm like, mm. Yeah, that is you. Yeah. That's why you're screaming all the time. Yeah. You gotta let that out. Yeah. yeah. You seem like you got a little pent up. <laughs> I work in an on, office, dude. so then like I get out mm. of my office and like. And if he I, calls you from the office, he's like, "What? What? Yeah, I can't really talk right now." It sounds yeah. like he's in prison. Because <laughs> well, like, like yeah. in the office, like I, I work hard on my brand of who I am in the office. I'm a dependable, per- dependable person. I work hard, like. But then I get out of the office, and you're not gonna hear. Uh-huh. About, you're not gonna hear about what I do outside of the office. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm to drift dude. car to work. It's fucking like <laughs> Tesla, 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 Tesla. Ah, yes. Bumper off. Clapped out. Tesla, 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 Tesla. <laughs> yeah. Not like, you big Tesla guy? No, I'm not. I just, <laughs> just I like, work. that's just what the common. Yeah. I, there's a new kind of EV that I see. I'm going to say it on the podcast. Electric cars are done by 2029. <laughs> Done? Not done, done, but like everyone's gonna be like, "What the fuck are we?" I'm doing? saying they're gonna try to drift them. I know yeah, everyone feels you're a lot up. more sensible person than I would have given you credit for. Yeah, <laughs> that, you that, think he's not sensible? I don't. I just don't know. You I think, think, you think I'm that right? I think I'm right. Fit you off 100. Okay. I, I think, think it's not a sustainable thing to, a to keep making. Yeah, I think that they have a place. Don't get me wrong, and I, I don't think that I don't think they're gonna completely disappear. Yeah, I don't either. Um, it's just like. I don't know. It's just we're not quite there yet. And I think there's exactly. better solutions. You know, I think that if they explored like hydrogen running a battery That's pack, that would saying. be a lot better. Or even like Toyota's method is like big with the the hybrid. Hybrid. You know, like I do agree with that. Now, there are like in scenarios where an electric car will make sense for someone in their lifestyle. Yeah. You like know, I, mean, like, I think about 150 all the time. miles. Or like so? I spend a shit ton of money on fuel every week for like what I do. <laughs> you, you. Like, truck I, spend, <laughs> like, I don't just drive an F450. Like, <laughs> I have a, a, a 370Z daily driver. But like I spend a lot of money on gas that like if I if I didn't have to spend that money, it would be more than enough to cover the payment of a Tesla. Yeah, that's yeah a Tesla. but then you're making a so payment like, on a Tesla. Here's the like, thing. You have something to sell. You can't sell the burnt fuel you use. I guess so, like, I get yeah, that, that's true. But like it couldn't be my only car. That's for sure. The like, first time I'm mind. stuck at a Wawa charging that shit or oh, waiting lose my to mind. charge it. That's it. So well, yeah. the, the thing is, is like, I wouldn't want to even put myself in that situation. I'd want to charge my shit at home all day. I yeah, come but let's home. say something happens. You know, you have to go somewhere, and then it's like, well, it's that, not it's not gas. It's <laughs> dude, it's yeah. just you're it just that, soul. It doesn't fit yeah. your. Uh, well, too, it doesn't fit you know? your needs. Then then exactly. you're not an EV person. The, the thing is, like, there are. It depends on where you why you're buying it, right? Yeah. Like if you're if you're buying it thinking, this is also dicey. Take the hat off. Um, <laughs> it's like if you're buying the car to think that you're saving the planet, like you're in it for the wrong reason. Yeah. Like if you're buying the car because like you are, it will benefit your lifestyle or something, then like, yeah, whatever. I'm not going to yick your yum over it. Or if for some reason you like Tesla cars yeah. for some reason. Yeah. Like if you're into that car, like, and they, they're very impressive in performance wise. They're very, like, EV technology is going crazy. It's just like, we don't really have, in my opinion, an infrastructure that really supports exactly. it that well. That's and I don't think it's I that think logical of. for the general consumer. Yeah. yeah. I just, I think that some people, I, I always, I always say that, I, I use my sister as an example. I always say that my sister's trying to save the world with her thoughts. You know, mm. and it, like sometimes, <laughs> like, and I'm like, I feel like a lot of times That's, people who buy a car like that, they like, they're driving their Tesla and they're driving to work and they just feel like, yeah, man, I'm saving the world right now because I have a Tesla. And I'm like, if you really look at like the stuff behind it, like you're really not like the battery. There was some crazy like, article that to, said to, it was... to manufacture those batteries is so much worse for the environment to dispose of these batteries is yeah. so much worse for the environment. Like what comes out of most cars tailpipes is like straight water most of the time these days. Anyway, there's more filters on my diesel truck than like. You could then yeah. it was used in all of COVID for N95s. You That's, know, there's a lot of filters and like this stuff. And there was a lot some of article that like compared electric vehicles with gas vehicles, and they were like the electric ones produce more. Yeah, uh, per more, car more because waste. with manufacturing. Yeah. But also, but not only that, it was because of uh, the brakes. Because apparently, the brake the brake dust is one of the biggest things with with cars and pollution. What? And apparently, Teslas because they use that braking. The regenerative. Exactly. Regenerative. They brake more. And they were saying tires too, something with that. I did they're not heavy. know that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that either. Because and they're I, dangerous too. Like there's racetracks that physically won't let you even drive a Tesla on it because they don't know how to put it. They don't yeah. have the stuff to put it out if it catches on fire. Yeah, you mm. know, and stuff like that. So it's like it depends. Like I don't know if if it if it fits your needs and saves you money, then like yeah, I think it's 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 a sensible car to buy. I just think mandating it or making it such a push. Yeah, for like really everyone to be forced into do. it is never going to happen. It's not going to work. That's it's like the so same thing with like the gas stoves conspiracy. in New York State. Like you think people are just going to be like, yeah, I'm going to use an electric stove. Like, no, like that's just not how it works. Conspiracy, yeah. man. You know? I'm telling you, they're just trying to make us drive all that. bro. Yeah. Now, I do think there's are things like that. It, it is if they can figure out a way to make like a, a tractor trailer that was efficient with electric. Mm. I actually think that'd be pretty okay, cool. Okay. That's like, pretty that interesting. Because it has yeah. a lot of space to store batteries. That has a lot of space. But for, then we don't solar. Get to see any badass, you know fucking tractor trailers i like dude but that's the beauty of it is you can still have your dudes with your badass tractor trailers i hope so i hope so yeah, yeah. i agree with that i i asked frankie a lot because i'm like you think when everybody's driving that stuff that this shop is just going to be like that hot rotting shop like moon eyes is right now How as long like as they a, let us yeah. i guess i don't know what's going to happen with you got to find an umbrella to get under yeah like some sort of umbrella 
Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's just it's it's just interesting. I don't know. Like that's the thing too is like for us it's so different because we see these things every day. Like you can't go anywhere without seeing a Tesla or an electric car these days. <laughs> yeah. For us, right? So like and a lot of people, especially like the ones that are in power to control what happens with vehicles, like also we're in areas that where they see electric cars every day and it becomes normal. But like if I see it a lot, I travel across the whole country for racing. It's so like if I go to like Oklahoma, like if I'm traveling across country and I'm in Oklahoma and I walked up to some dude in Oklahoma and told him that he has to own an electric car in 10 years. Yeah, dude, I would get shocked. Like you're not telling people in what the middle in of the, the country that they got to drive about? an EV. And like, and you think that's that just going to change in 10 years? Is that what's in question that we're going to have to just yes. all? Yeah. Eventually. What did California say? 2020? The, I did sooner than I thought. Like 2029 20, or, or something. something. And then New York said the same thing. Well, yeah. Whatever they do. Do you think what are where are the Hellcats going to go? That's what I'm saying. They're gone. There's a thousand of them in New York at least. Wait, wait, wait. Well, we... by time then, most of them will probably be wrecked. Totally. <laughs> Didn't we talk all about this once before? Dodge was like going all EV, and then they just switched switched up in like one year. They were like, never mind. A well, lot they, of companies, Ford did that. Ford pushed huge EV stuff but they're with kinda, the Mach, they're Mach cha- E. And, coming back now? Yeah, they're like, Ford fully admitted recently. This, I don't even know. This is not even spreading... You know, propaganda or like stuff here. You could pull up an article where Ford showed how much of a loss the Mach E and the F one fifty Lightning program the Mach was. Mach E was the dumbest thing I've ever seen Ford do. Yeah. And the they, problem and is they, they put a four cylinder in a Mustang. Yeah, so. but yeah, that's There's true. A lot of hey, people things. liked those cars. Good the for The four cylinder Mustang. Yeah, <laughs> that Dude, EcoBoost Mustang, motor was good. All I want is a V eight in it, and I don't like V eights. But yeah, I agree. I, like, I, I definitely em- embrace the inner American in me. Especially yeah. when I drove the Infinity, the car that has the BK56 in it, which isn't American, but it's a V8. I'm like, oh, I feel American driving this. <laughs> yeah. With that chopped you know, the V8. <laughs> the going chop. I'm like, man, this thing's pretty cool. <laughs> that car sounds pretty sick. You feel it in your groin, you know? Hell like a good yeah. Red Big in American. the haunches. 1,000%. <laughs> Wear my dude. ostrich cowboy boots, you know? So dude, how's yeah. the season looking for you? This season? I'm excited. We have a... A lot of uh, changes yeah. going on, and a lot of I could kind of talk about my stuff. I'm definitely not allowed to talk about Chris's stuff, um, but a <laughs> lot of exciting you were making things. Making your car a little bit more tame. And yeah, I'm just, even just for the program, like the car's not changing too much. Um, the program's changing a lot in terms of partners um, and stuff like that. Like my car's gonna have a new title sponsor. It's not gonna be NAS sponsored uh, okay. title wise this year. Um, we're still doing a lot with NAS. So is Chris. Don't worry, anybody. Yeah. But you're actually doing more with NOS than we previously. I was going to say, that's like the um, biggest part of... So When I think of Forsberg, yeah. I think of... That is oh, what yeah. I think Wait of. till you see Huge. what he has going on this year is really cool. And so do I. I'm just very excited. We have another partner that is... Uh, I haven't told anyone about this yet um, at all, but we have another partner that is stepping up. So anyone that's going to watch this, I'll, I'll say it now because I was told I was allowed to, but my title sponsor this year is going to be Steel It Coatings. Oh, um, okay. This company. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm Hell, you, what the fuck? Yeah, so I'm yo, based, that insider yeah. scoop. No, literally, no one knows that besides my team and my wife and friends. I, w- but um, I so, got some questions about that company. Yeah. I want to I see some of their products because yeah. I've been hearing a lot of it's, things. About it's it. honestly amazing. They're such a great company. They're local-ish. They're like Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, the the owner Michael is like such a cool dude. He came to FD English Town. He hung, hangs out with us. Like everyone from Steel, it's amazing. Um, we've been working with them for a few years. Um, they just decided this year to step up and become a title sponsor for my program. That's awesome. So it's super exciting. It's not That's like we're not awesome, doing anything, lo- like nothing changing with NOS. It's just like yeah. for my particular car. Think of like Chelsea with the Pennzoil stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just like Chelsea was still with Monster. Um, it was just how it worked for the yeah. car. So like I'm really excited about this new partnership with Steel It. We're going to have a whole new livery. Yeah, All I was whole, about to ask. Yeah, everything's like, going to be Steel different. It is like blue. Yeah. I won't tell you anything about the livery. Yeah, all right, all right. But, uh, <laughs> you can, you the, can keep that. The car but... will be a brand new unreleased Steel It color. Um, yeah. Painted and then it's going to have a livery. Um, it's still going to be a Forsberg Racing esque style livery. Like Chris's uh, livery is changing a bit too, because yeah. um, they change every couple of years. So they had the Nas livery. Yeah. So his his is still don't worry, it's still going to be a Nas livery. Don't worry. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. um, he, his program's really cool and he's got a lot of cool stuff going on. I'm really excited for him. You know he's he, he's he's got a like this year for him that's really kind of uh, solidified that he's been working so hard for his last stuff with Nissan. So you know, he's got that Frontier. I don't know if you've seen, he has his own literally limited edition cool. Frontier Forsberg edition <laughs> that you can get Wait, from Nissan. What? Yeah. I, wish, is they'd, like, that's I like, wish they'd give him a Z, but That's yeah. some big dick shit to do. That is what awesome. the like, fuck? To be able to There's have a Chris Forsberg edition. Nissan yeah, Frontier. Frontier, yeah. That's Malcolm, cool. do yeah. you have a... Just, you can pull it up. It's, that's a real thing? It's it's sick. It's and then Nissan, like, give him the goddamn Z. Give yeah, him his well, own Z. Yo, get us an Alex the Jaker we'll yeah, Z, better. bro. Yeah, so, and Alex, he needs a Z, too. So, like, this is, like, the Frontier. That's cool. 
That's real. Oh, he's got uh, it up here. Yeah, right there. Oh, wow. That hey, yo. Yeah. That, okay. You know? I like so that's everything like, about that. The thing is, so the, the Nissan's got a big push for off-road right now. Oh, wow. Um, so like that's they they race this uh, Nissan Frontier in the Nora 500, and they won their class, oh, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so that like truck Forsberg and the team built, and they raced it, and then to like kind of celebrate it. Oh, they Forsberg gave him, raced that yeah, truck? He raced it, and he won oh, wow. his class. Yeah, um, what are you doing, Frankie? <laughs> not that. Fuck. Yeah. So like Dude, that's, that is awesome. that's something cool and exciting, and it's like just sick to see a company step up to yeah. the plate and like care about us drifters. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's and even outside sick. of his. What the fuck? That's yeah. awesome. I'm so glad like, Nissan's doing that. You know, it's really cool, and they're like they're big, obviously, with the Z. I think the Z is like literally one of the most home run vehicles that has come out in recent history. I'm not gonna talk um, any shit, but uh, yeah, I'd like to one. see more of them on the road. But I, yeah. I don't. I, yeah, that is definitely an it's interesting. It's the dealerships, topic. I think. I think it's dude. It's just it's a sick car. And I did. I've driven a, quite a few Nissan Zs, the new one, and uh, I think the most comparable car to it, if anyone cares that hasn't driven one, that has driven one of these, is a BMW M2 Competition. Oh, wow. um, they like <laughs> if you blindfolded me, I would genuinely think that they're almost the same car if oh, I drove. Which it. is funny because that yeah. car, I but feel like it's more the same similar car to yeah. like Toyota. Super. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> unlike Toyota, it's just the power delivery, the brake feel, this everything about the general feel of the car feels very similar to a BMW M2, which I think is an awesome car. Uh, from so, it, from outside perspective, I love the Z, but I don't see any of them on the road. Yeah. We saw one. I saw one the other we day. We all saw the same Z. Yeah, no, no, I no. see a few it was in, a gray in one. Central Jersey. Yeah. The one that I seen is gray. It's by yeah. my house. They're not. I don't see enough of them, and I do agree. I think that like dealership markups has hurt yeah. the sales of that car and and they stuff need like to fix that. that. You know, it's just it's a shame to see. Like I I I hate the dealership markup things, but it's crazy too because it's an affordable car. Like you yeah, can get a base that Z that for are like it, forty grand, like thirty nine forty grand. So it's like it's a hell of a lot cheaper than a Supra, yeah. And like much pretty much any Mustang, 60? but you can't get that car at a dealership for less than fucking probably seventy or some shit. I don't know what they're doing now, but I remember it being insane. It was like ninety thousand dollars to get one of those cars. Yeah, they have calmed down a bit, but I think it like it just hurt it at the time that it was released. Yeah, you know. So it's like it's a shame because it's it to me like I just said this today because I was all day today I've been all back in this kick of buying one. Um, mm -hmm. Is like it's like the last of the Mohicans if this EV thing uh, keeps going. Yeah, you know it's like a proper manual rear drive sports twin car, turbo, turbo charged turbo. sports yeah. car yep. that has a lot of potential for with uh, the, aftermarket. With the and it does look crazy good. heritage. I think it looks like it, it's not just a Z. Yeah. Like it, we we talk about Zs all the time. Like it's just like a Z, but and it's called the Z, right? It's not the four hundred Z. That's call it. definitely not called the four hundred Z. It's God. called Nissan Z. I was Nissan so Z. worried. The about official that. chassis goes RZ thirty four. Okay. I wish they okay, called it a 34. fair lady. But like, but the that's thing what is, I was get, I was gunning what, for that. Wait, called Dude. it a what? Fair, fair lady. lady. Malcolm, can you oh, bring up? Yeah. Can you bring up the photo of the new Z with it saying "Fair Lady Z" on yeah, the trunk? Yeah, the proto. Dude, mm -hmm. yeah, that, cool. when like, I saw that, I was like, "Fuck." That's how it is. The, but I'm saying it, it has a crazy heritage of a car, and it sucks to see that you don't see them a lot. I yeah. think yeah. this is GR86 by far the coolest is all one over too. the place. Yeah, I think it is yeah. one of the cooler. Well, ones. it's also it's a different price point, right? Different like, price point. The different six is like it's slower. It's a lot slower. I mean, like, it's it's not even like it's similar as they I are in car. They're really too, not though. that similar. Like it a does, six is I think is a beautiful car, yeah. but it's like it's a lot slower. It's a lot cheaper. You know, it yeah. fits to a different fan base. It wasn't in the flagship, uh, like a probably the RX seven Supra. Um, you got a trunk though, like type of deal. NSX. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. I really like the the new Z a lot. Like it's just, I really think it's a cool Z they've come out with by a pretty large margin. I'm not gonna lie, because um, it's twin turbo. It's 400 horsepower. You know, it's it comes with a good diff and good brakes, and you could literally bolt an angle kit on that thing, and it would be yeah. and it would be a baller drift car. So is, so is that the current grill it's coming with? Uh, which, That's what it looks like. Which one is no, it? No, not the orange one. That's some. Um, not the orange one, no. the, that green okay. one right there. So that yeah, one that's right there. It. That's the the well, that's similar. They changed it a little bit because that's still proto. Malcolm, give me a black one. Ooh. Yeah. I want a black one. Dude, that's... I mean, it, yeah. as much as I think I like the front end, I don't think I like it that much. So when you see it in all black... <laughs> what about the <laughs> so Nismo front end, though? The Nismo front ends, I think, is sick. Okay. There's a Nismo one? Yeah. Let me see. There's one for sale on Route 23. Oh, perfect. It definitely looks automobile. better than a 370. No offense. Uh, I like how the hood still does that 370 yeah. thing in the middle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. dome. Uh, the back, the back for me is what does it. I love that, and yeah. the interior. Yeah, the back oh, does look. Sick. I love it's so the comfortable. Interior. Like I've, I've driven a few of them, and I'm like, dude, this thing is so nice. That I daily right drive a 370Z, and it's just like you wouldn't, 
it's just so different. Yeah, it's way it. different. Even though it is a very similar car Dude, in size. I like the blue. But HKS, I like that the HKS blue. one is yeah. fucking nice. I don't know why I love the blue. <laughs> to the left of what the blue numbers. is pretty cool. Because it reminds me of like has old, one that has blue interior. Yeah, like S15 Forsberg. or something. Like yeah. The older cars that would come with. Wait, but above that, Malcolm, can you click that aftermarket one? Here we Ooh. go. Here we go. Yeah. It's. It, I want to see, like, so we're looking at a blank canvas before, and now I'm looking at it, and I'm like, yeah, that looks, yup. Yeah, I like the headlights. I would drive that. Yeah, I like especially that angle. They look good from that like yeah, quarter, the like three that, quarter. Yeah, three quarter shot. Oh yeah, that's my definitely one of my favorite. I angles. will I, I will say though, I heard a lot about those engines and those turbos blowing up. What? <laughs> Not really? in this particular car, but the You're talking about the Infinity? The Infinities, yeah. A lot yeah. of problems. I mean there's a lot of upgrades for them. They make crazy power. With, yeah. uh, without a lot of modifications. Yeah, they're definitely they got, like, sick. stock yeah. water to air intercoolers, yep. like yep. a lot Some of technology. That, but but yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a cool. It's a cool that car. was a. It's an efficient technology water day. That's something that you just have on a car. Like my yeah. truck has it. <laughs> Yo, your truck your looks like a, a lot spaceship. So like that, it's got that massaging seats. Pulled up. I remember and I was when like, you pulled up on that, in that years ago, and I was yeah, like, I've had that what thing for a while. Fuck? Really? Yeah, it's got a lot. It of does miles. not look it's like got it. Got one hundred and fifty-two thousand miles on it now. Looks brand new. Twenty eighteen. Dude, we gotta. We yeah, gotta, we gotta get. Yeah, here. I gotta get dinner, dude. I had a yeah. have any in it all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you here. guys so much for listening, and thank you, Alex, thank for you, coming Alex. on the yeah, pod. Appreciate it. This yeah. has been like it, awesome. it's cool to talk to somebody who's done the stuff that you do, and and anytime we interview somebody who's who's kind of like a, kind of got their shit going, yeah, <laughs> it's definitely always impressive, yeah. and it's nice to hear from like a yeah, humble guy. Excited to watch you this season. I'll be I'll be tuning in. I. I'll be tuning in. <laughs> no, he's not, bro. No, 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 you no. Accountable now that. I will. Now I will. <laughs> All right, bye. All right. Thank you, guys. Are you are you not gonna let him say bye? <laughs> what? Yeah, I guess I'll fuck myself. <laughs> Adios, yo. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> no, I'm like I'm trying. <laughs> Alex Jager has left the building. That's it. That's what we. That's how we need to start the outros. There yeah. it is. Yep. Just like Jocko does. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, Alex Jager has left the building. Yeah. That guy's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. He's awesome. Um, I'm really glad he took the time to come up here. Now he's, you know, Mr. Big Shot, Forsberg Racing. Yeah. He really got interested in drifting. The next few years, hey, I'm on Forsberg Racing team. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah. When we came in here this morning. Malcolm was like, it's kind of crazy how that happened, right? I'm like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I know he was trying to make it sound like it's all luck, but it really wasn't. Yeah, you, you got to put yourself in the right places at the right times and, you yeah. know. He literally. Keep at it. He's like, yeah, I met this one guy, um, you know, and then a few years later, uh, I hit him up and he just made it happen. I was like, <laughs> yeah, but you were working on different teams then. You yeah. worked for two different teams. Like, you're definitely putting the work in. So. Yeah, uh, there's a, probably a lot more work behind the scenes than we than we think yeah but it's obviously he's very uh aware of his situation so that's yeah. always good and he's grateful so that's awesome yeah um i told him i have to watch formula drift this season so i guess i'm doing that yeah you're you're lying <laughs> you're not gonna watch <laughs> no i'll watch it i mean you know i I'm, I'm interested to see how if i actually know the people like mike power and alex i'll kind of interested then if i don't know yeah. you it's like you know yeah you want some type type of connection i guess yeah something uh i wish we could talk about more stuff that he told us behind the scenes but this, it looks like this season's gonna be pretty yeah. cool yeah so you guys uh better formula d is really trying to be at the forefront and you know yeah i mean it's a lot of cool rule changes some are good some are bad uh, mostly bad if you ask me but um as far as forsberg racing goes i think it, it's going to be really sick here. So yeah. make sure you guys check that out. Um, as far as what's going on in the shop, uh, if you didn't hear in the intro, we have the shops being epoxied right now. So it's pretty loud in here. You're going to hear some background noise. But uh, yeah, the shop is torn apart. So we're going to be down for about a week. And then... Yeah, you're going to see a lot of changes coming soon. Yeah. Uh, look at our Instagram or YouTube. You'll see what's going on. Yeah. And uh, what else we got going on? Any new parts? Do we do anything? Um, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> My head has been fucked up recently. Wait, why? It's just I feel like I got a lot, a lot going on. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I just can't remember much okay. at the moment right now. Is this a therapy session? I need help, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why didn't you talk to me about this? 
But no, it's, I, I'm not. I'm not complaining. It's just uh, I like I can't remember much. I, I always got something else popping in my head. Yeah, I mean, you're always kind of a space case, but thanks. You're welcome. Um, I thought this was a safe place. <laughs> but. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, me personally, I feel like March has been slow. It has felt. Oh, well, the beginning was. Uh, I feel like it was. Um, more okay. busy than usual. Okay. Beginning of the month, but then it slowed down towards the second half. So I mean, this could be kind of a long outro, whatever. It's only me. It's only me and Malcolm here today. So yeah, uh, Chris is off. Jesus is off because there's nothing to do in the shop. There's yeah, not one machine in the shop. <laughs> I do kind of want to talk about this though, because remember how I said the other day. So February was really busy. Yes. Really, shop was busy. Uh, parts were flying off the shelves. Shit was really crazy. Yeah. March came, and it was kind of okay for a week. And then we start planning the floors. And all of a sudden, all the work stops. Yeah. And I'm like... You're like, oh, it's the universe. I know. I don't believe in this shit. But every time it, something happens... Because people are always like, oh, it'll always work. It'll work out. It'll yeah. Work out. And it does That's what they mean out. when everything will fall into place. Yeah. But it was just like, this, this was too on the nose. Uh, yeah. Because we usually schedule work a week in advance, and we usually have work a week in advance. Right now, we have no work, and I'm not really pushing anyone off. Yeah. And so I should be panicking. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's all going to work out. That's kind of how soon I feel. As, as soon as the floors are done and the lifts are back in, the phone's going to start ringing. I know. It's and, so weird. And it's just it's, the, the universe is watching. Yeah. Like someone just said, okay, they need a week break. Yeah. Like what? I don't know. It's very weird. Let me know if you guys have any uh, s stories or anything like that where uh, things just go a little a little too your way and it's kind of yeah. weird. Um, I don't know what that is, but it's something. So yeah, as far as parts on the website, I don't know. We I don't think we added too much. Huh? Did no. We? Yeah. They, no. Like you said, you you've been doing a lot of shit. So you have been doing a lot of shit. Um, we just need more shop work to come in. Hopefully, when the floors are done, the universe all of yeah. a sudden. Dude, once that first club loose event hits. I feel like, yeah, you know, we're going to need more people. People are going to be talking to one another there. Yo, I got to get this done. Oh, yo, go to faction. Yo, get it. Alex was funny last week. He's like, how many people you got working here? I'm like, three, yeah. four. Was he like, whoa, what the fuck? He's like, he's like, you're going to need a couple more people. In here. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I don't think so. I mean, I, we're going to need like two more people uh, eventually. Well, someone in parts and then uh, maybe yeah. someone in the shop. You know, but we're not in a rush. We're going to ease our way into it, just like I did this whole fucking business. Yeah, just roll into it. Yeah. That's so. it. Uh, thank you guys for all the orders. Uh, we've definitely been getting a lot of orders lately, so that's good. Yeah. Um, every little bit helps. And if you haven't already, check out our Patreon. Uh, I think you guys can actually see, like, previews of stuff in there when you go on there. But uh, we have two tiers on there, $5 tier, $15 tier. $15 tier will get you... Uh, every time new merch drops, you'll get a free shirt or sticker, whichever it is. We change it up sometimes. Uh, we've been posting a lot of vlogs in that in that uh, area because I personally don't even like vlogs. Uh, so Eddie usually films vlogs for us and puts them in there every week. Uh, but we don't yeah. really put them on YouTube. Occasionally, we'll put one on YouTube if we don't have a video. Um, but something about vlogs. I'm not really a vlog guy. I don't know. Not a vlog. You're more of that uh, informational. Informational, yeah. Yeah. What is that? Uh, like that Moto IQ stuff? I love fucking Mike. Yeah. That, yeah. Those videos are great. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. Because the vlog shit is easier. You know? Because I'm it is. literally just bullshitting. It is. Uh, doing an informational video is like writing a research paper. Yeah. So it's. I guess it's a little bit harder, but I don't know. What do you guys like? Leave a comment if you're on YouTube. Uh, send it if you're on Spotify, you can actually leave a comment, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah, you guys gotta find I don't know where you go for that, but look, look around your phone, you'll see that that option in there on Spotify app. Uh, and make sure to leave us a review if you haven't already. Every every review helps us, Malcolm. Anything else? Um, no, okay, well, <laughs> that's it for this one. Uh, let us know how you. How you like this episode? I I personally love this podcast. Yeah, it was great. 
I was covered in paint, dirt, everything, and I was like, yeah. "It's gonna be the most uncomfortable podcast." I looked and like a chimney sweep. I looked like a chimney sweep, <laughs> and it ended up being one of the best podcasts. So. Yeah, thanks, uh, Alex Jager. Uh, be sure to check him out this Formula Drift season. Oh yeah, and actually, make sure you check out all his sponsors as well. Um, like he said on the podcast, Steal It is his Nas, new- Steal It, yeah, BC Racing, Nismo. Damn, you got all of them on on memory. I remember his shirt with the shirt he shirt his shirt he was wearing. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. try to read them off the car because I'll probably name some old sponsors or something. So yeah. but yeah, Steal It is the big one. That's his main sponsor right now. Steal It seems to be a pretty cool product. Um, basically it's weldable paint. So weldable paint? Yeah, from what from what I heard. You could spray something and you can weld on it. It's basically like I'm gonna fuck this up. <laughs> I was gonna say it's basically like weldable primer, but it looks good. Cause weldable primer is you can you can paint something so it doesn't rust. Yeah, yeah. But then you can weld weld on it. So I think they must have did something like that, but... Different secret formula. Yeah. But yeah, make sure you check out those products. And yeah, it's going to be a good year for Formula D. So, And it's going to be a good year for us, Frank. You know what? You're right, Malcolm. Let's go. Later, guys. See ya. Bye. <laughs>